Chapter 806. Dai Chen Leaving, Golden Needles Purifying the Marrow. A lot of the people from King Clan came out, including Kang Wuya and Elder Ji. They were all aware that Dai Chen would be leaving temporarily. At this moment, an old granny with crane hairstyle came down from the huge five-headed golden eagle. Even though the old woman had white hair, there weren't any wrinkles on her face. Master, Dai Chen smiled as she pulled the old granny's hand. You're all grown up. You look matured and even more beautiful now, not to mention you have found someone that you love. The wise old woman pulled Dai Chen and said gently. From her look, it could be seen that she really pampered Dai Chen. Master, you're laughing at me. Dai Chen said embarrassingly. Elder Ji, congratulations on recovering and taking a huge leap in your strength. The old granny smiled at Elder Ji. Old woman, you left so inappropriately at that time. You left silently and entrusted the Misty Hall Palace to little brat Chen. Now that you're back, you want to take little brat Chen away. What do you want? Elder Ji said it in a really calm tone. However, anyone would be able to tell that the two had known each other for a long time and that they were really familiar and on good terms with each other. The old ancestor is gone, yet I'm unable to come back to show my respect to him. Please let me do it today. The old granny revealed a sad look when she mentioned the old ancestor of Heavenly Palace. Old woman, let's stop talking about it. The old ancestor should finally be able to rest in peace now considering that those people from 60 years ago finally got what they deserved. Elder G said happily. The people from Eastern Palace aristocrat clan died. The old woman asked in shock. Not only have they died, the entire clan was wiped out. Elder G sounded agitated when he was saying it. The old ancestor is a good man. Good heartedness would often be met with recompense. Who knows who the Eastern Palace aristocrat clan provoked to cause their own annihilation after 60 years? The old granny sighed and spoke in a gratified tone. Ha ha, of course they were eliminated by the heavenly palace. Here, let me introduce you to King Shui, the person whom the old ancestor entrusted to take over his position before he passed away. It was also King Shui who eliminated the eastern palace aristocrat clan. Elder Ji sounded really friendly. King Shui. He did it all by himself. The old woman left her mouth open in shock and asked in disbelief. She was in both disbelief and shock for quite a while. She was now really confused. She secluded herself from the world for 20 years, which basically meant that she locked herself away from 20 years worth of messages from the world. Now that she was out, the only thing she had in her mind was her one and only disciple. Hello Granny, thank you for looking after Chen Er. King Shui smiled as he greeted the old Granny. The old woman looked at King Shui with her eyes getting brighter and brighter. She didn't hold back with her praise for him. Little brat, you're truly a lucky one. The old woman smiled at Dai Chen. She has already made her meaning clear from those words. After that, she proceeded to smile at King Shui. Chen Er and you really suit each other well. I feel really at ease. Don't feel hurried, there is still a long way for you to go. Very quickly, I'll let her return to your side. Bring me to burn an incense for the old ancestor. The old granny burned an incense stick for the old ancestor in front of his grave. This was the graveyard of Heavenly Palace. It was located a bit farther away in a relatively secluded spot on the Heavenly Palace Mountain. Otherwise, the tomb would have very likely been dug up by Zuoshi clan. Both Dai Chen and the old granny were gone. The place they left for was in the northern part of Green Cloud Continent at a place with higher altitude. It snowed all year long in that place. 
The reason why the old woman told King Shui the location was because she wasn't able to give him a specific time of how long they would be gone for. Dai Chen's departure caused King Shui to feel a bit empty. But he knew that she had gone to cultivate her martial techniques. It should be the martial art technique that was near breakthrough. King Shui was suspicious of the strength of Dai Chen's master. She had the strength of a grade 10 martial saint, which King Shui was unable to comprehend because 20 years ago, she shouldn't have been at martial saint. That being the case, Dai Chen's strength might be able to take yet another huge leap. King King underwent a huge change after taking in the bone and skin refining pills. This was because one's innate talent had a lot to do with the toughness of their bones. King King was very talented and had decent innate skills. Unfortunately, she was past the best time for cultivation. Her bones were already too weak now. During this time, a mysterious fruit has already been stored. In another year's time, another one would ripen. These kind of things were unusually precious considering that only one would ripen every 500 years. The mysterious fruit only had a 1 out of 100 chance of success. One would have been considered to run into enormous luck if they were to really succeed. However, the luck was still too vivid. The success rate might be higher if he was to use it for himself considering that the nature energy that he possessed also had some effect for it. Other than that, it was also because he was the owner of the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. Hence, the chance for him to succeed would be a lot higher. After all, a 1 out of a 100 rate was too small. King Shui reached the conclusion to use other methods after multiple thoughts. He could use the gold needle to help her cleanse her impurities and help her nurture her constitution again after that. Finally, he could also use the rainbow trout fish and other stuff from the realm of the violet jade immortal to assist her further. He also had some of the medicinal pills he made himself. For now, the tiger vitality pill was still constantly being used. In the future, he might need to use both the plum blossom wine and vermilion fruit wine. Prior to this, it was mainly because he never used it often but later on, he might have to consume it every few days. King Shui looked at the mysterious fruit and eventually still put it down after multiple hesitations. King Shui felt that now was an inappropriate time to use it. He wanted to wait for a little while longer. Perhaps, it would have even greater use by then. After Dai Chen left, King Shui didn't have things to do in the afternoon. Hence, he called King King with the intention to help her perform the gold needle acupuncture and gold needle constitution nurturing. Of course, most importantly, it was to help her cleanse her impurities. King Shui also conveniently helped the three generations of King Clan to perform the gold needle cleansing. In the past, it was mainly because their cultivation level was too low that he didn't do it. Now that they were at Xianxian realm, it would be quick for the results to show. Furthermore, he was also more available now. King Shui told the others to not interrupt him. He spent the whole afternoon doing it with unusually smooth progress. He stopped only after black stuff started coming out of King King's body and dirtied her pajamas. King King screamed upon seeing the stuff and smelling the unpleasant smell on her body. She blushed and rushed into the bathroom. King Shui smiled and walked out of the room. Almost half of the noon has passed. King King had a lot of impurities in her body. However, other people wouldn't have had any less the first time they cleansed their bodies. Furthermore, King Shui's current gold needle cleansing could only be considered to be really trivial and nothing compared to Epiphany. Despite that being the case, a lot of impurities were still removed from King King's body. The mysterious features of the gold needle were undisputable. 
If other people found out that gold needle could actually be used for impurities cleansing, they would definitely drop their jaws. This kind of cleansing method couldn't be used constantly. It could only be used once every few years or else it would put a lot of stress to the body. This kind of impurities cleansing acupuncture was actually quite time consuming. However, King Shui planned to carry out the acupuncture for two people every day. King King also felt a bit embarrassed when she saw King Shui after she came out. King Shui knew why. He smiled and said, Sister, you don't have to feel embarrassed. I also went through the same thing on the first time I did it. In fact, everyone would end up the same. The more impurities that come out, the better. In the future, there will be less and less. Yeah, King King responded with a smile after she heard King Shui's words. She also looked a lot more relaxed because this was her own blood-related brother. How does it feel? King Shui smiled and asked. It feels really refreshing. It feels as if my body has become a lot lighter. My cultivation level has also broken through by a grade. King King said in joy. Yeah, remember to take both the bone and skin refining pellets once a month. King Shui reminded King King. In a way, it was counted as him looking after his sister. He gave her all of the bone and skin refining pellets. In fact, it was impossible for him to refine more of them for the time being. The next day, King Shui led the group to tame some demonic and flying beasts. King King also went along. King Shui had already refined a few beast taming pellets. He gave each of them five of the pellets. Heavenly Palace Mountain was a really huge mountain. There were a lot of demonic beasts deep inside the rear part of the mountain. It was just that the grades of the demonic beasts weren't as high. They were all mostly around martial king with all of them being lower than grade 10 martial kings. Otherwise, the heavenly palace wouldn't have been so peaceful. Brother Shui, you need to help me tame a flying beast. King Bei said agitatedly. Brother King Shui, I'm okay with anything as long as it's pleasing to my eyes. It would be even better if it looked tall and powerful. King Yu showed an honest smile. King King looked at them and didn't say anything. That's a red sparrow. It looks so beautiful. Unfortunately, it's too small. King Bei pointed towards the bird in the sky and said in a gloomy tone. The red sparrow was around three feet long. Its entire body was covered with red feathers, and it had a really loud and clear chirping noise. Most of them traveled in groups and loved eating things such as locusts and worms. It had a relatively low combat strength, even though its physical appearance looked quite good. Look at that, scarlet horse. King Shui pointed at the war horse that was running towards them from far away. King Shui felt really puzzled. He ran into two types of demonic beasts today which were both red. The scarlet horse was basically almost the same as the Fergana horse that he met in his past incarnation except its head was about twice as large as that of the Fergana horse. It was 4 meters long and almost 2 meters long. It also possessed tenacious muscle and had outstanding endurance. Actually, the scarlet horse was quite common in the market. A lot of luxurious carts were pulled by the scarlet horse. Not only did it look good, it also possessed decent strength and endurance. Pairing it up with luxurious carts would make them look more high class than ordinary beast carts. Ordinary young girls and upper class women would find sitting in such really enjoyable. They slowly made their way deep into the heavenly palace mountain. This area wasn't really that dangerous. A lot of the disciples from heavenly palace would practice their martial arts here. Nevertheless, they wouldn't do it too deep inside the cave. It was not that martial saint demonic beasts would appear here. It was because the disciples from heavenly palace didn't have sufficient strength to 
Since the place belonged to the heavenly palace, powers from other regions wouldn't enter the place, which was why very few people would be seen inside heavenly palace mountain. Earth rock beast. I want to tame this one. King Yu shouted out in surprise. The earth rock beast was about 3 meters tall and 7 meters long. Its entire body was covered up with incomparably sturdy rocks and it possessed the earth element. It was slightly faster than horses in terms of speed. A peak Xianshan demonic beast that was capable of executing rock type attacks. As of now, King Yu was already a grade 1 martial king. To put it bluntly, he possessed strength which was slightly above that of the earth rock beast. It was normal for grade 1 martial king to tame demonic beasts at peak Xianshan realm. Unless they were beast tamers, it was really tough for ordinary people to tame demonic beasts which were even stronger than themselves. Be careful, King Shui said with a smile. Since he was here, he would definitely not let anything happen to King Yu. King Yu pulled out his gigantic axe and charged towards the earth rock beast. As King Shui noticed that the method of using an axe was really similar to using that of a sickle, he planned to make King Yu use the evil dragon's tooth in the future. This would save some effort in helping him look for weapons. Bang! Luckily, King Yu happened to be able to suppress the earth rock beast with his strength. Despite this, it didn't necessarily mean that King Yu would surely win this match. Things were really unpredictable on a battlefield. Roar! When the earth rock beast abruptly stomped the ground, a row of sharp rocks rapidly penetrated through the rocky surface and emerged on the surface of the ground. King Yu soared up into the air. He swung the enormous axe in his hand and once again slashed the earth rock beast. Battling the earth rock beast on the ground and mountains was the same as battling an earth dragon beast except the earth dragon beast was many times stronger than the earth rock beast. However, because they shared almost the same abilities, earth rock beasts at peak Xianshan realm were able to be evenly matched with human warriors at peak martial king. The strength of the earth rock beast would multiply several times when it battled on the ground and in mountains. Adding on that its strength already exceeded past that of human warriors at the same grade, it was almost as strong as King Yu who was currently at grade 1 martial king. Chapter 807, Taming a Mount, Four-Eared Silver Macaque. This kind of battle must not be intervened by anyone. Otherwise the success rate of taming it would be zero. King Yu didn't want to kill it, so he had to restrain some of his strength so that they could truly be evenly matched. This battle was a battle of attrition. The demonic beast must be worn out first, until it had no more strength to stand, before taming it. That way, the success rate would be increased by a lot. However, a human cultivator was no match at all when compared to a demonic beast in terms of endurance. But King Yu was already prepared. King Shui had told him to consume a vital essence pill when he could no longer bear it. With the vital essence pill, King Yu could exert the energy within his body without any worries until he defeated the earth rock beast. He then consumed the beast taming pellet and began taming it with great patience. King Yu was still quite strong in his luck. In less than an hour, he actually managed to successfully tame it. King Shui gave him five beast pills and endurance pellets. As for nine-headed moon wolf cause crimson pellet, he'd skip it since it was a little too wasteful to be spent on the earth rock beast. Besides, the amount of crimson pellets was limited. Each pellet used was another pellet less. But King Shui had already planned this since the beginning. The peak Xianshan earth rock beast should be able to break through to the martial king level after five beast pills. After all, beast pills were pretty good medicinal pills for demonic beasts. Besides, the earth rock beast also had the potential within it. 
It was rumored that the Earth Rock Beast had the bloodline of the Earth Dragon Beast. Roar. A roar that was even louder and clearer than before rang out. The others were starting to get envious. The Earth Rock Beast really broke through to the beginner Martial King realm after consuming the Beast Pill. King Bay had thought that the Earth Rock Beast wasn't in the least bit attractive earlier because it was a peak Xianxian and didn't know how to fly. But now that it had broken through to the Martial King level, it went through an immense change. Its body size had increased by one third and appeared to be even capable and vigorous. That wave of aura had let King Bei know that she was no longer the match of this Earth Rock Beast. King Yu chuckled joyously as he rode on the, the Earth Rock Beast. He laid prostrate on it as he touched the beast with both of his hands, not even bothering to conceal the joy he was feeling right now. He finally had his own demonic beast now too. It was very difficult to tame a flying beast. Many martial king and even peak martial king level cultivators could only manage to tame a beginner Xianxian flying beast. This was because it was impossible for one to fly before attaining martial saint level, so to tame a flying beast of the same level was nothing but a pipe dream. There was only one way to tame a flying beast that was of a way lower level, which was to strike the flying beast down first before taming it. However, the success rate would be oddly low. If one asked for someone else to help strike a flying beast of the same level down for the tamer to tame, then the success rate would basically be zero. That was why people would only tame flying beasts that were way lower than their own strength. Since the beast tamer was a lot stronger than the flying beast, there was still a little chance of success in taming them. Every one of them heaved a deep sigh as they watched the demonic beasts that flew across the sky from time to time. King Yu was the only one who was happy at one side. King Shui smiled quietly. He was very happy to see how content King Yu was. Whoever wishes to tame a flying beast, go find a hilltop and work there. Remember, any that have entered the Xianxian level will do. I have already given you all the method. King Shui said with a smile. I refuse to believe that I can't tame a flying beast. King Bei clenched her jaws as she ran towards a mountain nearby. Brother King Shui, I also want to tame an earth rock beast. King Shi told King Shui. All right, the weak spot of the earth rock beast is three feet below its neck. You be careful out there, King Shui explained with a smile. He had brought them here to tame demonic beasts to ensure their safety. But he wouldn't be able to help them in anything else. Each of them either went to find their own spot, or to search for targets on land. The atmosphere around this valley instantly grew lively. King King was the only one who stood by King Shui's side as she watched their movements. Big sister, do you want a flying beast or a land beast? King Shui gently asked her. King King shook her head and laughed. Taming a flying beast is too difficult, and I am no match for the ones on land so I am only here to watch. King Shui felt a little powerless. He wasn't able to concoct the divine marionette, Pellet. But he was thinking hard right at this moment, trying to come up with a way to help King King tame a demonic beast. He suddenly remembered about that stone gold rabbit of Huayan Lu Li. That demonic beast was one who voluntarily picked its own master. Following Huayan Lu Li's current strength, it had also been improving quite well. But it was hard to determine to which realm that little thing would grow. It was after all a mutated species between heaven and earth so it would all come down to its nature and opportunity. Zhi Zhi, chaotic and sharp noises rang out. As they gazed towards the source, there was a group of monkeys frolicking at the mountain stream as they jumped and fooled around. These monkeys were all about the size of three meters, covered with reddish-brown fur and as strong as King Kong. 
It would have been frightening if such huge monkeys existed in his previous world. A smaller monkey suddenly came into King Shui's line of sight as it tumbled down. King Shui had seen these monkey extending their paws out while they were jumping around. It turned out that they were slapping and clawing, trying to push this little monkey down. Zhi Zhi. King Shui had noticed this little monkey because it was only a meter tall and was entirely silvery white in color. It was quite conspicuous among the group of monkeys. Perhaps it was because of its color. It was ostracized by the other monkeys. Although it didn't die from tumbling down all the way from halfway up the mountain, its silvery white fur was soaked crimson by its fresh blood. King Shui, that little monkey is so pitiful. King King walked towards the little monkey after she told King Shui. Big sister, pour this jinjuang powder on its body. King Shui passed King King a slightly larger porcelain bottle. King King happily accepted it from his hands before quickly walking towards that little monkey that was coated with silvery white fur. King Shui followed not far behind her. Zhi Zhi. The little monkey screamed in fright when it saw King King approaching. King Shui, who was nearby and had nothing better to do, had only taken a close look at this little monkey right now. Half of its fur had been stained crimson by fresh blood. The rest was snowy white in color. For its size of about one meter long, it could only be considered to be a small monkey. All of a sudden, King Shui noticed that this little monkey actually had four ears and its appearance reminded King Shui of a type of monkey. A macaque. A four-eared macaque. The legend in his previous world had it that there were three powerful types of monkeys. One of them was the six-eared macaque. They were extremely knowledgeable and had exceptional abilities. Although it was just a legend, this had also proven that this type of monkey was the most powerful. But he wasn't really entirely certain if this monkey was of the macaque species. King King walked to the side of the terrified little monkey and sprinkled the jinjuang powder on the blood-stained spot on its body. The wound that had been bleeding stopped bleeding very soon. King King seemed to be very fond of that little monkey and started to try rubbing its head. The little monkey which had been terrified gradually calmed down. It seemed to know that King King had no ill intentions towards itself and was even trying to help so it gradually warmed up to her. This was a young monkey. King Shui tried to find out something through his heavenly vision technique and was struck by a great surprise. Silver macaque, mutated species of heaven and earth, blessed by the heavens. Although there were only a few words, King Shui was still shocked by the last few words, blessed by heaven. These few words were enough for this little monkey to rival the diamond gigantic elephant. This was truly an unintentional outcome. King Shui could tell from a single glance that this silver macaque was determined to follow King King. The main reason was because this monkey was too young. If it was a grown-up silver macaque, it had definitely not choose King King because King King was too weak. The little monkey, who had once again stood up, pulled on King King's sleeve like a small toddler. King Shui laughed. To think that their trip out this time had actually allowed King King to have such an opportunity, it was totally worth it. Look, King Shui, this little monkey is really gorgeous. I'm going to take it with me. King King joyously told King Shui as she carried the little monkey and walked towards him. Big sister, treat the little monkey well. Perhaps it would one day become a heaven and earth battle beast. King Shui laughed. I've never thought of that. He he. I only thought that the little monkey was pitiful. If it's willing to follow me, of course I'd treat it well. Little monkeys are very intelligent. King King said happily as she rubbed the little monkey's head. Sister King, why are you taming a little monkey that has no battle capabilities? King you came over and asked. 
Big Sister doesn't like to battle. Bringing a little monkey can also be entertaining. King King smiled as she took a look at King Yu's earth rock beast. A look of doubt that was almost imperceivable flashed across her eyes. But King Shui saw it. He knew King King also wished to have a powerful demonic beast for herself. A powerful demonic beast that belonged to her. King Shui only smiled and didn't say anything because there was no need to say anything. The little monkey would no doubt be able to shock everyone in the future. The first day had passed. Looking at the sky, it was about time to return. Only King King, King Yu and King Shi managed to tame a demonic beast. The rest could only return empty-handed. King Bei was still adamant about taming a flying beast so they could only come here again the next day. Beast taming was a time-consuming activity. Today's outcome could be considered pretty good. King King's was an accidental gain, yet also the biggest surprise. Luckily it was a good one. Another half a month passed in the blink of an eye. King Bei had persisted for a week and was finally able to tame a white feathered eagle, a grade 3 Xianxian demonic beast. But it didn't really matter as long as it was a Xianxian level. Because only demonic beasts of Xianxian level could bear a core and fly long distances over an extended period of time. Huoyan Lu Li was depressed because she still wasn't pregnant. King Shui had spent the most time with her. She was already at loss of what to do. King Shui, are you sure there's nothing wrong with my body? Huoyan Lu Li asked softly while embracing King Shui at night. She knew that King Shui was a doctor and this also wasn't her first time asking. Don't worry, we'll have one soon. Let's work harder. King Shui flipped Huoyan Lu Li over and once again pinned her down. The bedroom was quickly filled with moans of pure ecstasy. King Shui was also very perplexed. He had examined Huoyan Lu Li's body before and everything seemed normal. Even if the fertility of a cultivator was low, it shouldn't be as low as this. Kang Hai Mingyu, Mingyu Gelu and Shi Qingjuang had all been pregnant. King Shui, are we really going back to the king residence for New Year? King Luo looked at King Shui in surprise. Why would your grandson lie to you? As long as we have the chance in the future, we will surely celebrate New Year in Hundred Miles City. King Shui laughed. All of us are returning. King Luo asked doubtfully. King Shui pondered for a moment. He had Firebird and Diamond Gigantic Elephant. Kang Hai Mingyu had Golden Winged Thunder Condor. Luin Luin had Little Bai, Dai King had her Azure-Eyed Silver Falcon. Let's all go back. There are enough mounts. King Shui said happily. But then again, the return journey would take a little longer. After all, their flying beast's flying capabilities were inferior to the Firebird and Diamond Gigantic Elephant. Chapter 808. Setting out on the return journey, the road to southern city. They had already decided to return to the king village, but there was still some time left. The flying beasts were able to fly to the king village from the green cloud continent's capital in a very short time. After all, these flying beasts had been eating their fair share of medicinal pills and herbs that could raise their agility. They were all the most important people to King Shui so he would definitely enhance their mounts to as powerful as possible. King Yu and King Shi's earth rock beast didn't consume any crimson pellets of the nine-headed moon wolf's core. Unlike Kang Hai Mingyu's golden-winged thunder condor, Dai Chen's blue luan, Dai King's azure-eyed silver falcon, Ye Jiang's snow-white crane and Wenren Wushuang's water cloud swallow. Huoyan Lu Li also owned a golden-winged thunder condor now. It was a gift from Kang Hai Mingyu, but it had been a fledgling and wasn't suitable to be used as a mount until now. It was the fledgling of Kang Hai Mingyu's golden-winged thunder condor. 
Taming the young of demonic beasts was very easy. They could be tamed as long as they were fed. It was a pity that demonic beasts took too long to mature, so not many people could afford to wait. The golden-winged thunder condor was no exception either. Huoyan Lu Li had been riding on Kang Hai Mingyu's mount everywhere she went. Besides, she had never been apart from Kang Hai Mingyu so not having a mount wasn't really a big deal to her. Although Huoyan Lu Li's golden-winged thunder condor wasn't fully grown yet, it had been growing quite fast under the effects of some medicinal pills and herbs. It was a pity that it couldn't fly over a long distance with people riding on its back yet, or else it would bring great harm to it. Shi Qingjuang seemed to have never thought of owning a mount, along with Mingyu Gelu. But now Mingyu Gelu was already a cultivator of martial saint level, so she could tame a flying beast if she wanted, but she had just never really gotten around to do it. Dai Chen's Blue Luan had the strength of grade 5 martial saint, while Dai Chen's azure-eyed silver falcon was a grade 3 martial saint. On top of that, it was a fantastic beast. King Shui had only known about this after he had previously sent her to the central continent. He only knew that she had a flying beast before that. Otherwise, how could she come all the way from the central continent by herself? The azure-eyed silver falcon didn't have a powerful offense, but it had an absurd battle technique like the long-distance teleportation. Every teleportation could cover about a hundred li with the usage limit of three times per day. This was also the reason why Dai King could come from the central continent to the green cloud continent all by herself. Ye Jiang's snow white crane was also a beginner martial saint level demonic beast now. This was the effect of consuming the crimson pellet of the nine headed moon wolf's core that King Shui had given to Ye Jiang. So this could basically be considered the greatest potential of the snow white crane. The snow white crane had been following Ye Jiang around all this time. So even though Ye Jiang had become powerful, she didn't want to change her mount either. Hence, King Shui had been saving a portion of anything that could raise a demonic beast's strength for her. Wenren Wushuang's water cloud swallow was about the same as Ye Jiang's snow white crane. On the contrary, Luin Luin's little bai was only a beginner martial king due to its aptitude, but it had officially became Little Lass's mount. King Shui wasn't worried about Luin Luin. She already had the strength of a beginner martial saint and her strength would continue to increase rapidly after this. So for now, she didn't need that many demonic beasts, unless there were demonic beast groups just like that group of earth devouring mice. Taming a group of beasts was quite terrifying. Otherwise, she could tame some powerful demonic beasts or those with better potential instead. King Shui was planning to use flying beasts of martial saint grade and above as method of transportation for their return journey. The other flying beasts would be put away. The firebird and diamond gigantic elephant had a very formidable strength and speed anyway and there weren't too many people from the main king clan either. King Shui still had more than ten crimson pellets of nine-headed moon wolf's core on his hands. Luin Luin also had about ten of them, which were specially given to her by King Shui, because these pellets were most precious items to Luin Luin, who had the heart of seven orifices. Before they returned to the king village, King Shui had basically performed a round of gold needle marrow cleansing and constitution nurturing as well as gold needle acupuncture on the king clan's third generation. Gold needle acupuncture was also known as gold needle acupoint clearing. It gave acupuncture to the most basic acupoints. If lucky enough, a few basic acupoints may be cleared. King Shui knew about the wonderful benefits of clearing acupoints because most of the acupoints on his body had been cleared. 
Even some of his special acupoints such as the Yongquan acupoint or Jungfu acupoint, had also been cleared and needless to say, the effects were tremendous. Even clearing basic acupoints could yield very tremendous effects, such as strengthening the meridians. So one would receive decent benefits as long as acupoints were cleared. King 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 Bei and King Yu were better than the rest because eight of their acupoints had been cleared. The rest could only clear less than six. But after the marrow cleansing and constitution nurturing, their cultivation had been raised by quite a lot and their speed of cultivation had also been improved. This had in turn boosted their confidence immensely and motivated him to cultivate. King Ming and King Yan were more than four months old now and already knew how to laugh. Their melodious laughter soothed King Shui's mood. Whenever King Shui was free now, he'd basically be playing with those children. In his previous world, the thought of being able to have a few children never even crossed King Shui's mind. Of course, he would also never have thought that he'd have a few women, let alone women that were as beautiful as an immortal. Shi Qingzhuang had changed the most among them. Ever since she had a daughter, a smile was often seen on her face especially when she was looking at King Yan. She'd have an extremely blissful and content smile on her face every time the fair little lass grinned and laughed. King Shui had never seen her smiling like this and had never even thought that she would be able to smile like this. The greatness of a motherhood was indeed mysterious. King Shui. Look. Yan Er looks like she will be able to recognize people soon. Shi Qingzhuang told King Shui while holding King Yan in her arms. Oh, lass. Say, daddy. King Shui gently pinched the little lass's cheek. Piffed. She's still too young to speak. Shi Qingzhuang laughed at King Shui. King Shui suddenly lifted Shi Qingzhuang up. Come. Let me hold both of you mother-daughter so you can feel the three of us being together. King Shui, be careful of the lass. He turned a few rounds while holding them before putting him down again. The little lass seemed to be very amused. He looked at Shi Qingzhuang who was forever clad in a fiery red dress and softly asked, Qingzhuang, can I ask you a few questions? Ah, do you have to be this polite? You can just ask whatever you want to ask. Shi Qingzhuang gave him a faint smile. Well, I realized that all of your clothes were red. Why are your undergarments white? What color do you like? King Shui had thought that Shi Qingzhuang would huff at him in embarrassment. Little did he expect her response to be this. He embraced her gently. I like whatever you like. I'm just curious. A little more than a month passed again. The bitterly cold winter season had already arrived. King Shui and the rest were all prepared to return to the King village. The matters of Heavenly Palace had been placed in Elder Ji's hands, while the matters of King Clan were placed in the hands of the few martial saint elders from King Clan. All of them set out on the return route to the King village. Their flying speed wasn't very fast so they had to hurry back earlier. This was also mainly because there were little children with them. Although King Shui would use the divine energy to protect them, they still slowed down the speed. On top of that, they only hastened on with their journey during the daytime while stopping to rest at night. The little children were all riding on the back of Firebird. Firebird had an unusual back that formed a leeward spot and King Shui had already pitched a small tent there for King Ming and King Yan to stay in it so they won't be affected by any wind. King Zun and King Yin could also be put in there if they fell asleep. The back of the Firebird was quite wide. The gigantic Firebird had a width and length of nearly a hundred meters. There wouldn't be any issues even if a few dozen people were to ride on it. Its fiery red and thick feathers were soft and were emitting warm heat. The two little fellows who were lying on it couldn't stop giggling. 
King Shui had taken the route in the sky above the city. Although he wasn't worried about encountering demonic beasts now, he still hoped that they wouldn't be encountering any during their journey, because there were children with them. It would be slightly safer to travel in the sky above the cities. However, there was quite a distance of wasteland in between cities and in between countries. Although these were nothing compared to the 10,000 li of wasteland in between continents, they still spanned over quite a distance. On top of that, they still had to cross over enormous mountain ranges, and there might be some powerful demonic beasts dwelling within these mountain ranges. Powerful demonic beasts also existed on the Green Cloud continent, and many places were still undiscovered. The Flower Fruit Mountain was one of them and he remembered about the chieftain-level demonic beasts there. Just how much was the restriction on the Flower Fruit Mountain? How much strength was needed to break that restriction? What was there in the deepest part of the Flower Fruit Mountain? As the saying goes, curiosity killed the cat. Once curiosity was piqued, nothing could stop it. Just like King Shui right now. He had a strong impulse that made him feel obligated to visit the deepest parts of the Flower Fruit Mountain. He suddenly recalled about the palace under the goddess peak of the Flower Fruit Mountain and that exceptional beauty within the crystal coffin. That lady was akin to a divine being. King Shui remembered about the cold key within her body and had a hunch that she must have been poisoned by a type of yin poison or cold poison. He had no idea how long had this lady been lying in the crystal coffin, but he had a very strong impulse to wake her up and he didn't know why. Perhaps it was because he had made a promise to that old turtle. He still had the water-repelling pearl it gave him. That old turtle that guarded the lady at the palace entrance had already been a psychic since long ago and even its strength was unmeasurably deep. But this would still have to wait because King Shui wasn't too confident yet. They only exited the continent city in a week's time. Their speed had slowed down even more than before. When they passed by the southern city, King Shui and Kang Hai Mingyu brought the two little fellows to pay a respect to Kang Hai and his wife. King Yi and the rest went along too. Father, mother, look at whom I have brought to see you. Kang Hai Mingyu couldn't stop the tears from streaming down her face. She had King Zun in one hand and King Yin in the other. Zun Air, Yin Air, greet your grandfather and grandmother. King Yi stood at one side as she murmured something. Senior, rest assured. I will take good care of Mingyu. King Shui said softly as he offered an incense stick. Another month passed and they had safely arrived at the King village. New Year was just about half a month away. King Shui and his clan landed at the foot of the mountain on the west side. Looking at the King residence, which remained unchanged, a smile appeared on everyone's face. They entered the King residence. The courtyard was mostly overrun by weeds and now that it was winter, they were all withered. Other than looking after the children, the rest started to clean the courtyard and the house. Since the bedroom was coated in a layer of dust, they had no choice but to change the bedsheets. Kang Hai Mingyu, Dai King and the others had some new bedsheets in their interspatial silk sachets. King Shui helped Kang Hai Mingyu to tidy up the bedroom so that the two little fellows, King Ming and King Yan had a place to sleep. Mingyu Gelu and Shi Qingzhuang's room was just next door so they were able to tidy up all the rooms very fast. The rest were also able to finish tidying up very quickly. Chapter 809. Returning to the King residence, Qingzhuang returning home. King Shui helped his few women to tidy up their rooms. Although Wenren Wushuang didn't stay with him, she still visited the ladies' chamber very often. Then there was also Yi A Jiang. Yi A Jiang was King Shui's wife in title, so he also very naturally went into her room to help her. 
Ye Jiang didn't say anything and had the usual expression on her face. King Shui realized that he was also capable of being this calm. They were involved with each other for more than ten years, along with Luan Luan coming in somewhere in between. They were not close relatives yet their relationship surpassed that of close relatives. They weren't husband and wife, yet they had the faint affection between a husband and wife. In front of Ye Jiang, King Shui's complicated feelings could never find an exact position to settle. Unlike with Dai Chen, King Shui at least knew that she liked him so they would definitely eventually be husband and wife and King Shui could even be shameless about it. But for Ye Jiang's case, King Shui wouldn't know what to do even if he had grown ten more guts. Hence, they had been maintaining this strangely wonderful relationship akin to that of close relatives because other people thought they were husband and wife. Luin Luin also addressed them as daddy and mother, and they would even have slightly intimate contact with each other sometimes. Ye Jiang didn't reject all this either. They would occasionally hold hands and gently embrace each other. All this seemed to be very natural between them and it even felt a little warm, much like how affection grew with time. However, King Shui didn't expect Dai King to ask him to help her tidy up her room next. He had helped everyone else so he was embarrassed to refuse her. Besides, Dai King didn't even mind having him to help her out. King Shui was a little hesitant because he now knew that Dai King seemed to be interested with him. But seeing Dai King's slightly pitiful appearance, King Shui didn't say anything else and followed her to her bedroom to help out. Luckily, Wenren Wushuang, King Bei and Luan Luan were also here to help so it was very lively here and there were no awkward situations happening. King Yu and the rest were responsible for outside. Cultivators still had impressive strength so they were able to clean up very fast. This kind of physical labor work could hardly even be considered a warm-up and they were able to do it with extremely high efficiency. Although the king residence in the king village wasn't small, they only spent half a day to tidy and clean it up. Then they were preparing their meal and also the food for New Year. King Shui had actually already prepared most of the things. The members of King Clan had already gotten used to the fact that King Shui was able to take out many things. Just like now, he had food and some daily supplies. It was almost as if King Shui was carrying a sack that could hold everything. There were still many brand new things in the King Clan's storehouse. This was King Zun and King Yin's first time here, but they were still children so they didn't really mind if the place was unfamiliar to them. After they woke up, they happily played around and even ran outside. It hadn't been very long since they were back and the people in the King village had came over one after another. Their pious attitude had let King Shui know that the King clan and them were already from two different worlds. King Shui sighed with emotion as he passionately welcomed the other people from the King village along with King Yi, King Luo and the rest. The King clan was once a similar clan to them before but now the King clan had already become a brilliant moon in their eyes. So dazzling that they could only look up to them. King Shui also felt very emotional right now. He had lived here for 16 years. Everything here was so familiar to him. The customs and traditions here in particular made him feel very nostalgic. The simple and honest life here was very similar to his hometown in the previous world. The people who came here saw some people from the King clan clearing out the weeds in the courtyard and offered to help, but they were refused by the people of King clan. The King clan simply couldn't bring themselves to do something like this, because only the few from King clan's third generation were cleaning the place, while most of the people from King clan were still relaxing. How could they let these folks work for them? 
Shi Qingjuang said she wanted to return home so King Shui informed his family before accompanying her back. The others were resting since they were already mentally exhausted. It took only a moment to fly from the King village to the Hundred Miles city on Firebird. Shi Qingjuang who had King Yan in her arms stayed very closely to King Shui so that King Yan could be completely sheltered. Besides, Firebird's speed wasn't very fast either. King Shui could also conveniently buy some stuff for New Year preparation, such as firecrackers, fireworks and the likes, as well as some text decorations with blessings and wishes during his trip to the Hundred Miles City this time. Firebird landed at the main entrance of the Shi residence. When King Shui and Shi Qingjuang appeared at the entrance, those guards were taken aback. They were dazed for a moment before shouting in surprise. The young miss has returned. King Shui, let us go in. Shi Qingjuang glanced back at him and smiled while holding King Yan in her arms. Young miss, you have returned. One of the youths among the guards greeted respectfully. Yes. Is my grandfather still well? Shi Qingjuang casually asked with a smile. The old master has been very well but he missed you. A few people had already come out from inside while they were talking. The person in front happened to be the old master from the Shi clan, along with the middle-aged couple who were still as good-looking as before. They were Shi Qingzhuang's parents. But Shi Qingzhuang had grown up with her grandfather, old master Shi, since young so she was quite cold and detached towards the couple. Grandpa, lass, you've returned and King Shui too. Old master Shi laughed heartily. Anyone could tell that he was extremely happy right now. King Shui retrieved some expensive brocade boxes that contained some medicinal herbs and pills in them. The medicinal herbs were ginseng, but they were all 2,000 years old and were grown within King Shui's realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. This little lass looks quite like you, lass. Old Master Shi pointed out happily when he saw the little child that Shi Qingjuang was holding in her arms before stretching his arms out to hold her. Shi Qingjuang's face was flushed as she passed her daughter over. The little lass didn't cry, but was instead staring at Old Master Shi with her wide eyes. Little lass, when your mother came here when she was about your age. The old man chuckled. Shi Qingjuang saw some discomfort on the faces of the couple, whom she should have called her parents. Perhaps it was from seeing Shi Qingjuang or perhaps it was because of what the old master Shi had said earlier. Qingjuang, you're back. The woman came up to her and said with a hopeful voice. The man forced a smile at Shi Qingjuang. His eyes were filled with guilt and tenderness, but it was a pity those feelings didn't seem to have a target so he could only smile bitterly. Do you regret abandoning a child that you had given birth to? It would be better if you didn't give birth to her in the first place, then you wouldn't be in so much pain in the end. The lass has a very obstinate personality. But you don't have to be sad, since you all didn't do anything for her either. Old Master Shi said softly while he teased King Yan. But anyone could tell that his words were directed towards that middle-aged couple. King Shui didn't expect this old Master Shi to have such carefree personality. But he couldn't help it either, since this couple was his own son and daughter-in-law. They didn't take care of the child and abandoned her with him, so he took care of her. Shi Qingjuang only casually responded with a word to that middle-aged woman who still retained her attractiveness despite her age and didn't speak to her again. The middle-aged woman was very passionate, but Shi Qingjuang was as cold as an ice right now. The man was entertaining King Shui with enthusiasm. King Shui was smiling while he had a very pleasant conversation with him. The man was very sociable. He had never made the conversation difficult for King Shui to carry on and was being very amiable. What's the name of the little lass? 
Old Master Shi asked gently. King Yan. Hmm, good name and has a very nice ring to it. A face that was as beautiful as the jade. Come, let's all go in. Old Master Shi invited Shi Qingzhuang and King Shui. King Shui wasn't very sure how things turned out this way for Shi Qingzhuang and her parents. The couple seemed to have failed her, and even old master Shi felt that the couple had made a grave mistake. The man seemed to have noticed King Shui's perplexity, so he explained as they walked. After Qingzhuang was born, her mother and I didn't take care of her. Not long after that, we abandoned her with the old master. Then her mother and I left for four years without returning. Our reason for leaving was very funny. We went off to enjoy life. King Shui seemed to have vaguely caught onto something. By the time we came back, Qingzhuang didn't recognize us. She has had a very cold personality since young and Qingzhuang's mother didn't have a good temper either. So when Qingzhuang was being cold to her, neglected her and even refused to call her mother, she beat her. After that we had a son, Mushi so we didn't spend time together again for another few years. In the end, things eventually turned out this way. We have failed Qingzhuang and made her suffer. The man sighed. King Shui also didn't expect something so simple to escalate up to this point. He was guessing that they didn't expect Qingzhuang would be this obstinate. On top of that, they had also broke her heart when she was so young back then and poured all of their affection towards Shi Mushi. They had no idea this could cause a very serious damage to a young child. Family matters were the most troublesome. He didn't who was right or who was wrong in this matter. Or perhaps this had nothing to do with being right or wrong at all. King Shui loved Shi Qingzhuang and respected her so he wouldn't intervene with any of her family matters. Shi Qingzhuang's parents only stayed here for a while before leaving. They excused themselves affectionately from Shi Qingzhuang and King Shui and even played with King Yan before leaving with much reluctance. Lass, do you really still hate them that much? Old Master Shi laughed gently after the middle-aged couple left. I don't know. I think I don't hate them that much after giving birth to Yan Er. Shi Qingzhuang replied softly. They were young and spirited back then but it wasn't like they didn't love you. They were just all over the place so things turned out this way. At that time, your mother's bossy temper was acting up and that cold attitude of yours when you were young was indeed destructive too. On top of that, Mushi was born. All these contributed to the outcome today. You would have been able to understand that when you were a little older. After you turned seven years old, they were basically helpless about you. It was their fault anyway. So I have never said anything on behalf of them all these years. Old Master Shi chuckled. I know Grandpa treats me the best, Shi Qingzhuang said happily. Life is too short, lass. Grandpa will never make you do anything you don't like. You may do anything as long as you are sure and you won't have any regrets. Grandpa has experienced many things for his age. I hope you won't leave any regrets for yourself. Old Master Shi said gently. Thank you, Grandpa. I understand and I get it. King Shui and Shi Qingzhuang stayed for a little while more in the Hundred Miles City before standing up to excuse themselves, saying that they'd come stay for a few days after New Year so they would be returning today first. Old Master Shi didn't force them to stay either. King Shui and Shi Qingzhuang bought some goods for New Year in the Hundred Miles City. Setting foot once again in the Hundred Mile City today felt very different. The Situ clan was no longer here and the biggest clans now were the Shi clan, along with the He clan and the Xiang clan. King Shui, you saw it. What do you think I should do? Shi Qingzhuang calmly looked at King Shui. Chapter 810. Another year of brilliant fireworks. King Shui, 
You saw it. What do you think I should do? Shi Qingjuang looked at King Shui calmly. Qingjuang should decide for yourself. I will support you no matter what you do. Just like what the old master had said. As long as you won't regret, then that is the best choice. King Shui held King Yan in his arm while holding Shi Qingzhuang's hand, while they walked around the streets of Hundred Mile City. They were going to return after buying some goods for New Year. I would like to hear your opinions. Shi Qingzhuang turned her head to the side and smiled at King Shui. You know that I was also raised by my mother all by herself, and I have never seen my father. My biggest goal in the past was to go to the Yan clan to eliminate it so that man could return, because he is the person that my mother loves. King Shui laughed as he shook his head. The tone of his voice was very serene. King Shui, I understand now. Thank you. Shi Qingjuang smiled happily at King Shui. King Shui smiled back at her too. Shi Qingjuang was an exceptionally intelligent individual. She would definitely understand even if he had only explained up to this point. She loved her grandfather the most and her father was her grandfather's son, no matter what the old man had said. But since she would wish that they would be able to live together peacefully and feel the familial affection between each other, Shi Qingjuang would express something even if it was for the sake of her grandfather. Qingjuang, I'm not asking you to do anything. I had a similar experience before. But after I knew of my father's death, I still felt the pain although I had no affection for him and have never even seen him. So I wish to give you some choices. I don't wish for you to have any regrets in the future. All right. Thank you, King Shui. Ever since I've had the little lass, I've come to realize a lot of things. Shi Qingjuang latched onto King Shui's arm and laughed. Is, thank you, still necessary between us? King Shui said while he teased the little lass in his arms. I'm not going to say that anymore in the future. Shi Qingjuang laughed. She seemed to be especially happy right at this moment. The two of them went into the shop that sold firecrackers and fireworks and bought quite a lot of them. King Yu and the rest had initially volunteered to go buy these, but King Shui was already in the Hundred Miles City so he might as well buy them. These were also on sale at the Phoenix Dance Town. They bought fireworks, firecrackers and some decorations with festive words then conveniently bought some food for New Year. All this took some time. After seeing that the sky was about to turn dark, he returned to the King Village with Shi Qingjuang on Firebird. The festive atmosphere was exceptionally heavy in the village. New Year was still ten days away, but they could already feel the rich festive atmosphere. Some children on the streets were wearing extremely vibrant new clothes with firecrackers in their hands. Groups of them were running around and playing. The firecracker noises and children's melodious laughter rang out occasionally. After King Shui returned, he intentionally brought Shi Qingjuang to walk with him through the village while indulging in the nostalgic feeling. The little lass had fallen asleep so King Shui activated his divine energy to isolate her from outside to avoid having her startled awake by the noise of firecrackers. It was also impossible that there would be no wind noises on their way back no matter how slow Firebird flew. Sir King Shui had been protecting the few children with the divine energy. Otherwise, even breathing would have been a problem for them. You are Uncle King Shui, right? A young and tender voice rang out. King Shui looked at the little girl who was about five or six years old standing before him in surprise. Her little red face was like an apple and she was quite adorable. There were also a few little boys around her. The children usually called him Brother King Shui before. It seemed like his seniority had risen now. He crouched down with little lass in his arms. What's your name? Do you want something? King Shui asked gently with a smile. 
He had given a child a string of the smallest firecrackers earlier, the type that wouldn't cause any injuries, because some other child snatched his so Shi Qingjuang asked him give the crying child one. Before King Shui left, King Shui told him, when someone snatches something from you, you should snatch it back. You're a man. Shi Qingjuang just smiled at one side without saying anything. These few children happened to see King Shui's actions, so King Shui could guess why they were looking for him. My name is Tong Tong. Uncle King Shui is a big hero and a great person. I like Uncle King Shui. The little girl looked at him with her wide eyes. Piffed. Shi Qingjuang laughed out loud at one side. King Shui scratched his head. Is she asking for a firecracker? Uncle King Shui is the best. The little girl chuckled. Tong Tong already knows how to flatter people at such a young age. You will no doubt have a promising future ahead of you. King Shui smiled as he shared some firecrackers with them since he had bought a lot. These were also for Chang Feng and Chang Feng was King Ji's child. King Ji already had three children now, a son and two daughters. Chang Feng was named by King Shui. But he wasn't at home when the other two were born. So they were named by Feng Yanfei as King Feng and King Xin. It wasn't like they must be named by King Shui or anything. But typically, a clan would look for people with the most cultivation to name the children. This was said to be to able to bring good fortune to this child. King Zun and King Yin were still too young. So now among the King clan's fourth generation, Luin Luin and Yu Chang were already adults. The slightly older one would be Chang Feng. The moment King Shui entered the house, the little fellow ran towards him asking for firecrackers. New Year had arrived within the blink of an eye and this was the time where friends and relatives would visit each other. This year, a lot of people came to visit the King clan. King Luo would also visit some old men who had extremely good relations with the King clan. Of course, the Feng clan came too. King Ji's wife, Feng Yanfei, was from the Feng clan. The Feng clan was a very well-regarded clan among the King village and Hundred Miles city these days due to the King clan. There used to be a match between the King clan's third generation. Every year during the new year, the third generation would learn from each other over the match. But ever since they left the King village, there had never been any matches between the third generation up until now. Although Luin Luin was from the fourth generation, she had attained the highest achievements. King Yu, who had the earth rock beast was not in the least bit inferior to King Bei now. Who asked King Bei to tame a flying sparrow hawk that had only the strength of about grade 2 Xianxin? The King clan no longer needed to prepare for that so called third generation match. Now, when they were at the Green Cloud Continent, they would compete against each other for their cultivation on the arena at the rear courtyard. But it was unaccessory to compete now that everyone clearly knew where they stood. Competing any further would be meaningless. Tonight was New Year's Eve. The King clan had prepared a grand feast for dinner during the evening. Everyone from the King clan was gathered together, including Dai King though she felt a little uncomfortable. This world was different than his previous world. There was less entertainment here, so it was very lively outside on New Year's Eve night. There were no spring festival galas here, but there were fireworks filling the sky. This could also be considered an impressive sight. On this night, many places would have fireworks lighting up the sky. Brilliant fireworks that were picturesque. After dinner, everyone went out in a hurry. The sky turned dark earlier during winter. The light stones outside were glowing faintly. The moon in the sky was bright and the sky was filled with stars, just like in the fairy tales. Siu, Xiu Xiu, trails of light suddenly shot up into the sky and then exploded. 
No one realized when the fireworks started, but the sky was very quickly filled with the exploding fireworks. The King clan's people weren't slow either. King Yu, King Hu, King Shan and King Shi started to light up the fireworks too. Within an instant, the fireworks continuously soared into the sky with King Zun, King Yin and King Ji's children excited cheers. King Ming and King Yan stayed in the bedroom because they were too young and they might be frightened. Fortunately the bedrooms here were well soundproofed. Despite the endless noises outside, it was extremely quiet inside the room. King Shui looked at the smiling faces of his family members around him and the few women by his side who were still as beautiful as always. He felt the small happiness in his heart. It was another year of brilliant fireworks with beauties around him. It was a pity that Dai Chen wasn't around around. The smiles among the fireworks were bright. King Shui lifted his head to look at the vast starry sky. All of a sudden, he felt a little lost about the direction of his life. This vast starry sky stretched on endlessly. Just what was breaking through the void? Were there any cultivators of false god and divine grades in the world of the nine continents? What was on the other side of the southern sea and eastern sea? He looked at the people around him and all of a sudden, he had the thought to cease moving forward. He shook his head. It was still too early for him to be content. Ye Jiang's problem wasn't resolved yet and he hadn't satisfied his curiosity towards the world of the nine continents either. God had given him this chance, so he must cherish this opportunity. Then there was the third treasure map. Just what kind of a place was that otherworldly paradise depicted on it? There were nine continents and he wasn't even done with exploring three yet. He then remembered about Eastern Victory Divine Continent. That was the continent with the most eccentric people among all the nine continents, so King Shui decided to make for the Eastern Victory Divine Continent via the Central Continent sometime in the future. Dai King turned her head to the side and glanced at the man who was watching the fireworks. She only realized at this moment that King Shui looked like someone who had been through the vicissitudes of life. He looked a little unruly and had a deep nostalgic expression on his face. At this exact moment, he was giving off the impression of a great imposing mountain. She was kind of infatuated with that figure that was not too tall yet standing straight in between heaven and earth. Not only that, she was also infatuated with that enchanting and earnestly handsome face of his. King Shui do you think my wish will come true if I wished upon the fireworks? She asked King Shui at this moment. King Shui was startled as he looked away and laughed. Miss King believes in this too. I do, you don't. Dai King asked softly. I've never tried it and neither have I thought of believing it or not. King Shui was telling the truth. He had never made any wish so he had never thought about whether he believed in it or not. If you have never tried it, that means you don't believe in it. Dai King pointed out to King Shui. Then have you tried it before? King Shui asked her with a smile. Yes, I did. Did it come true? No. Then why do you continue believing in it? King Shui continued to ask. Because I hope that my wish will come true. That's why I believe in it. Dai King raised her head to look at the gorgeous fireworks that decorated the whole sky. She then slowly shut her beautiful eyes. King Shui was tactful enough to stop questioning further. Just then, Huoyan Lu Li came over and laughed. King Shui, I made a wish. Guess what I wished for? You can't talk about your wishes. Otherwise it will not come true. King Shui laughed. New Year had passed very quickly. King Shui, accompany me home. Huoyan Lu Li asked King Shui after New Year had passed. King Shui was startled before he apologetically looked at Huoyan Lu Li. 
they had returned for half a month yet the thought of accompanying her home never crossed his mind. Now that he thought about it, everything about her home was unfamiliar to him. Sure. Are your parents still well? King Shui remembered about that uncle who was a blacksmith. He he. I don't have any parents. Huoyan Lu Li chuckled. Although she was laughing, she seemed to be slightly at loss. What about that Huoyan blacksmith store? King Shui was startled. He had never really asked her about this, because that was her home. So naturally her parents would be there. He had always assumed that the uncle there was Huoyan Lu Li's father and felt happy for that uncle for having such a beautiful and refined daughter. Chapter 811. Lu Li's Parents, Demon Gate. The Fire Cloud Blacksmith Store. King Shui asked, feeling puzzled but he immediately regretted. He should not have asked. He could tell from Huoyan Lu Li's expression that it was not something happy for her to bring up. You've seen that middle-aged man from the Fire Cloud blacksmith store, right? He's my foster father. The blacksmith store was not called the Fire Cloud blacksmith store in the past. After they've picked me up, being the honest people they were and seeing the words Huoyan Lu Li engraved on the jade pendant I had on me, it became my name. My foster parents had no kids of their own and they were so happy when they picked me up. They even changed the name of the blacksmith store they had inherited from their ancestors into Fire Cloud Blacksmith Store. When Huoyan Lu Li spoke about her foster father, a warm smile appeared on her face. The term Fire Cloud is from Huoyan Lu Li's surname, Huoyan. King Shui felt relieved. When he first met that middle-aged man back then, King Shui thought that he must had a beautiful wife, otherwise, it would have been impossible for him to have such a beautiful daughter like Huoyan Lu Li. I don't know why my foster father made me continue on using this name instead of following his surname. He even told me that I wasn't their own flesh and blood. I would prefer to be never told about this. King Shui now realized that everyone and every family had their own stories. It was no wonder that they said that there's a skeleton in every house. He had known Huoyan Lu Li for quite long time, but he only got to know this story of hers today. When faced with such matters, King Shui had no idea on what to say. She was usually very cheerful but she had not really feel so happy in her heart. After all, no matter who it is, no one would feel happy about it if the same situation had happened to them. To be abandoned by her birth parents, this was much more depressing than Shi Qingzhuang's situation. At the very least, Shi Qingzhuang knew who her parents were, she had her dearest grandfather, had a family and relatives she was related to by blood. However, it was different for Huoyan Lu Li. Without a family who were related to you by blood, one would also feel out of sorts. This might be the reason why she doesn't stay at home that much. They should have their difficulties, otherwise, who would bear to part with such a cute daughter? King Shui consoled Huoyan Lu Li gently. All right, let's not talk about them. Anyway, I've neither seen him before nor have any relations to them. Moreover, there's no way for me to meet them. I'll forever be the child of my foster parents. Huoyan Lu Li smiled and said. The more one acted that they did not care about something, the more it showed that they did really mind. However, King Shui did not say much. He merely flew toward Huoyan Lu Li to the Hundred Mile City, looking at her with pity. This was a lady who needed more love and concern. The Fire Cloud blacksmith store was the same as before. While it was not considered reputable in the Hundred Mile City, no one would dare to come here looking for trouble. It was because the bigger clans knew that the man in the Fire Cloud blacksmith store had a strong daughter in the country. Back then, Huoyan Lu Li was managing the earthly paradise in the Kang Lang country. He had also met Huoyan Lu Li there. 
and eventually they were brought together by marriage. King Shui and Huoyan Lu Li walked side by side into the Fire Cloud blacksmith store. There were people around the store, looking at the weapons on display. Further in, there was a middle-aged man forging weapons as well as two young individuals who were smelting and forging iron. Father, when Huoyan Lu Li saw the middle-aged man, she smiled happily and called out to him. Stunned, the middle-aged man lifted his head and saw Huoyan Lu Li. Putting down his hammer, he broke into an infectious smile. It was a happiness that came from deep within. Lass, you're back. The middle-aged man walked out and said happily. King Shui assessed this middle-aged man. He was in his fifties, with a burly and strong physique. His arms looked muscular and strong too. Huoyan Lu Li went up to grab this man by the arm and smiled happily. Lass, I'm dirty. Come, let's go in. Your mother misses you dearly and has been nagging on when you'd be coming back. The man said happily. This was a good father, an honest and down-to-earth man. It was only then that the man seemed to have noticed King Shui. A hint of surprise appeared on his face before he smiled and looked at Huoyan Lu Li. Sir so Alas has someone she likes now. Why aren't you introducing him to your father? A hint of blush appeared on Huoyan Lu Li's face. He's called King Shui. Oh, I remember you. King Shui who was previously in the Hundred Mile City. I've seen you. You've come here before. The man seemed to be struck by realization before he spoke. This guy's memory was quite good. Hello uncle. King Shui bowed and greeted the man politely. Come, let's go in. There's no need to stand on ceremony. Since you're someone lass had set her sights on, then you're also my kin now. Don't mind that our status is low and can't be compared to the Shi clan. The man grabbed King Shui's and said with a laugh. Seemed like he knew about King Shui being engaged to Shi Qingjuang. Father, what are you going on about? Huoyan Lu Li said reproachfully. Uncle, please be assured. I can swear here to God that I'll definitely treat Lu Li well. If I were to let her down, I'll be struck by lightning. King Shui said with all solemnness to the man. King Shui, what are you doing? If Huoyan Lu Li was this man's flesh and blood, he wouldn't say anything like this. King Shui had always felt that making an oath was a foolish thing to do. It was not because he was a type of person that would go back on his promises. However, there were some things that even making an oath wouldn't help if one lacked the capability. People who could go back on their words would treat the most vicious oaths like just an ordinary occurrence. However, King Shui felt that he needed to express himself now. Ha ha. All right. Even a country bumpkin like me can tell the sincerity behind these words. I only hope that the lass could find someone who'd be able to treat her well. The man smiled and said. However, King Shui could still see a hint of worry in his eyes. The man let the two younger guys continued to watch the shop, while the three of them headed towards the back. Once they did, they heard some sounds and a plain-looking lady walked out. The lady should be in her forties and her plain clothes made her look even more amiable. When she saw Huoyan Lu Li, she cried out in surprise. Lu Li is back. Mother, Huoyan Lu Li went up to hug the woman and called out happily. The woman patted Huoyan Lu Li on the back and said, Let the guest come in. Mother, he is King Shui. Huoyan Lu Li smiled and said, King clans King Shui. It's good lass, you've found a good person. The woman smiled and looked at King Shui. King Shui pays respect to auntie. King Shui once again bowed respectfully. King Shui also took out the gifts he had prepared earlier, passing them to the couple. There were also the beauty pellet and two Xianshan golden pellets. 
This was his way of helping Hua and Lu Li's parents. The two of them were very happy to receive such gifts. With a slight hesitation, they received the gifts, not standing on ceremony with him. This also made King Shui felt happy. He preferred honest and down-to-earth people like them. Although taking the Xianxin golden pellet would imply that they would only remain at the Xianxin level for all their lives, to them, this was like an elixir that was even more precious than mountains of riches. With a lifespan of 500 years managing this blacksmith shop, even with a small sum of money, they would also be able to lead a carefree life in the Hundred Miles City. After everyone got to know each other, they had their lunch. The woman then brought Hua and Lu Li upstairs to have a chat, leaving the man and King Shui together. King Shui, I feel that there are some things that we should tell you. After giving it some thought, the man spoke up. King Shui was stunned for a moment. However, he already knew what the man had wanted to say. It was about their relationship with Hua and Lu Li. He smiled and said, Uncle, please go on. Lass isn't our flesh and blood. The man sighed softly and said, Him, I know. Lu Li has told me about it. I don't know if it's good or bad that Lu Li is with you. Although you've already shown your sincerity, I'd still like to say it again. If there's something that's very tough to accomplish that stands between you and the lass, will you do it? After giving it some thought, the man said. King Shui thought about it before he smiled and said, As long as it's something that's good for Lu Li and if Lu Li is agreeable, I'll do it. This matter is extremely difficult. The man had his brows furrowed all this time, as if he was still hesitating. King Shui was now experienced about the world and could tell from his expression that this must be something which could concern people's lives. Therefore, the man was considering if King Shui was reliable and if he had the capability to pull it off. I'm aware that I might not be able to accomplish it immediately, but I'll definitely do it in the future. There's no one else in the Green Cloud continent who's more suitable than me. While you might not really believe or understand me, you should understand your daughter and her judgment. The man's eyes lit up before he smiled and said, Actually, her real parents hadn't hoped for her to be able to accomplish this affair, but I'll still tell you. Regardless whether you can do it or not, I hope that you won't tell her. Only tell her when you have the ability to pull it off. Of course I won't tell her. Since uncle was willing to tell me that she isn't your flesh and blood, but still wouldn't mention this to her, this affair must be very important. King Shui felt very puzzled as well. Have you heard of the Demon Gate? The man gave it some thought and said. Demon Gate? King Shui asked. Astonished. King Shui recalled hearing about the Demon Gate from Lady Duanmu. It seemed to be in the central continent and he had once asked what was the cultivation level of the strongest person there. He seemed to hear that other than the Demon Gate, there was also the Buddha sect, the Sky City, the Tang Manor, the Moon City, and the Duanmu City. These appeared to be the most powerful factions in the central continent. That's right, the Demon Gate, the man said with affirmation. I seem to have heard someone mentioned it before that it's in the central continent. King Shui said, sounding unsure. I'm not sure either. I can only tell you that if you have the power to do so in the future, bring the lass to the demon gate. If you don't have the power to, then don't ever go there. Don't tell the lass that her parents are in the demon gate either. After saying all of these, the man appeared to be more relaxed. King Shui nodded. The demon gate was of the same level as the Buddha sect in the central continent, while the Buddha sect was of the same level as the Lion King's Ridge. Now, King Shui did not know if he should feel happy or smile bitterly. Ye Jiang's issue was related to the Lion King's Ridge and now to think that Huayan Lu Li was involved with the demon gate. 
The heavens were really thinking very highly of him, giving him a second existence he would need to deal with, which was also one of the strongest in a continent. Now, even King Shui himself felt that he was quite a big shot to have such ridiculous stuff happen to him. However, thinking of how his soul transitioned into this world and thus made his ability to withstand situations stronger, he felt that everything in the world was possible. Since he was reincarnated and had met people he loved, then he would just work hard. It wasn't as if there was no hope at all. Chapter 812 Trivial Matters Revisit the 10,000 Turtle Swamp After he pondered for a while, King Shui gave a firm nod and said, If Lu Li is willing, then I will bring her to the Demon Gate. To be honest, Lu Li has always been thinking of you and your wife. Both of you are like real parents to Lu Li, for all the love and care you have given to her to become who she is now. The man laughed out heartily after he heard King Shui's words. Then, he looked at King Shui and said, We aren't wrong about you. I thought hard about it at first before I finally told her the truth. Now I'm still unsure whether that was the right thing to do or the worst thing I've ever done. Huoi and Lu Li's foster father let out a heavy sigh as he questioned his own decision. I can understand how you feel. I have a daughter too, who is currently 21 years old. You see, I'm actually not her biological father. The life of her parents were taken from her during her early age leaving her with a deep vengeance that she never knew. She was brought up by her aunt after that. I had to act as a husband to her aunt in order to show the love of a family to my dear daughter. Till this day, I still lack the courage to tell her the truth about her true identity. I fear that she might lose it if she knew about her true past. King Shui forced a smile as he thought about Luin Luin's tragic past. The foster father was shocked about what he had just learnt from King Shui. Nevertheless, he gave a comforting smile to King Shui and said, That girl Lu Li is lucky to have met you in her life. I'm very happy and pleased to know that. You're wrong, uncle. It is me who is lucky enough to have met Lu Li. We have been together through everything for about ten years already. King Shui recalled the time in the southern city where Lu Li almost lost her life. He could still feel the jitters crawling up to his spine whenever he thought about it. In the afternoon, King Shui and Huai and Lu Li went for a stroll around the Hundred Mile City since both of them have free time to pass leisurely. Huai and Lu Li was happy. She was already satisfied as long as she could always be by King Shui's side. After a while, they arrived in front of the King Clan's medicinal store. Back then, the King Clan had allowed the Shi Clan to look after the estate before they left, so the medicinal store could still be opened. The King Clan had also thought that one day, they might be able to come back and stay again for a certain period of time. Lu Li, let's go inside and take a look. It's been a long time since we've been here. I feel nostalgic looking at this place. King Shui signaled with a smile to Huai and Lu Li. He wanted to go inside the King Clan's medicinal store to see what had changed after a long period of his absence. All right, I missed this place too. Huai and Lu Li smiled gleefully. When they entered, there were three people inside the medicinal store. The medicinal garden was still in great condition, as the herbs seemed to be thriving healthily. The three people he met were the ones who had mended the garden and meticulously took care of the thriving herbs. Even when he had not checked the garden for a long time, there were no stray grasses to be seen. The people hired by the Shi clan had regularly performed housekeeping to this place as evident by the clean appearance of the garden as well as the structure of the building. King Shui and Huai and Lu Li greeted and introduced themselves to the three caretakers before they entered the building.
The rooms were remarkably clean, but the bed frames were laid bare without comforters as they had already been kept inside the cabinet before they left. King Shui, how about we stay here for the night? said Huayan Lu Li as she blinked her eyes seductively at him. Is it because this place is quiet, and no one will hear you if you make a lot of noises? King Shui chuckled. You scoundrel, is that all what you think about every day? Huayan Lu Li scoffed shyly. Huayan Lu Li was wearing a violet dress that complemented her exquisite beauty. She was naturally a woman with a flattering figure, in which King Shui had found irresistible. From the first time he saw her, he knew she was special. The first impression she gave wasn't of a beauty that could captivate an entire city, but merely a lady with a beautiful and attractive face. But as time went by, her inner beauty and seductiveness began to show through her elegant aura, which had caused him to be unable to resist her seduction. King Shui then abruptly pulled her and left the medicinal store as he called her as a succubus. If they continue to stay in that building, he had a feeling that they would end up having sex with each other in the next second. When it was almost dark, he hopped onto the firebird with Huayan Lu Li and headed back to the King village. On their way back, King Shui caught a glimpse of the scenery below and became stunned for a good while. The 10,000 Turtle Swamp. He didn't particularly see anything out of the ordinary in the swamp, but he had suddenly thought of the powerful demonic beast that lived in the waters. He remembered the valuable items he had caught during fishing, as well as the personal belongings of the art maestro himself. Recalling this memory had given King Shui a new idea. Back then, his cultivation was moderate. After he had received an attack from the demonic beast and survived, he concluded that the beast was not very strong, perhaps around the level of a martial saint. With his current ability, the demonic beast of a martial saint level was nothing to him. So he decided that he should go fishing in the swamp after a few days, with the hope to find that demonic beast again. To be honest, King Shui wasn't really curious about that demonic beast anymore. It was just an early stage martial saint. However, because he had encountered the beast in the 10,000 Turtle Swamp, he was still a little bit curious of its ability and origin. Most members of the King clan had decided to stay in the King village for a few days before they returned to the Heavenly Palace. They decided not to stay in the Hundred Miles City anymore. Besides, the only place King Luo had nostalgia for was the King Village, not the Hundred Miles City. Those who still wished to visit the Hundred Miles City could do so by the means of a flying mount as it would be fast and convenient. New Year's had passed. Shi Qingzhuang went back to stay at the Shi clan, whereas Huayan Lu Li had gone back to the Fire Cloud blacksmith store to spend more time with her foster parents. On the other hand, Mingyu Gelu, Kanghai Mingyu, Ye Jiang and Wenren Wushuang had went to stay in the King clan's medicinal store in the Hundred Miles City. King Luo, Lin Zana, and the other members of the King clan remained in the King village. King Yi with a few uncles and aunts also stayed in the village. King Shui had no preference, so he could stay wherever he wanted. The time to travel between the King Village and the Hundred Miles City was quite short anyway. Besides the excursion between the Hundred Miles City and the King Village, he had nothing much to do. However, today, King Shi went to look for King Shui to speak to him, only to stumble over his words. King Shi took a while before he had finally calmed himself and said, King Shui, I need your help this time. He was surprised by King Shi's approach. It was rare for him to behave like this, unless he had encountered a real problem. King Shui laughed and said, Tell me, if it's nothing ruthless, I will help you in any way I can. King Shi revealed a smile and expressed his concern. Of course it's nothing ruthless. 
If King Shui can help me, then it will definitely work. Do tell. What is it about? King Shui urged with an unchanging smile. He was a bit curious as well. I want to marry Xiang Yuan from the Xiang clan. King Shui was brought back to his memories of nearly past ten years, when he was still in the Hundred Mile City. There were two distinguished ladies in the Xiang clan, the full-bosomed Xiang Yuan and the delicate Xiang Bao. During those days, King Shi and Xiang Yuan would always play together. When the King clan had to move away from the Hundred Mile City, King Shi was reluctant to part with Xiang Yuan. It seemed like he had reignited the spark of romance with Xiang Yuan during his few days in the Hundred Mile City. Then as your uncle, I will help you with the proposal of marriage. King Shui happily agreed to help King Shi with a swift response. My words may have less influence to her family. Please, I beg a favor of you. You must help me with the proposal. King Shi pleaded in distress. King Shui said nothing more. He headed straight to the Xiang clan and made a marriage proposal on behalf of King Shi to Xiang Yuan's family. Naturally, the Xiang clan looked forward to their marriage as they believed this virtue was blessed by their ancestor. After all these years, the current King clan had become different than they were before, they had become stronger and more influential. When he paid a visit to the Xiang clan, he saw the girl he used to know who had become a fine woman, Xiang Bao. The delicate small face of the little girl had grown to an appearance of a delicate woman. She had grown taller, almost taller than an average woman, with an air of elegance to her demeanor. Xiang Bao had married and became a mother of two. After all, she was already 30 years old. As long as a martial warrior had reached the strength of a Xianxian, 30 years old or even 40 years old, would still be considered as the age of a young adult. However, this would be different for the residents in the Hundred Mile City and the King Village. The youth of an ordinary human could only last before one could reach the age of 50, with the average lifespan of 160 years or above. Of course, some humans were able to live to the age of 200 but only a few could do that. Only those with the strength of a peak Hushin level would be able to live past 200 years old. So in essence, the coming of age for ordinary humans would be 16 years old. Even though that was the legal age to get married and conceive children, most people would only achieve those at the age of 25 or above. Those who got married at the age of 30 or 40 were uncommon, so to speak. When Xiang Bao saw King Shui after years of not seeing each other, she greeted him with a warm smile and said, How are you, King Shui? It's been a long time since we've seen each other. The cheerfulness could either be an automated response of a mother or the feelings of nostalgia to an old friend. King Shui widened his smile. Her voice was pleasant as always but with an added hint of maturity. The man who was able marry someone as exquisite as her must be very lucky. I'm fine. How about you? King Shui greeted back with a genuine smile. He still remembered his time in the Hundred Miles City back then, especially the moments where he collided with her three times which had caused her to fall on the ground each time. It was nostalgic when he recalled that memory. King Shui couldn't help but laughed at those unforgettable moments. No wonder there was a saying, make more memories in your youth that will last forever. Even if those memories were nefarious, one would never be alone when they had reached their prime as memories were all that were left to tell a story and relive those moments with unflagging patience. Memories were indeed wonderful things. Xiang Bao had to leave before a small conversation was able to pass between them. Due to her current status, it wasn't appropriate for her to be involved with King Shui for more than required. As he stared at the woman walking away, a subtle air of melancholy surrounded him in an instant. 
A person would meet a lot of people in one lifetime. Most people would slip by, while a few would be able to cross paths and develop a relationship with one another. Some people might stay and some might go away. This was a fundamental pattern of a human's interaction with one another. Parting would always be a melancholy experience, because as they said, parting is such sweet sorrow. However, King Shui wasn't greatly affected by Xiang Bao as much as he thought, but their meeting did cause him to remember the people he had met throughout his life, like Yu He. King Shui only knew about her departure from the Yu clan days ago after he had met up with Yu Donghao in the Hundred Miles City. Then there was King Hanye, Elder Yun from the Feng clan, Gung Sun Janwu and the sisters from the Jin clan. After the marriage between King Shi and Xiang Yuan was confirmed, the King clan organized a banquet ceremony to officially announce King Shi and Xiang Yuan as husband and wife. This time, Xiang Yuan would be leaving with King Shi back to the Heavenly Palace as an official member of the King clan. As relatives, King Shui would never forget to treat the Xiang clan with respect. He left some gifts that were deemed valuable by the Xiang clan like some precious medicinal pills and beast skins. King Yi had already went to visit Hua and Lu Li's foster parents in the Fire Cloud blacksmith store to affirm the relationship between King Shui and Hua and Lu Li. Betrothal gifts had already been sent and the guest list had already been made. Of course, they would never forget to prepare a banquet to signify the official status of both King Shui and Hua and Lu Li as a married couple. King Shi's personal affair had been settled, and as with King Yu's matter, it was settled when they were in the continent's capital. The lady named Chao Yang was now officially King Yu's woman. All members of the King clan's third generation were now capable to create a family of their own. The youngest King Bei was getting older too. King Zi, on the other hand, had already reached the age of 40. Good thing that the members of the King clan were now above the level of Xianxian, so even if one were to hit 40 years old, they could still be considered young. However, in terms of cultivation, King Zi couldn't go as far as the others did. After King Shui had finished his preparations to go back to the Heavenly Palace, he decided to revisit the Ten Thousand Turtle Swamp and check out the place. He departed to the Ten Thousand Turtle Swamp as soon as he had made up his mind. He wasn't really concerned with his safety as there was nothing to worry about. A pinch of curiosity was all it took to push him to make his way to the swamp. King Shui also wanted to try fishing again anyway. The Ten Thousand Turtle Swamp was a restricted area of the Hundred Miles City. He would never see anyone else inside the swamp area except himself. There were some who were as curious as he was and went into the swamp area just to throw away their precious lives. The demonic beasts inside the Ten Thousand Turtle Swamp were widely known by the people of the Hundred Miles City to be ferocious and unforgiving. King Shui felt quite excited to revisit the swamp. He knew that he would get a lot of benefits as he had last time. The public had deemed this place as a danger zone, but for him, it was a place of paradise. King Shui hoped with a greedy mindset that he could reap more benefits this time. Chapter 813. The Sixth Grade of Nature Energy. There were numerous turtles of different sizes, colors, and species swimming in the swamp. The name, Ten Thousand Turtle Swamp, was more than appropriate for this place. King Shui couldn't see all of the swamp clearly even after activating his spiritual sense. His spiritual sense had grown remarkably strong, much stronger than he could remember. He could, however, generally sense the aura around his surroundings to check if there was a strong demonic beast inside the swamp. Thankfully, there was none. Although he was able to gauge the presence of any demonic beasts, King Shui still couldn't clearly sense the surrounding aura. 
which may have been due to some kind of water distortion or some effect of the 10,000 turtle swamp. After a while, he decided to go fishing in the swamp. Maybe he might be able to confront that demonic beast from before. He went to the usual fishing spot surrounded by swamp waters, and took out his pure gold fishing rod. King Shui felt excited when he imagined what he could catch this time. He waited until everything was quiet before he threw the fishing line into the swamp. All that was left was to wait silently for the rod to catch something. Time passed by slowly as he continued to wait patiently. The pure gold fishing rod possessed the miraculous ability to attract spiritualized things in the pond by grabbing onto them, and it could attract spiritualized creatures to swim towards the line as well. Ordinary aquatic creatures like fishes and prawn would instead fearfully stay away from the fishing line. Even after 15 minutes had passed, there was still nothing. He could, however, sense a strange power from the rod flowing into his body, followed by the infusion of his spiritual sense into the fishing rod. The fishing rod and fishing line seemed as if they had become one with his body. What a rare treasure! The pure gold fishing rod was indeed a phenomenal treasure. When he thought about what he had just said, he laughed at his own foolishness. The past items he had fished out with the pure gold fishing rod had all been valuable. He just hadn't expected the rod's ability to combine his spiritual sense with itself, like a divine weapon trying to identify its master. Nonetheless, the rod still remained as it should be, a rod. He was still happy about it. The fishing rod had an important place in his heart, second to the realm of the violet jade immortal. It was more important than his other items, even the thunder god, which he felt was inferior in quality to the pure gold fishing rod. After another 15 minutes, the rod finally moved. King Shui wasn't especially excited, because after linking his spiritual sense with the rod, he was able to tell that a turtle was on the end of the line. Blood turtle. The blood turtle was a turtle species that was rarely seen in the wild. Consuming a blood turtle could produce the immediate effect of replenishing the blood cells in a human's body, especially useful for those who with severe blood loss. In a sense, the blood turtle was considered a medicine of good quality, as it could be used as a food supplement to improve the quality of a human's blood, strengthening the physical body in the process. The blood turtle wasn't what King Shui had been expecting but he was still content to keep it inside the realm of the violet jade immortal. He didn't have that particular species yet, but he did already possess a scarlet turtle, a related but more poisonous creature. After that, King Shui captured a few turtle species and some uncommon aquatic animals. Unfortunately, he had already lost his interest in these creatures after a while. Suddenly, King Shui could feel a spiritual presence through the line of the fishing rod that had been infused with his spiritual sense. Excitement coursed through his veins as he felt the impressive aura of a demonic beast moving through the waters. It was the aura of an early martial saint demonic beast, which had King Shui simultaneously thrilled with joy and a little bit disappointed. He was disappointed because the current strength of the demonic beast was more or less worthless to him. On the other hand, he could tell with certainty that this demonic beast was the same one that had attacked him the last time he was here. Since you've come, let's see what you're made of. King Shui waited as the demonic beast approached his direction. However, the aura slowly began to dissipate, as if it were trying to escape from King Shui. King Shui was startled. He didn't think the beast would be this cunning to try and evade his grasp. He quickly retracted his pure gold fishing rod and locked his spiritual sense onto his target. Then, he took out the water-repelling pearl and immediately jumped into the 10,000 turtle swamp. He really wanted to know what kind of demonic beast had been able to severely hurt him back then. 
The target was retreating at a progressively faster speed. So King Shui hastened his pace and continued the chase. The strength of his opponent posed no threat to him anyway. Even if the demonic beast was indeed dangerous, he would know beforehand through his spiritual sense. The distance between the two was getting shorter. It was then King Shui discovered how deep the Ten Thousand Turtle Swamp was, he still hadn't reached the bottom yet. After a period of time, King Shui could feel his feet suddenly touch the stone ground of the bottom swamp. He had reached the bottom. King Shui observed the uneven ground and noticed that the area within a few meters was dry. This must be the effect of the water repelling pearl. Right now, he was more focused on looking for the demonic beast. He had no time to waste looking at the ground. The aura of the demonic beast had completely vanished. He had been in the middle of his search when the aura had suddenly disappeared. It was strange indeed. Nevertheless, King Shui continued to search around the bottom of the swamp for the demonic beast. The Ten Thousand Swamp seemed vast. The water near the surface was clear, but water at the bottom was sky blue and fuzzy. His silhouette flashed through the bottom of the swamp around where the demonic beast had vanished. After a while, he finally found the place where it had disappeared to. This place seemed similar to the entrance of the palace under the lake below Goddess Peak. Without a doubt, he knew that the early martial saint demonic beast had gone inside, so King Shui quickly gave chase without thinking twice. Inside this place was an empty space, there was no palace. There were, however, mountain-sized jade stones of the size and a bunch of trees thriving in this area. None of these were important, because King Shui had already set his eyes on the demonic beast in front of his eyes. King Shui was shocked. The demonic beast wasn't that big, and it was pitch black in color. With a glance, he could see that the turtle was about 10 meters in size, with a large tail about 15 meters long. The head of the turtle seemed slightly longer, like a large python intertwining with a large turtle. Xuan Wu, a miniature Xuan Wu, was it a coincidence? In his past life, he had heard much about the legend of the mythical Xuan Wu. So when he came to this world, he believed that there would be a demonic beast like the Xuan Wu hiding from human sight. After all, people in this world had legends about dragons and phoenixes, so why not a Xuan Wu as well? However, he was perplexed to see one right in front of him, in plain sight. In King Shui's past life, the Xuan Wu was known as a spirit beast, a beast created from the fusion of a turtle and a snake. It was a powerful defensive beast, known as a protector of the north. However, King Shui wasn't sure whether the demonic beast in front of him was really a Xuan Wu. After all, this one seemed to only possess the strength of an early martial saint, which was not as strong as he had thought. Even though the beast was moderately sized, it was still considered small compared to the average size of demonic beasts at the martial saint level. A panic-stricken cry was emitted by either the head of the vile snake, or the head of the turtle. Even though it wasn't strong physically, the spirit beast possessed the strongest spiritual key that he had ever seen in a demonic beast, including his diamond gigantic elephant and firebird. The only weakness this beast had was its weak attack power. This was probably because it hadn't matured yet. King Shui wasn't interested in its attack power. He decided to tame the beast just because it looked like a Xuan Wu. King Shui temporarily named this demonic beast as Turtle Snake. King Shui felt that he should be able to tame a demonic beast of martial saint level despite the fact he didn't consider himself a beast tamer. However, he was still undeniably stronger than most beast tamers in the world. King Shui could sense that the turtle snake was afraid of him, probably because it had sensed the powerful presence of his strength. However, 
King Shui noted that the turtle snake was intensely staring at the water-repelling pearl he was holding, as if it was being cautious of it. The water-repelling pearl had been spat out by that gigantic old turtle's mouth. Perhaps the turtle snake was afraid of this water-repelling pearl. King Shui waved the item on his hand and said, Are you afraid of this pearl? As he waved his hand, the turtle snake immediately took two steps backwards. King Shui had a sudden thought and approached the turtle snake slowly, but the beast quickly retreated again. When the distance between him less than five meters, something unexpected happened. The pitch black turtle snake plopped on the ground instantly. Did it just surrender itself? King Shui glanced at the water repelling pearl that he had received from the gigantic old turtle. There was a possibility that it might not be a water repelling pearl at all. Curiously, he activated the heavenly vision technique and examined the pearl. Divine Turtle Spirited Pearl. Divine Turtle Spirited Pearl. A coagulated pearl of the 10,000 years spirited turtle with a miraculous effect. King Shui was surprised to know that the old turtle was actually a 10,000 years spirited turtle. Even though the golden medicinal turtle inside the realm of the violet jade immortal was about 6,000 years old, it couldn't fight like the old turtle. The old turtle could be considered a battle turtle, a primitive battle beast of 10,000 years. Because of the old turtle, the woman in the crystal coffin crept into his mind once again. Who was the divine-like woman exactly? How long had she been in there? What kind of ability did the old turtle possess? The old turtle was gigantic too, unlike the much smaller turtle snake in front of him. Even though the Xuanwu he had seen from the illustrations in his past life had similar features to the turtle snake, there were also many descriptions that depicted the details of the Xuanwu. The Xuanwu was supposedly a divine turtle that possessed an exceedingly powerful strength. King Shui wasn't afraid that the turtle snake would lash out at him as he walked straight towards it. He reached out his hand and touched the shivering turtle snake. The moment he touched the beast, an influx of superb spiritual ki abruptly flowed into King Shui's whole body in the span of a few seconds. In that instant, the nature energy and state of immovable as mountains that had already been circulating non-stop suddenly achieved breakthroughs. This was definitely God's doing. The nature energy had finally reached the sixth grade. King Shui was excited to know that the nature energy had seemingly been absorbed into his body and was promptly circulating on its own. He couldn't feel it outside his body, but the nature energy had indeed began to circulate in full speed in an instant. Moreover, the nature energy required zero energy consumption, which filled King Shui with all sorts of emotion. Technically, he could use the nature energy forever, which was way more than he had expected. The sixth grade of nature energy was also twice as strong as the fifth grade of nature energy. King Shui stood still in surprise for a good minute. A fantastic spirit beast indeed. Even though the state of immovable as mountains had broke through to the fifth grade, he couldn't sense an obvious change in the technique. Regardless, the dense aura inside his body had grown stronger, his overall strength had increased by 10%, and his imposing aura had increased exponentially. This all was most likely due to the effect of the state of immovable as mountains. Suddenly, King Shui felt that he might be able to help the woman slumbering inside the crystal coffin with the energyless nature energy. But was she worth the effort? He looked at the well-behaved and submissive turtle snake. The reason he could feel a surge of spiritual strength earlier was because of the divine turtle spirited pearl. Since he had successfully caught the turtle snake, he decided to use his heavenly vision technique to examine its attributes. The spirited snake turtle, a spirit beast of the heaven and earth with the ability of one-sided guard. 
After looking at these few words, King Shui shook his head. This wasn't a Xuanwu. But it didn't really matter whether this was a Xuanwu or not. A spirit beast was already enough for King Shui. King Shui then tried to put the spirited snake turtle into the realm of the violet jade immortal. This was an amphibious demonic beast that he had already successfully tamed, so it shouldn't be a problem to put it inside the realm. The moment he successfully put the spirited snake turtle into the realm of the violet jade immortal, King Shui could feel a slight change occurring inside the realm itself. He flashed into the realm immediately. And King Shui was stunned. The realm of the violet jade immortal had grown twice as big as before, with the width of 1000 meters. Could it be that the realm of the violet jade immortal had upgraded too? King Shui couldn't be bothered to check on what the spirited snake turtle was doing inside the pond that had doubled in size, and immediately headed straight to the stone monument to check on the inscribed statements. Sixth level of the realm of the violet jade immortal, unlocked. Seventh level of the realm of the violet jade immortal, locked. There wasn't a breakthrough. Was this the effect of the spirited snake turtle's one-sided guard? Chapter 814. Earth Element Immortal Stone Flower, Rainbow Light City. It's the one-sided guard effect of the spiritual snake turtle. The realm of the violet jade immortal hadn't upgraded. It was still the sixth level of the realm of the violet jade immortal. However, it had doubled in length and width compared to the usual. This reminded King Shui of the slight fluctuation of the realm that he felt at the moment when he kept the spirited snake turtle. It was similar to that of the fluctuation that he felt when the realm upgraded in the past. Hence, King Shui felt that there were several additional spaces in the realm now. It should have had to do with the one-sided guard ability of the spirited snake turtle. Other than this, King Shui wasn't able to find any other reason for it. The extra spaces added to the realm made King Shui feel really happy because he had more demonic beasts now. In addition to that, his demonic beasts would also become bigger the moment they broke through. Especially when the firebird opened up its wings. It was too huge. The width and length of the realm doubled whereas its total area increased fourfold. This caused the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal to feel a lot more spacious. At least the Firebird could now fly around the realm. The size of the lake also more than doubled. The thing which surprised King Shui the most was that the size of the poisonous liquid lake that he made a bit later had also increased by more than double. It seemed like the things that he changed with his consciousness in the realm wouldn't only be conserved it would even be approved by the realm itself. Now, King Shui was standing by the lake and looking at the stationary spiritual snake turtle at the bottom of the lake. It seemed to be really at peace now. At a spot not so distant away from here, clam and golden medicinal turtle could also be seen. King Shui only came out after conversing with the spiritual snake turtle through his spiritual sense. After going through a simple telepathic communication, King Shui found out that the change in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal was related to the one-sided guard ability of the spirited snake turtle. Since he had tamed it, as long as it was alive, the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal would sustain its current form. But if it was to perish, the realm itself would recover its past appearance. With the current strength of the spirited snake turtle, it couldn't be much help to King Shui. Hence, he made up his mind to let the spirited snake turtle stand guard in the realm of the violet jade immortal. In any case, it had always been in the 10,000 turtle swamp before and hadn't tired of it. This way, not only would there be a lot more space in the realm, the realm itself would be more abundant with spiritual energy as well. In other words, it would be more suitable for plants, animals and demonic beasts to grow. After staying there for a while, 
King Shui exited the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. Seeing that the jade-like stones and plants here had good quality and that the current realm of the Violet Jade Immortal had a lot of extra space, he threw it in without much thought. Not only this, he even set up a philosophical decoration in the realm according to this place. After all, this place looked quite beautiful. In the future, there would be another splendorous and majestic place for him to rest in the realm. King Shui looked around and found a few of the spirited snake turtles collection. It mostly consisted of precious spiritual stones. It was a kind of stone filled with spiritual key. Furthermore, it came in quite a huge quantity. The stones which he tossed into the realm previously also had spiritual key, just not as abundant as those inside the small stones. King Shui didn't hold back and immediately threw it into the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. King Shui observed the place yet again and when he found there was nothing left, he walked out of it. King Shui took the water-repelling pearls and and made his way to the Ten Thousand Turtle Swamp. Since he was able to get some good stuff with the pure gold fishing rod, he wanted to see if there was any precious stuff at the bottom of the lake. Considering that he had even captured the spirited snake turtle, the Ten Thousand Turtle Swamp wasn't that scary anymore. King Shui stepped on the rocky surface of the bottom of the pond. There were stones, bones and other things on the ground. Because of the water-repelling pearls he possessed, it was impossible for fish and prawns to appear in the surroundings. However, he was still able to spot a few fish and prawns at a spot not so far away. The resistance force of the water-repelling pearls would repel them into the surroundings along with the water. A. King Shui looked at the flower nearby here, which was growing in between the stone crack. Its entire body was silvery white colored. It was something which could be easily neglected if not observed carefully. It was roughly around a palm tall and a thumb thick, yet it gave people the impression that it was really sturdy and strong like a pencil. A mortal stone flower. The earth element flower of the five elements flower. Unfortunately, it was still too young. Luckily he managed to notice it early or else it would have been drowned by the water. He moved the immortal stone flower to the realm of the violet jade immortal. It's not something to be worried about because no matter what elements it was, it would still be able to grow in the soil of the realm of the violet jade immortal. The best nurturing place for earth element flower was on the ground, because the stones were also earth attributed. After that, King Shui continued to look through the ten thousand turtle swamp. Unfortunately, he only ran into stuff that wasn't considered that precious. If he was not mistaken, the art maestro was the only person who came here. In fact, his stuff had also been taken away by King Shui. King Shui didn't know what the art maestro came to the Ten Thousand Turtle Swamp for. He actually died at the claws of a grade one martial saint demonic beast. King Shui shook his head and flew above the Ten Thousand Turtle Swamp. He had a lot of gains on his trip this time. Both his nature energy and immovable mountains went up by a grade each. Furthermore, his nature energy had also reached great heights. It would revolve on its own with zero consumption, not to mention its strength had also doubled. Common poisons, illusory attacks and mental attacks, when before the heaven and earth's pure energy that King Shui possessed, were all only thin papers which would easily be pierced through with pencils. His strength once again took another huge leap. The breakthrough of the nature energy let King Shui see a ray of hope. Perhaps, he was not far away from making another breakthrough. He was yearning for the seventh heavenly layer. As long as he achieved that, he had a feeling that he would have the authority to voice his opinion wherever he went. The world of the nine continents was getting more and more exciting. As he went back to King Clan's medicinal store, 
he happened to see Kang Hai Mingyu about to take the two little fellows out. Dai King was also beside her. At the moment she spotted King Shui, she smiled, King Shui, Mingyu is going to bring the little fellows out shopping. We're afraid that we might run into bad people, why don't you come with us? King Shui rubbed his nose. He had no choice but to go along. King Shui blushed as he remembered what Dai King had said previously. Meeting bad people in Hundred Miles City. It should be relatively difficult for them to run into bad people even across the green cloud continent. Daddy, hug me. King Yin opened up her arms and ran towards King Shui. King Shui smiled and picked her up. He kissed her cheeks with all his might, causing the little fellow to let out a loud and clear laugh. Kang Hai Mingyu was pulling King Zun while observing King Shui's incomparably warm smile. Dai King on the other hand, went blank as she saw the warm scene in front of her. Along the way, a lot of people would greet King Shui and the group. The two children were fascinated with everything they saw. Dai King carried King Zun. She would buy the little fellow whatever he wanted. Every time that happened, King Yin would also ask for the same thing. Hence, King Shui would go back to the place again to get her one. When that happened, Dai King would smile and look at him, causing King Shui to feel a bit confused. Kang Hai Mingyu on the other hand, stood to the side and smiled while looking at them. Deep down, she thought to herself that her husband was truly destined to have many women around him. At the blink of an eye, another few days passed. King Shui and the group were also already prepared to go back to the continent's capital. On their way back this time, a lot of people from Hundred Miles City showed up to send them off. There were people from Shi Clan, Fire Cloud Blacksmith Store, Xiang Clan, Feng Clan, Yu Clan. Actually, basically all of the aristocratic clans in Hundred Miles City showed up. There were also a lot of ordinary people who showed up because King Shui wasn't just the protector of the Hundred Miles City, he was now the person ruling the entire Green Cloud Continent. Rainbow Light City. After 20 days, King Shui and the group arrived at Rainbow Light City. He planned to rest here for a few days. Even if the adults were able to bear the long journey, the children wouldn't be able to. The Rainbow Light Country was the strongest country in Green Cloud Continent. It stood firmly among the top 10 countries. The strongest area in Rainbow Light Country was the Rainbow Light City. For now it didn't really bother King Shui if he was able to squeeze himself into the top 10 of Green Cloud Continent. Because here he didn't fear anyone. Nor did he fear any kind of presence. Travelers Inn. It was a decent restaurant. King Shui and the group stepped into the inn. There was quite a decent amount of people in King Clan. But it wasn't considered to be that large an amount because the number of people in adventure groups across the world of the nine continents would have easily exceeded the amount of people in the clan. Hello. Welcome to the inn. The female servant at the entrance of the door politely expressed a smile at King Shui and the group. King Shui nodded and entered the restaurant. Currently, the people from King Clan also bore an extraordinary presence. Among them, there were already a few empire-topping beauties who could topple cities. For a moment, it would trigger other people's guesses of the history of the clan. The restaurant was top-notch in terms of both decoration and structure. The design of the building resembled that of a watchtower, giving people a unique feeling. There seemed to be very few private rooms here. However, there were multi-colored partitions in the hall to divide the large halls into rooms that served as bedchambers. Certainly, the guests who decided to stay in the inn could also choose to enjoy their meal in their rooms. Upon entering the restaurant, a young woman led King Shui and his group upstairs. The female servant asked while leading him, Mr. 
Are you here for a meal or for an overnight stay? Please help me look for a room first. We will talk about eating later. King Shui said. All right. They walked all the way up to the fourth floor. King Shui booked the biggest room straight away. As soon as he went in, he found a huge living room. There were kitchen, toilet and bedrooms in the surroundings. In addition to that, there was also a huge balcony. Are you satisfied with this? The female servant stood beside the door and asked with a smile. Yeah, I'm satisfied with it. All right then, please serve us the best dishes you have here. Serve us two sets of each of the dishes. King Shui passed a silver note to the female servant. All right, the female servant bowed down and left. Meanwhile, on the fifth floor of the hall, there were roughly ten people gathered there. Among the people there, six of them were young men who looked younger than forty years old. As for the remaining five people, three of them were middle-aged men while the other two were elderly men. Young Master Dan, they're obviously no ordinary people. Are you sure that you want to pick on them? One of the middle-aged men knitted his brows and asked. Uncle Zhu, could it be that you're scared? Dan Clan has never feared anyone in Rainbow Light City. The handsome young man said arrogantly. Young Master Dan, in Rainbow Light City, Dan Clan might be the clan with the highest authority. No one would dare to pick on them. But have you ever thought about outside of Rainbow Light City? The middle-aged man said cautiously. At this moment, a young man rushed in, young Master Dan, it's clear now. Say it, they registered it under the name Wu Si and they are staying in room number three, the young man answered quickly. Uncle Zhu, what do you think? I have already said before that the place was filled with hidden experts. From their looks, they look more like businessmen who know very little martial arts, the man called young Master Xiao said in joy. The middle-aged man called Uncle Zhu didn't say anything. Dan Peng, last time, it was precisely because of women as well. Have you forgotten about the consequences? An elderly man said with his head down. Third elder, of course not, I was grounded for three years. Don't worry, this time, I'll make sure to do it neatly. Despite what Dan Peng said, he thought to himself that if he was able to get the girls, he wouldn't mind being grounded for six years or even die. Women was the only thing he loved. Without women, he would never feel satisfied. Even during the time he was grounded, he never cut out women from his life. There has always been people helping him in doing so. Aside from being lecherous, he has proven himself to be the most outstanding candidate among the young generations of Dan clan. Chapter 815. Acting recklessly with no regards for danger. Young Master Shan, I keep feeling that this group of people isn't simple. A young man opposite to Shan Peng spoke. Yan Huliang, there's no need to say more. If it's a lady I, young Master Shan, have taken a liking to, there's no way for her to get away. Shan Peng interrupted the young man taken over by lust, acting recklessly with no regard for danger. Yan Huliang mumbled to himself in his heart, but ended up smiling and said, Since young Master Shan is busy, I won't disturb you any further. I believe that young Master Shan will be able to deal with those people very easily. I hope that young Master Shan will have a good time. Go, go. You're always spoiling the mood, Shan Peng said, feeling annoyed. He could tell that the guy was merely putting up a front of courtesy and a hint of hatred flashed in his eyes. He decided to teach him a lesson at some later time. The Yan clan was the strongest clan in Rainbow Light City after the Shan clan. The two clans appeared to be on good terms on the surface, but only they knew that it was all a facade. If the Yan clan ever had the chance, they would definitely stomp down on the Shan clan, taking over their spot as the greatest clan in Rainbow Light City. 
Not only did the Shan clan had to be on guard against the Yan clan, they also had to make good use of their assumed relationship. This was how relationships with interest involved were like. This was true even for the younger generations of the two clans. Still, on the surface, the Shan clan was bigger, and the Yan clan thus had to keep a lower profile. Yan Huliang left. The remaining two young men also wanted to leave, but decided to stay behind when they saw the gaze with which Shan Peng was looking at Yan Huliang. These two people were members of Rainbow Light City's Bai clan and Sun clan. Compared to the Shan clan and the Yan clan, these two clans were much smaller. They usually followed behind the Shan clan, and they had to play a part in the Shan clan's matters. In Rainbow Light City, even if the members of Shan clan were to bully other people, no one would dare say a word. Even if 1,000 women hadn't been taken advantage of by the Shan clan, the number was at least 800. There were also many who had just simply disappeared. Shan Peng, let me give you one more word of advice. These people appear to be very distinguished. A lady of that beauty is not one that ordinary people would able to lay their hands on. The old man frowned and said, Third elder? Am I, Shan Peng, an ordinary person? Those who come to our rainbow light city, regardless of their standing, will have to bow down to me. Even dragons would have to bow. A flaming glow flashed in Shan Peng's eyes. Since you've decided to do this, I hope that you won't regret it. Food was served and everyone in the King clan was in the hall. As expected of the signature dishes of this place, the fragrance of the food filled up the entire room. Even King Shui felt that the food was pretty decent. We'll be able to meet Marshal Uncle Fai's wife when we return this time. King Shui smiled and said, Marshal Uncle Fei is quite quick on his feet. I wonder which family the lady is from. Kang Hai Mingyu also smiled. Everyone joined in the conversation as they had become quite familiar with Fei Wuji. Everyone also hoped that he could get married soon and carry on his family's blood. Boom! Just then, the door was kicked open and a dozen intruders dashed in. The spacious room was immediately filled with a strange feeling. King Shui lifted his head to look at the people who had dashed in. Some of them were quite young, while others were old. Wah! Qin Yin broke into tears and Kang Hai Mingyu immediately carried her. King Shui took a glance before picking up some food with his chopsticks and feeding to Qin Yin. Lass, don't cry. Come, have some food. Seeing that King Shui was feeding her, King Yin smiled. King Shui pinched her cheeks. Ming Yu, King Zhuang, Gelu, bring them back to the rooms and don't come out. The few ladies smiled and carried the kids back into their rooms. Their expressions had not changed from the very start. After the door was closed, King Shui turned to face the group of people. A brutal force was thrown out and series of slapping sounds could be heard. The few people who had come in first were all thrown to the ground. Shan Peng was one of them. Loud cries filled the room. Damn you! How dare you bully our young master Shan! King Shui frowned and dashed out once again. This time, the young man's mouth was still open and he had not even finished his sentence before he was made to close his mouth forever. This man was one of the two who had originally wanted to leave, the young man from Bai clan. He felt that upon seeing young master Shan had been hit, it was time for him to display his loyalty. However, he had not expected that his life would be thrown away just like that. As he died, he regretted not leaving earlier. I'm from the Shan clan. How dare you hit me? I'm going to kill you. After releasing a furious bellow, Shan Peng wanted to dash out. He had lost some teeth, and there seemed to be wind coming through his teeth as he spoke. Shan Peng, come back, 
you're not his opponent. An elder at the back grabbed Shan Peng and said, Third elder, kill him. Shan Peng bellowed furiously. When had he ever been put through such humiliation? To think that he had even been slapped and had lost some teeth. Speak up. Why have you guys come? To think that you would dare to charge indirectly. If you don't give me a good explanation, you can forget about leaving. King Shui spoke calmly while Dai King and Huai and Lu Li smiled at his side. Their beauty made Shan Peng, even though he had been beaten up, infatuated. An elder outside the door, one of the two elders from earlier, quickly left. You rascal, do you know where this place is? Shan Peng gritted his teeth and said, I don't care where this is. You've dashed in here, given my daughter a scare and made her cry, and still make impertinent remarks. If you don't have a good reason for this, you can forget about leaving today. King Shui said casually. He did not feel anything coming across such a situation, as he wasn't afraid of anyone in the green cloud continent. King Shui would be able to make anyone who dared to offend him feel regret for life. Don't blame me. Blame the fact that the women around you are too beautiful. I'm sorry to say that I've taken a liking to them and that you can only die. Shan Peng looked at Dai King and Huai and Lu Li greedily, having a strong urge to devour them. Being lusty isn't wrong, but it's a pity that you have bad judgment. Moreover, you're also using such a despicable method. Therefore, you deserve to die. King Shui smiled and looked at the two ladies next to him. This is what people meant by the words femme fatale. You guys haven't killed anyone before, right? How about making an exception today? King Shui said as he looked at King Yu and the others. A hint of excitement flushed on King Yu's face. The people in this world revered those with high martial prowess. Everyone was born with a tendency towards violence. Countless people from the King clan dashed out. King Shui followed behind them. He knew that King Bei, King Yu and the others were no match for these people. However, since they needed to start somewhere on their paths, they might as well start today. Out of the group of opponents, there were three middle-aged men and an elder. Just from these people's abilities, he could estimate the Shan clan's influence in Rainbow Light City. Moreover, the guy he had broken the teeth of had earlier been shouting how powerful their Shan clan was. The King Shui now would not pay any heed to these people. What he wanted was for King Yu and the others to learn to kill, and to get used to the feeling and calmness after killing people. This was not something that relied on one's innate talent, but rather something that took some time getting used to. It might be because he was now in the world of the Nine Continents, where martial arts cultivators were revered and human lives were worth nothing. It was unlike his previous life, where killing someone would make one feel as if the world had crumbled down. Don't kill me. My grandfather is Shan Long. Shan Peng shouted out loudly. Seeing that the people around him were dying one by one, with him being the last one standing, he shouted out with a pale countenance. He looked at King Shui in horror, face pale. In the last moment of his life, he was now afraid. Although he was arrogant and had committed many deeds of evil in the past, he was always the one watching as other people's faces turned pale, their lives dependent on his words. That feeling of being able to control the life and death of people felt very good. However, right now, he was the one feeling that death was approaching. It was only now that he knew how horrifying this feeling was. Just then, a series of rushed footsteps rang out and another dozen people dashed into the room. When Shan Peng saw these people, he felt the same as a drowning person who had grabbed hold of a lifeline. Grandfather, save me. The one in the lead was an unscrupulous looking old man. The old man's physique was ordinary, appearing long and thin. 
His hair was all white, but his face appeared to be quite smooth, without many wrinkles. However, King Shui quickly discovered that the old man's arms seemed to be slightly longer than those of ordinary people. His hands were like withered bones, as if there was no flesh on them. It was hard to tell that old man's age, but he gave out a noxious aura. The people behind him were all old men, and even the youngest had white hair. In Rainbow Light City, no one dared to challenge the Shan clan. They must be experts who were passing by and thus Shan Long had led the strongest people from his clan here without any hesitation. King Shui looked at the opponents, shaking his head. These people were considered top-notch in Rainbow Light City, but they were nothing to him. King Shui felt this looked like a ridiculous joke, but regardless, these people all deserved to die. It was because the moment they had entered Rainbow Light City, they had heard a lot of negative news regarding Shan Clan. The people from the Shan Clan were savage and their descendants were arrogant and bullied the weak. Their acts of tyranny were nothing new. Because the Shan Clan was rich, they would tend to first try and offer monetary compensation to resolve any problems. However, if the other party still refused to give in, they would simply disappear in the worst-case scenario, not even able to receive a single cent. King Shui knew that he was no savior, and had never thought of becoming one. However, there was one savior-like thing about him. When he killed evil people, he would do so with great ease. It could even be thought of as accumulating good karma. Grandfather, they've humiliated our Shan clan. I tried to talk to them, but they resorted to violence and even killed our people. Grandfather, Shan Peng said in fury, not even blinking an eye despite speaking of all these lies. With regards to Shan Peng's attempts of cooking up lies, King Shui did not even bother to explain himself. These people were not worth his effort. No matter what you say today, you're going to die. King Shui's calm voice rang out. Bastard. To think that you still dare to be so arrogant when you're in Rainbow Light City. I'll make you live a life worse than death. With Shan Long was here. Shan Peng wasn't afraid of anything. Swoosh swoosh. Piffed. Ah. Two frosted iron balls pierced through Shan Peng's knees, forcing him to kneel down before King Shui while crying out in agony. Shan Long's countenance changed. Who are you guys? Why have you come to Rainbow Light City and why are bullying people from our Shan clan? The old man looked towards King Shui and shouted out in fury. Is it fun to make false countercharges? Don't tell me you don't know what kind of person your grandson is. Old man, when I wipe out your Shan clan today, it will be because of what you've said today. King Shui looked at the old man with disdain. To think that you dare be so arrogant. Let me see what you're capable of. After finishing his words, the old man pounced toward King Shui with all his fingers stretched out. His palms were a greenish color and green smoke exuded from them within a half-foot distance. They had a piercing smell of rotting meat and those who smelled the palms would feel disgusted. Rotting Claws. King Shui frowned. This martial technique was very vicious. The reason he frowned was not because the technique itself was vicious, but rather because of the brutality of the technique's cultivation method. The cultivation method required rotting corpses and the cultivator's hands to be submerged in the corpses for no less than four hours. Chapter 816, Thousand Crane Slash, Level of Drawing Bones Normally, people who cultivated corrosion claws would store up a large amount of rotten corpses. King Shui felt ill as he looked at the palm that was getting closer and closer. He took out a few needles and channeled his nature energy and formidable. Z Z R. Ah, in just a short while, the palm actually decayed. King Shui was first stunned before revealing a smile. 
He never expected for the nature energy to be this strong. To think that grade 6 nature energy would be able to annihilate sinister presences. All of the elderly man's martial arts were concentrated on his hand. Once his hands got crippled, it would basically mean that he was done for. Besides, even if his hands weren't crippled, his strength wasn't enough to attract King Shui's attention. As soon as the others witnessed the elderly man getting crippled, they all turned blank. The elderly man was the backbone of Dan clan. But now, he was already at the brink of death. For a person who cultivated the corrosion claws, once they got damaged from the nature energy, not only would both of their hands be crippled, the nature energy would even destroy their five viscera and six bowels. Dan Peng who was laying on the floor looked at everything that happened in disbelief. In his heart, his grandpa was a battle god who had triumphed in every battle. In the Rainbow Light City, as long as his grandpa was present, he could do whatever he liked as young Master Dan. But now, the battle god himself had fallen, which would also mean the end for Dan clan. Who are you? Let us know whose hand we died in. Dan Long gritted his teeth and spoke to King Shui. Maybe because he knew that he was about to die. At the moment when he finished speaking, he looked towards Dan Peng who was crawling on the floor. You caused the destruction of the entire Dan clan. You useless brat. What's the point in keeping you? A slightly younger elderly man screamed with rage. He intended to kill Dan Peng with one slap. However, King Shui straight away killed the elderly man, leaving Dan Peng to turn blank on the spot. But at this moment, a few people once again came in from outside. Similarly, they were also old men at their sixties. The person taking the lead was an incomparably wise-looking old man. Both of his eyes looked clear and bright. It contained wisdom as well as kindness. Mr. King, welcome to Rainbow Light Country. I just found out that you came now. Sorry for scaring you. Please allow me to lend you a hand, the leading old man said politely. Yan Dao, you ignorant old man, you set a trap for me. Dan Long glared at Yan Dao and screamed with rage. Before he died, he suddenly leaped towards Yan Dao. Without a hand, you're nothing. Yan Dao calmly knocked down Dan Long. King Shui looked at Yan Dao and felt more at ease. Even though he has heard negative things about Dan clan before, he has also heard a thing or two about Yan clan. Yan clan was the second biggest clan in Rainbow Light City. In any case, at least Yan clan had a better reputation than Dan clan. Now that they got an opportunity where they could benefit each other, he naturally wouldn't reject it. All right, sorry for the trouble then, King Shui. King Shui smiled and gestured Yan Dao to do as he liked. Thank you Mr. King. If there's anything which you need in the future, the Yan clan will definitely serve you well like a dog or a horse, Yan Dao responded politely. Ah, you're King Shui. You're the patriarch of Heavenly Palace. Dan Long looked at King Shui in shock, before staring at the ground with eyes filled with rage. Dan Peng stared at King Shui in disbelief. Slowly, his head hit the floor and he died. As that happened, purple-colored blood flowed out the corner of his mouth. The remaining people looked at the group in front of them in disbelief. They were the backbone of Green Cloud Continent. Furthermore, the very young man in front of them was the person who had eliminated two supreme aristocratic clans. That's a supreme aristocratic clan, a clan which they would never catch up to even if they had patted the horse's bottom. Their very own clan, when in front of a supreme aristocratic clan, wasn't even enough to be of any concern. The man in front of them, on the other hand, he had eliminated two supreme aristocratic clans and now, they were even planning to take his women away from him. How was this not considered suicide? Dan Peng straight away committed suicide. 
In the moment he found out the young man was King Shui, he already knew that there was no way out for him today. Yan clan made their move. Dan Long was dead. Yan Dao went into Dan clan like a tiger rushing into a flock of sheep. A lot of the people from Yan clan also turned up today and the place turned really quiet in just a short while. Under the command of Yan Dao, they cleaned up all the corpses here. They did it so thoroughly that even the bloody smell in the air was covered up with a sweet smell. Mr. King, I will stop bothering you then. If there's anything that you need, please do inform us, Yan Dao said politely. Mr. Yan Lao, I'll leave everything about Dan clan to your Yan clan then, King Shui said with a smile. With his words, King Shui actually meant leaving everything that Dan clan collected to Yan clan. Even though King Shui didn't have much interest in Dan clan's collection, to Yan clan, it was still an undeserved fortune. After merely a day of rest, the group once again continued their journey back to Heavenly Palace. Everything here was just a brief interlude on their journey. It was considered a good experience for the three generations of King Clan, because killing people was something which everyone has to learn. Every time they stopped at night, King Shui would teach them ways to cultivate. Before sleeping, they would also need to take in an aroma concentration pill. During the day, he would also explain to them a thing or two about cultivation on their mounts. During this period of time, King Shui felt really happy. This was because King King was unusually suitable to cultivate crane form. This form was the form which he used the least. There were very few things in crane style. There were only the soaring crane steps and thousand crane slash. King Shui had already fused his soaring crane steps with cloud mist steps. Actually, his cloud mist steps was already no ordinary cloud mist steps from a long time ago. He started off with the earliest ghostly steps and made his way up to the free spirit steps. After that, he fused them with soaring crane steps before eventually fusing it with the cloud mist steps. For the thousand crane slash, King Shui had only cultivated it up to small success stage. He felt that it was not really that useful. It only helped raise attack and speed and it was a waste that its potential for attack was too small. Since he could still cultivate the things further beyond without cultivating the thousand crane slash, King Shui had always neglected it. Even at the time when he taught others about the crane form, he only made them cultivate the soaring crane steps. The moment when King Shui taught King King the crane form, he never thought King King's speed at cultivating to be anything inferior to the time Ming Yu Gelu spent on her tiger form. Hence, King Shui also taught King King the thousand crane slash. What made King Shui gasped in surprise was that King King was really hard working. Since the time the incident with the Bima clan had ended up to now, King King had told him that both her thousand crane slash and soaring crane steps were already at the large success stage. King Shui was stunned for a moment before being filled with surprise. He gently hugged King King. I've been panicking about finding a suitable technique for you to cultivate. It seems like there's no longer any need for this. King King, who was being hugged by King Shui, extended her hand and rubbed King Shui's head with a smile. They were blood-related family members, they had the same blood flowing inside their bodies. Both of them were a refuge for the other. In fact, this sister of his had already done a lot for herself. Sister, why don't you practice it? I'll have a look at it. The sky had just gotten dark. This place was a desolate countryside. All right, King King's figure could be seen rapidly traveling back and forth on the field. Her body movement looked natural and graceful, bringing out the agility of the soaring crane steps. In the mere span of a couple breaths, 
She gradually thrust out both of her hands like a white crane opening up its wings. After that, she swiftly crossed her hands and threw him out. Roughly ten palm silhouettes could be seen being thrust out. There may be a lot of needless hand movements. Together it seemed as if a weird combination was formed. Each of the, the claps was also different. Pa pa pa. A series of loud and clear noises was heard. After that, King King continued on for another 15 minutes. Only after that did she come to a stop and turn back to look at King Shui. After you helped me perform the acupuncture, I've been able to cultivate this faster. At that time, even I myself was scared but slowly, I got used to it. This is great sister. In the future practice the crane form. Later on, I'm going to teach you a set of cloud hand. For now, practice these first. Oh and remember to practice the Tai Chi fist every morning and everything should be fine, King Shui said happily. At the same time, he made up his mind to cultivate his thousand crane slash. Previously, if he had been able to execute tens of the palm images, it would definitely have been quite strong. He realized that he really couldn't neglect any of the techniques in the nine animals mimicry technique. Not only would King King be able to achieve great things with his crane form in the future, she even had the four-eared macaque. She would become really strong in no time. Overall, King Clan was progressing in a healthy way. As usual, King Shui made the diamond gigantic elephant, firebird and 10,000 poisonous violet sable guard the night. King Shui on the other hand, spent his time cultivating in the realm of the violet jade immortal and refining medicines. The recipe of Du Meridian strengthening pill would be coming out soon. Ren Du. As soon as King Shui heard the two words, he got excited. So what else would come after Du Meridian strengthening pill? Could all eight of the human meridians possibly be unlocked? If that's the case, it actually wasn't a bad thing. It's just that more time would have to be consumed for this to happen. Now, King Shui was already really skilled with his sword of sixth wave. Not only this, the time he needed to prepare it had also been cut down slightly. This made King Shui feel really happy. After all, other than hidden weapons and poisons, his sword of sixth wave was still a really strong weapon. He could basically kill people at the same grade as him with one move of it. In unexpected situations, the critical damage would also be considered a killer move. But now, the defensive boost provided by the cloth was soon unable to catch up. He can only hope his abilities in forging level up quickly. At the moment, King Shui was practicing his hundred forms of tiger. Unfortunately, his levels of drawing was still at the critical point. One on his legs had already stepped into the level of drawing bones, yet for reasons unknown, he was still unable to break through. Now, he calmed his mind and stopped thinking about breaking through. Instead, the only thing he thought about was drawing the hundred forms of the tiger well. He wanted to make his drawing look even more real in order for it to possess the most perfect strength and form. With that being the case, unknowingly, King Shui felt as if he was more relaxed when drawing it now, so much so that he had a feeling like he was moving through the clouds and flowing waters. After such a long period of time, King Shui's levels of drawings was no longer something that could be looked down upon. Just like this, King Shui kept on drawing and drawing as if he had forgotten about time itself. The only thing that he knew was that he felt unusually relaxed. Now, drawing had become something which he enjoyed rather than a mission which he used to always force himself to do. He had no idea how long had passed. It felt as if it had just been an instant, yet it also felt like it has been hundreds and thousands of years. At this moment, he smiled and put down the golden calligraphy brush. It broke through.
level of drawing bones. After such a long time, he had finally achieved the level of drawing bones. Furthermore, King Shui also felt a slight change in his mental state. It felt as if he was now able to look over a lot of stuff, a feeling like he had just grown up and also a feeling of nostalgia. So much so that he didn't feel as helpless now when he thought about the Lion King's Ridge. It was not that his strength had increased, it was just that he had become more calm than before. This was a kind of feeling, a kind of mood. It was just like when one remained indifferent, despite whether they were being favored or humiliated. It was a feeling of looking at the flowers in the courtyard blossoming and falling without paying any particular attention to it, looking at the clouds jumbling up together and spreading out. Chapter 817 Improvements on the Heavenly Talismans Success of the Heart Toxin Talisman King Shui only now took a look at the tiger form he had painted. This was a tiger form that depicted a vividly realistic crouching tiger. Not only did it look like the real thing, its flesh, blood and bones were so evocative they could almost be felt. Relative to the past level, this kind strength was better by ten or even a hundred times. So this was the level of drawing bones. No matter what, it was impossible for a tiger without bones to become bold and powerful. Now that his realm of drawing had increased, he could try painting the heavenly talismans. King Shui had been hoping for the heavenly talismans to level up. Cultivating only one type of heavenly talismans didn't really matter, because after all, it was very difficult to cultivate it to the realm of great heights. On the other hand, even ants could kill an elephant if there were a great number of them. Perhaps other people couldn't learn many heavenly talismans because of their limited spirit energy, but King Shui was different. He didn't have to study too deeply into this either. As long as he learned a little bit more, he would be able to get a decent result. Godly Force Talisman King Shui felt very comfortable drawing the Godly Force Talisman now. His brush flowed smoothly, and he felt like he was able to draw it casually. Not only that, he even felt an additional powerful wave of force. Talisman drawing was all about flow. Talismans didn't have to be drawn in a single breath, but the feeling was essential. If the feeling was there, it wouldn't matter even if the talisman was drawn with a hundred breaths. He was able to complete the talisman in one breath. King Shui felt that he was able to draw the talisman even more naturally this time and he had become even more confident. This kind of feeling was indescribable with words. It just felt very great. He took a look at the godly force talisman that was obviously different than the ones from before. He was very happy about it because he knew that the heavenly talismans had already broken through to grade 5. He immediately slapped the godly force talisman against his body. 50% increase in physical strength. King Shui smiled happily at this result. In addition to his nature energy and the state of immovable as mountains that had broken through not too long ago, his strength could be said to have significantly increased again. The divine shield talisman's effects had also been increased by 10%. King Shui wasn't too sure about the body securing talisman, but he could feel that the talisman's power had increased by a similar amount. The rank of opponents the talisman could secure had increased, along with the probability of securing the target. The binding talisman had also been enhanced. King Shui was especially happy about the descending heavens talisman. After he was done drawing one, he slapped it against his body without waiting any moment longer. He was happy to discover that the talisman could decrease his opponent's strength by an additional 5%. Due to the level up of the realm of drawing, King Shui's heavenly talismans that were previously at grade 4 had now risen to grade 5. Seeing that he had learned a few types of heavenly talismans, 
he decided to learn another one again. King Shui could finally draw the heavenly talisman that he had always wanted to draw, the poison talisman. He had been eyeing this type of heaven talisman for a long time. He had attempted to draw it a few times before, but he had stopped after failing every time. This time, he had the feeling that he would be able to draw it. This poison talisman's actual name was the heart toxin talisman. As its name suggested, the heart toxin talisman could poison the target's heart, but it wasn't actually fatal. Instead, this type of poison mainly confused the heart and thoughts of the target. It would lower the target's killing intentions and make him felt unsettled, thus losing the desire to continue fighting. The heart toxin talisman wasn't poisonous, but it was a type of attack on the mind. A person with lower mental abilities could immediately turn insane. The powerful thing about the heart toxin talisman was that the effects were cumulative. Just one talisman wouldn't have too large an effect, but the effect lasted two hours and could be accumulated. There was about a seven-minute waiting time between each talisman usage. This cumulative effect that could immediately attack the heart of an opponent was what King Shui was after. Since King Shui had powerful spirit energy, this heart toxin talisman would definitely play a significant role against future powerful opponents. He stared at the heart toxin talisman in the poison scriptures and earnestly studied the diagram that was depicted on it. His blood raced every time he looked at it. That was because there was an image of a beautiful lady. The lady on the heart toxin talisman was dressed in a thin dress of black gauze. Her hands, delicate neck, and exposed face exposed were translucent and jade-like. The way her plump and soft breasts lifted her gauze dress was tantalizing. In addition to her devastatingly beautiful face, the lady in the painting also had a pair of beautiful and onyx-like eyes that could drive men crazy. Her straight and delicate nose was irresistibly elegant, and she had a pair of thin pink lips. The expression on her face was a little shy, but also had a trace of subtle invitation. Her reluctant yet bare temptation was deadly and could challenge the limit of any man. This was a lady that could bring calamity to the kingdom. She had a devastatingly beautiful face which exuded an aura that could trigger one's explosive impulse. The heart toxin talisman's best tactics lay in its psychological offense. Its effect was doubled on anyone without a stone-like heart and its effect would multiply by many fold on a lecherous person. It created a hallucination in the opponent's brain and its impact was directly related to the spirit energy and the drawing techniques of the person who drew the talisman. This was also the reason King Shui had chosen to draw the heart toxin talisman. He admitted that his heart still wasn't completely stone-like although he wasn't too far from that level. Even so, this heart toxin talisman had still managed to make him absent-minded, and there were definitely not many who were stone-hearted. Lecherous men could be found anywhere. The more powerful a person was, the lonelier and more affected by female charm he tended to be. Appetite and lust were only natural. It was really rare to find someone who could truly live without any lust or desire. He also wondered if this type of heavenly talisman would have any effects on women, or how a person would be after being hit by this heavenly talisman. After thinking for a moment, King Shui decided to draw one so that he could try it on himself. That way, he'd be able to clear all his doubts. Since he was learning a new heavenly talisman, there was no way he'd be able to instantly draw a grade 5 talisman. Then again, his realm of drawing had already reached the level of drawing bones. This meant that if he drew again now, he'd be able to get double the results with half the effort. Perhaps because it was his first time drawing a woman, King Shui felt that the lady on this heart toxin talisman was not at all inferior to the ladies on the portraits of beauty. 
The origin of the poison scriptures was unknown, but the drawing skills in it were equal to those of the art maestro, judging solely from the lady on the heart toxin talisman. He calmed himself and exhaled before he started to draw the heart toxin talisman. King Shui was stunned after he started painting this time. Perhaps it was because he had always been sighing at the impressive sight of the portraits of beauty that beautiful painting had become something divine in his heart. He had also never tried to paint before but now he discovered that he was actually able to paint the talisman with ease. Not only that, he was able to imitate it perfectly. Although he still couldn't compare the lady on the heart toxin talisman to the ladies on the portraits of beauty, he would have been deemed way superior to those so-called famous painters in his previous world. What made King Shui happy was that he actually succeeded in his third attempt. He didn't expect himself to be able to draw this well. This must be the result of the level of drawing bones. He would be able to earn a lot of money if he were to paint portraits for others now. King Shui had reached the level of drawing bones. This definitely made him the finest painter in the world of the nine continents, because he had never heard of anyone attaining the level of drawing souls. A painter that reached that realm would be able to draw out souls. Legend said that the things painted by someone at that level would be alive for a short period of time and only vanish when its divine energy had been depleted. However, this was only a legend. No one was able to find out more about it. King Shui was also only at the beginning of the level of drawing bones right now. He still had a very long way to go, before even thinking about reaching such a level of drawing. He had come all the way from the level of introduction to his present level. In painting, this could very well be considered as reaching the pinnacle of drawing, as the higher level of drawing souls was merely a legend. He had succeeded. King Shui happily put down his golden calligraphy brush, and felt a little reluctant to use the heart toxin talisman that he was holding. After scrutinizing it for a moment again, he stretched his hands out and activated his divine energy before slapping the talisman against his chest. He felt a slight pain in his heart. Although everything before his eyes still remained very clear, a person had emerged in his mind. It was a woman and King Shui was shocked to recognize her as that elder Yun from the Feng clan. The beautiful eyes on that face that could be considered remarkably beautiful were wise and far-sighted. She had a slender but shapely figure that exuded a graceful bearing. King Shui, long time no see. Do you still remember me? said a voice that sounded as if it had been through the vicissitudes of life, yet had remained extremely elegant. King Shui was flabbergasted for a moment before remembering that this was a hallucination. But he felt slightly uncomfortable when he was reminded of this woman. His state of mind had been influenced earlier. He knew that if he had been in a battle, even such a tiny influence could have perhaps been fatal. This was the effect of the heart toxin talisman. It psychologically attacked a person, and shocked the opponent by causing him to see some unsettling and shocking scenes. King Shui continued drawing the talisman. The heart toxin talisman was formed in King Shui's hands in just a very short amount of time. He didn't stop though and decided to continue drawing. He only stopped after he felt tired. After resting for a moment, he took out another heart toxin talisman. This thing's effect could be accumulated, and could be used twice on a target within 15 minutes. This time, King Shui saw a woman once again. He unconsciously felt extremely uncomfortable. Regardless of everything, he was once again perturbed. Perhaps it was because he wasn't confronting any actual enemies that his subconsciousness was a little weak. King Hanye, that lady who possessed a nine yin body. The most beautiful lady from the joyous sect. King Shui didn't continue his experiments. There were seven damages in life, food damage, anxiety damage, 
drink damage, sexual intemperance damage, hunger damage, taxation damage as well as channel network and construction defense damage. Channel network refers to acupuncture channels while construction defense refers to the mechanisms that build and repair the body and immune system. What King Shui was feeling right now was anxiety damage. He didn't really know what exactly he was feeling anxious about. Perhaps he felt like he owed her something. For him, anxiety damage was the hardest damage to heal among the seven damages, because he knew how to heal the other six damages. The seven damages were still all right. But King Shui felt that this talisman had already exceeded the seven damages, reaching the seven sufferings level. The seven forms of sufferings were birth, aging, sickness, death, the suffering of having to meet with hated enemies, the suffering of having to part from loved ones and the suffering of being unable to obtain what one desires. The seven sufferings in life were the most cruel. King Shui had a hunch that the heart toxin talisman would definitely make the target feel the seven sufferings in the future. Before King Shui realized it, it was already about time to exit from the realm of Violet Jade Immortal. But he was very happy. He had gotten a big harvest from returning to the King Village. He was happy as long as there were steady improvements. He was no longer obsessed with breakthroughs knowing that some things couldn't be forced. It was already after midnight when he came out. He found himself in the wilderness. Although the sky above him was filled with stars, it was dark around him. It was already spring right now, yet it was still a little cold, especially at night. Even though cultivators had a robust body, it didn't mean that they had no feelings. They could withstand high or low temperatures, but they were still sensitive towards extreme temperatures. He looked at the sky. The sun was about to break soon, so he decided to forget about resting. He then slowly walked towards the place which was a little further up ahead. Chapter 818. King Shui's Medicinal Pill. Plan. Very soon, day was starting to break. Seeing that there was still some time before the sun rose, King Shui started to practice his crane form. The soaring crane steps was already at the great perfection stage and he had long since merged them together with other techniques. Now, what King Shui was practicing was the thousand crane slash. He had thought that the technique did not have much damaging prowess, but to think that its prowess was only shown when it was at the large success stage. Previously, he had spent all his energy on the elephant form and thus had gradually forgotten about it. When he eventually was able to cultivate the crane form, he did not think of cultivating the thousand crane slash. For the crane form, being graceful was the most important. When performing, it would look beautiful and speed was the most important. Another thing was the flow. Letting it flow through your body and then release an instant explosion. What was important was the impact. The thousand crane slash, which was at the small success stage, could only leave a pair of palm prints. This was also why King Shui had given up at the beginning. Since it would create over ten palm prints at the large success stage, then there should be at least four of them at the small success stage. However, there was only two and the prowess was only slightly higher than his physical strength. This was the reason why he had, casually, put it aside. In his consciousness, he felt that it was very strange as well. The description for the thousand crane slash was extremely simple. The cranes might float through one's body and it followed the thousand crane slashes flow in the meridian channels, accumulating essence before hitting out with an extremely strong force. The description was very simple. As for the rating that it would have a powerful impact at the very end, this was something which had seemed to be applicable for any technique. It was because there was no fixed standard for it. When he saw the palm imprints created by King King at the large success stage, 
he knew that he was wrong. There were no rubbish martial techniques amidst the nine animals mimicry technique. Therefore, he planned to pick up the thousand crane slash once again. As he practiced it time and time again, time passed by slowly. When he heard some motion, he turned to see that King King was walking over with the four-eared macaque. She was now wearing clean-looking clothes, or rather, training clothes. They were a radiant white color and seemed to give her an additional hint of valiance. She now looked so different from when he first saw her. In the past, she had a silent hint of loneliness, but now, she seemed to be a lady in the prime of her beauty. This made King Shui very happy. Elder sister, you've woken up so early. King Shui stopped and said, smiling. Didn't you wake up earlier than I did? King King smiled in reply. The four-eared macaque had already run far away. After exchanging a few words, they went on with their individual practice. Looking at the sky to check the time, King Shui started practicing Tai Chi. The other members from King Clan were also waking up in turn. Some of them prepared breakfast while the majority of the rest looked for an empty spot to start their morning practice or to spar directly. It was very lively here and occasionally, they could hear King Zun's and Qin Yin's happy laughter. Another month later, everyone from King Clan headed back to the Heavenly Palace. Everything here was as before. King Shui knew that he would probably not stay long here, at most a year. Therefore, he planned to make good use of this time. It was very lively when they returned to the Heavenly Palace and he had also met Fei Wuji's wife. She was a beautiful lady with a great curvy figure, seeming to be in her thirties. The only makeup she had on was a light lining of her eyebrows, her mature and dignified charm was not something that ladies from ordinary families would have. Thereafter, King Shui returned to the heavenly palace and the lady was then recognized as Fei Wuji's wife. If King Shui had not returned, she would not be considered Fei Wuji's wife. It was only then that King Shui knew that the lady was the daughter from Star Moon Hall's Luo clan, Luo Tong. Time passed quickly and it was already one week after their return. Both King Ming and King Yan were nine months old and starting to walk wobbly. Occasionally, they were able to say words and the one they said the most was fight. The two of them were even more playful than King Zun and Qin Yin had been, especially when they were having their meals. The two kids would be taking up a pair of chopsticks and poking around. King Zun and Qin Yin were not much better. They were at the age where children were the most playful. You could try to talk sense to them, but they would not understand, they would be very playful. It was good that there were many people in King Clan, and with them taking turns to play and carry them, everything seemed to be quite fine and the atmosphere appeared to be very lively. King Shui had not spoken to Huoyan Lu Li about the Demon Gate, nor did he tell her that her parents were there. However, with all the years that had passed, no one was even sure if her parents were still alive and well. Central Continent's Demon Gate was one of the strongest forces in the Central Continent. Even if they could not compare to Lion King's Ridge, it was not a force that King Shui could afford to go again at the moment. Central Continent was a place with a mix of good and bad people alike and Demon Gate needed to rely on just this point to be able to do well in the Central Continent. Across the nine continents, Green Cloud Continent was the weakest, Central Continent was the most flourishing yet messed up one, with the greatest land boundaries and thus the strength of the Demon Gate was indisputable. He decided to wait a little more. After all, Ye Jiang's problem was already a tricky one and adding Demon Gate was of no interest to him. Now, what was most important for him was to raise his cultivation level. The effect of the Ren Meridian strengthening pellet was not bad, but it was a pity that he was not able to refine it yet. 
The alchemy recipe for the Do Meridian strengthening pellet would be coming out in about another three to five days, but it was a pity that he did not have the medicinal herbs for it. The reason that King Shui had decided to head out was to go in search of medicinal herbs. The Eastern Victory Divine Continent had plenty of spiritual key and was comparable to the Southern Viewing Continent. Moreover, there were also plenty of interesting people in Eastern Victory Divine Continent with countless heresies around. The place was filled with mysteries and was a place that King Shui yearned to go to. There might be things there which he required. Although he wanted to go to the Eastern Victory Divine Continent, he decided to wait a little bit more and see how much the abilities of King Clan improved. The medicinal pills he had accumulated all these days amounted to quite a bit too. Danshan strengthening pellet, strengthens the Danshan by 20%. Only one can be taken in a lifetime. Other than himself, none of the people from King Clan nor the people around him had taken it before. Try acupoint clearing pellet, clears the three acupuncture points, namely the Zhi Yin, Kunlun and Shen Mai. Only one can be taken in a lifetime. Other than King Shui himself, no one around him had taken this before either. Tiger Vitality Pill. Each increases one's strength by 1000 Jin, only 10 can be taken in a year. This was something they had been taking regularly. Constitution Nurturing Pill. Strengthens the foundation. Everyone in King Clan had taken it, but not the rest of the people. The bone strengthening pill was similar to the bone tempering pellet, but its effect was not as good. The endurance pellet, which could be taken by both humans and demonic beasts. Similarly, most people in King Clan had not taken it before. The beast pill, other than the spirited snake turtle which King Shui had tamed, all the other demonic beasts and mounts in King Clan had taken it. Demon Beast Advancing Pellet has a 10% chance of increasing a demonic beast's current level. It's only limited to increasing the level of the demonic within the same martial realm. Other than King Shui's few demonic beasts, the others had not taken it before. There was still the Small Revitalizing Pellet, Great Revitalizing Pellet, Wind Water Primordial Pellet, Beauty Pellet, Everlasting Pellet. All these were for increasing abilities. There were also the Five Dragon Pellet, Pure Jade Pellet, Vital Essence Pill, Gale Pellet, Spirit Concentrating Pill and many others. Most of the people had not taken the listed medicinal pills, with the exception of the small revitalizing pellets. Dai Chen and the others had already taken the Great Revitalizing Pellet and the Beauty Pellet, so now, King King, King Bei, King Yu, Wenren Wushuang and the others could still increase their abilities by a lot. King Shui had more or less put aside some of these medicinal pills. For some of them, only one or two could be taken. Therefore, even though he did not have a lot in stock, they were enough. There was still the fate pill, which was primarily refined from the mysterious fruit. With just one mysterious fruit and some other medicinal herbs, multiple pills could be created. Effect of the Fate Pill. Cultivators who were below martial saints could increase their strength by one to three countries and cultivators who were above martial saint level could increase their physical strength by 100 to 500 countries or more, depending on the individual's talent. Prerequisite must be at least a Xianxian cultivator. Every time he saw this effect, he felt excited. It was too powerful and too heaven-defying. However, the restriction was also very strong. Each person could only take one fate pill in their entire lifetime and the person must be at least a Xianxian cultivator. Another thing was that the fate pill would definitely have effect, unlike the mysterious fruit. The mysterious fruit gave one a 1% chance of receiving a great opportunity, but the success rate was truly insignificant. 
The reason he had refined the mysterious fruit previously was that he was scared that he would fail with it. It really took too long for a mysterious fruit to grow. The mysterious fruit gave the user a 1% chance of receiving a great opportunity, which could potentially increase the user's attack or defense by multiple folds. Or it could also be a breakthrough in terms of spiritually or in terms of one's potential or even in a martial technique. It could even break through one's spiritual shackles. If he were to attempt going for that 1% chance, it would be better to do so when one was stronger. If the effects from taking the mysterious fruit was too low because the person was too weak, it would not be as valuable as refining the fate pill. King Shui had tried that low percentage and succeeded. Other people would probably be less likely to attempt it. After all, there was only one mysterious fruit and the success rate was too low. The fate pill was more worth it for those who were around martial saint level. Xianxin cultivators would be able to rise up to peak martial kings, saving him a lot of time. Martial saint level cultivators would be able to have an increase of 100 to 500 countries worth of strength, depending on one's potential. Each person could only take one of it in a lifetime, but there were not many alchemists who could refine the mysterious fruit into fate pills. Moreover, the mysterious fruit was also something very precious and even King Shui only had one. However, he had two fate pills which he had not taken all this time. They were left over from the previous time. The last time he refined the mysterious fruit, he had received three fate pills. King Shui wanted to take one mysterious fruit directly, betting on his luck. If he was lucky, he might be able to break through to the seventh heavenly layer. There were no limits to the mysterious fruit, but the success rate was very low. Just thinking about it made King Shui agitated. After all, each person would only be able to take one fate pill in a lifetime. As for the other two fate pills, King Shui wanted to give it to the people around him to increase their abilities. He decided to give one to Luin Luin. With her talent, there should be no problem to increase her strength by 500 countries. As for the other one, after much thought, he decided to give it to Huoyan Lu Li. He hoped that, together with the five elements fruit and other stuff, she would be able to break through to the martial saint level. He had initially wanted to give it to Wenren Wushuang. To be honest, King Shui was very conflicted. Ye Jiang, Mingyu Gelu, Kanghai Mingyu and Dai Chen were all suitable for it. Even Dai King. However, for now, King Shui did not seem to have given her much consideration. On the other hand, Huoyan Lu Li was not the one most suitable for it. Therefore, King Shui planned to wait a little more. The next mysterious fruit was going to mature soon and by then, after refining it, he hoped that each person who was suitable for it would be able to get one. With that, all of their abilities would increase by leaps and bounds. The demon beast advancing pellets could let Luan Luan's demonic beasts become stronger once again. The demon beast advancing pellet was also something which he had refined recently and he had only done so because he was about to leave. He decided to wait it out. To be honest, none of the ladies would have any issues no matter who King Shui decided to give it to. Chapter 819 Recipe for Du Meridian Strengthening Pill It was possible to first let Luan Luan and her demonic beasts power up. In any case, there was no need to get panicky over the fate pills, as there was still the everlasting pellet, beauty pellet, great revitalizing pellet and other pills. He had already taken one or two of these pills, however there were many that he had not taken. In the past he had felt that his strength was weak, and taking the pills then would be a waste. Currently, King Shui had also got over it. He would raise high strength as much as he could, 
as he would not lack pills in the future. Father, Luin Luin shouted happily as she came to King Shui's side. Lass, circulate your cultivation technique first and restore your body to its optimum condition, King Shui said as he smiled towards Luin Luin. Luin Luin replied with a single word and started to circulate her cultivation technique. As her big beautiful eyes faintly closed, King Shui could feel the changes in the flow of qi within her body. Lass, consume this. After that, don't think about anything else. Just rapidly circulate your cultivation technique and it'll be all right, said King Shui as he passed the fate pill over. Upon receiving it, Luin Luin immediately swallowed it down, before sitting down cross-legged on the fighting platform in the backyard. In accordance to King Shui's words, she rapidly revolved her Xian Shen Qi along her body's meridians. King Shui faintly closed his eyes as he spread his spiritual sense out. Luan Luan's meridians distinctly appeared in his mind, as a powerful energy rose from her danshan and rapidly spread to her meridians. Luan Luan's body uncontrollably trembled, as the circulating Xian Shen Qi suddenly accelerated. Her meridians grew taut all of a sudden, causing her to grit her teeth in pain. King Shui slowly opened his eyes and saw that Luan Luan's complexion had already turned scarlet red in color. Extending his hand, a gold needle was inserted into her Tianjing acupuncture point, blocking the violent aura. Temporary strengthening of the meridians. King Shui's acupuncture technique was deep and profound. With just a single needle, Luin Luin was able to feel a cool and refreshing aura flow through her meridians, allowing her originally scorching hot meridians to calm and cool down. In approximately less than a incense worth of time, Luin Luin's complexion had again turned scarlet red. However, King Shui did not move. When it reached an incense worth of time, Luin Luin's entire neck had also turned scarlet red. At this moment, King Shui once again inserted needles to her Tianqi and Tianquan acupuncture points. Just like that, King Shui would insert needles once in a while. This was the aftereffects of a strong medicine. Ordinary people were unable to use such heavenly treasures or heaven-defying medicine, as they could easily explode and die. Luin Luin's talent was unique and profound yet he still had to use nine needles. After the ninth needle, the energy within Luan Luan's body stabilized. What she needed to do now was to refine that energy and turn it into her own strength. What King Shui needed to do now was just not let anyone disturb Luan Luan. In less than an hour, Luan Luan opened her eyes and felt a wave of surprise. Upon seeing King Shui faintly smiling at her, she happily leaped toward him and hugged him. Father, how do you feel? King Shui asked as he hugged Luan Luan. He could still feel Luan Luan's strength. I've just broken through to grade 4 martial saint. Luan Luan replied excitedly. Her strength had explosively increased by multiple folds. This was something that made Luan Luan still feel incredulous. Our lass's talent is good, able to absorb it well. King Shui was also very happy as the fate pill had at least displayed its greatest effect, which was very critical for Luan Luan. Within the three generations of the King clan, King Shui had yet to see a figure that was able to be a overlord. However, Luan Luan was different. Although she was in the fourth generation, she would be able to mature to a frightening level as long as he provided her with some assistance. Father's the most formidable. Everything was given by father, Luan Luan said happily as she hugged King Shui's arm. There was no reason for Luan Luan not feel happy. She had parents that doted on her and her training was going well, therefore she was very happy. She worshipped the man she called father. He was omnipotent and she felt very blissful to be his daughter. 
You're my daughter. Who would I give it to besides you? King Shui said as they walked down the platform. King Shui handed her more than half of the demonic beast advancing pellets that he had refined and said, Every pill has a percentage change of letting your demonic beast break through its current grade. Try to find a time to let your demonic beasts try them. As for the outcome, leave it to their luck. Ah, father's still the best. Luan Luan replied as she received the pills. She had never been overly courteous with King Shui. Of course, it would be a problem if she wanted to be courteous with King Shui. Luan Luan left impatiently and King Shui wasn't in a hurry for Luan Luan to take more medicinal pills. After all, she had just assimilated the fate pill, and her body was currently in a saturated state, making it unsuitable for her to take medicinal pills for at least two months. Therefore, taking medicinal pills to amass strength would still require some time. The stronger the medicinal effect, the longer the resting period. The fate pill could only be taken once in a lifetime. Medical pills at king grade, emperor grade and so on also had their limitations. For example, only able to take once a week, once every two weeks or once every three days. Another difference was strength. If one was strong, the waiting duration in ingesting pills of the same grade would be shorter than if one was weak. Apart from Luin Luin and Yu Chang, King Shui had also given the others each a beauty pill. They had already reached maturity in their appearances, therefore they could take it. In fact, they could have taken it when they were slightly younger, as the beauty pill was used to preserve one's youth, not preserve one's appearance. The appearance-preserving pill would preserve one's appearance at the time of ingestion. However, to make sure it was absolutely safe, King Shu only allowed him to take it after they had become adults. There was also the rejuvenation pill of legends. According to the medicinal pill's intrinsic effects, it permitted one's appearance to become younger. This medicinal pill was only mentioned in legends, with no evidence that it truly exists. King Shui did not leave as he had to look after them for a while after they took the medicinal pill, especially those that were weaker in strength. For Yi A Jiang and the rest, there were no problems whatsoever. The beauty pill could increase one's strength by 20%. Unfortunately, once they reached the level of Yi A Jiang, the increase would be lesser, with the increase not exceeding 10 countries worth of strength. On the other hand, King Bei and the King clan members had their strengths increased quite a bit, with the increase being 20% of their total strength. This made him incomparably happy. However, their increase in strength was a far cry from 10 countries worth of strength. The variety of medicinal pills King Shui had was not a lot, yet was not too few as well. Furthermore, they were powerful where one had to take over a month's worth of time to completely digest the medicinal effects. Regretfully, Dai Chen had already left. After the matter with the Baima aristocrat clan had concluded, Dai Chen had left. This caused King Shui to think of her from time to time, reminiscing the time spent together with her. It's said that longing for a person was a kind of illness. The current King Shui also agreed with that. Furthermore, it wasn't an easily treatable illness. Longing for someone was a kind of illness, and it was a type of suffering that penetrated the soul. This made him think about his mother. All these years, she had suffered the most. King King's appearance and return had slowly eased quite a bit of pain from his mother's heart. The greatness of his mother's love had made her throw away everything. But not to forget, it was a kind of intense repression. King Shui had been brooding about his father's death all along. That man had died, and had died like that. Within the realm of the violet immortal. At this moment, King Shui was refining pills. 
The formula for the Du Meridian strengthening pill was about to be revealed. Therefore he at present he prioritized refining pills over training. Du Meridian strengthening pill. Among the eight extra vessels in the human body, the Ren and Du Meridians were the most mysterious ones. These were the two most important large meridians within the human body. The main path the divine energy took within the human body was precisely along the Ren and Du meridians. Therefore, strengthening them would lead to unbelievable benefits. The Ren meridian was one of the large associated vessels among the eight extra vessels in the human body. The Du meridian controls the strength and defense of one's body. Training the Du Meridian to a certain level would increase the strength and defense of one's body. Ding! The crisp and clear ring in his spiritual sense made King Shui incomparably happy. However, he still continued to refine the Tiger Vitality pill that was mid-refinement. Impatiently, he spread his spiritual sense through his body. The Du Meridian was one of the large associated vessels among the eight extra vessels of the human body. The Du Meridian controls the spirit energy and spirit energy resistance of one's body. Training the Du Meridian to a certain level would increase the spirit energy, spirit energy and magic resistance of one's body. Immediately, he saw the formula of the Du Meridian strengthening pill. The formula of Du Meridian strengthening pill was as follows, black ember flower, magic fruit, five elements water fruit, five elements metal fruit, golden bull grass, five thousand years five key sun grass, nine-headed lion grass, sky penetrating grass that is more than five thousand years old, eight immortals grass, sunflower that is more than five thousand years old blood of a turtle that is more than 5,000 years old, lingji that is more than 5,000 years old, 5,000 years star moon flower, ice water that is more than 5,000 years old, peak martial saint demonic beast's core, peak martial saint demonic beast's tendons, peak martial saint demonic beast's blood, rainbow trout fish, vermilion fruit and peach of immortality. Upon seeing the formula, King Shui gawked, not knowing whether to be happy or to feel sad. Apart from exchanging the strength enhancing fruit and five elements fruit with the magic fruit and energy fruit, there were no variations to the other herbs, with only the sequence of pairing the herbs that was different. The effect of the Du Meridian strengthening pill. Increase one's base spirit energy and spirit energy control by 50 to 100% depending on the efficiency in one's absorption. Consuming the Ren Meridian strengthening pill and the Du Meridian strengthening pill would result unexpected outcomes. King Shui did not think that there would be such a description. However, this was something favorable. As long as he could refine the Ren Meridian strengthening pill, he would be able to refine the Du Meridian strengthening pill. He still needed a million experience for the violet key pill. King Shui did not think about the violet key pill, as its experience was unlikely to differ. Sometimes it needed a long time to accumulate enough experience. However, King Shui felt it was still best that he found the ingredients for the Ren Meridian strengthening pill and the Du Meridian strengthening pill as soon as possible. In addition, he would strive to train rock spreading wings and the heart of rock. Regardless of which skill breaking through to large success stage, his combat prowess would increase by several folds. However, King Shui knew that it would be an arduous journey. He now also knew that the rock form, phoenix form and dragon form would not be that easy to train in, so much so that even if he exhausted his whole life, he might only be able to see but not achieve success. Father, look at my earth-devouring mouse. Luin Luin said happily while looking at King Shui. This was the strongest earth-devouring mouse she had. Currently, it was as big as a calf. Its body looked akin to being made of metal, sleek and glossy. 
Its mace-like tail and sharp claws seemed to be made of steel. Its cold teeth were triangular in shape with some serration, causing people to feel a chill upon seeing it. An earth-devouring mice of that size was incomparably terrifying, radiating a penetrating aura from this entire body. It had actually reached the strength of grade 8 martial saint. Even someone with one star of strength would not be able to get an advantage against its true combat strength. This was the formidability of the earth-devouring mice. Furthermore, there were nine other mice it could coordinate with. With the ten of them, they could cover a large scope, let alone the leader had already grown much stronger. Chapter 820. Dai King's Tears. Looking at the nigh-invincible earth-devouring mouse, King Shui secretly felt very happy. This was Luin Luin's demonic beast, and the earth-devouring mouse would have an extremely bright future. The main reason was because the earth-devouring mouse was a mutated demonic beast that had no limits to its growth. It could reach an extremely powerful stage, but there was no certainty as to whether it could break through to that point. There were many spiritual beasts in the world. Although in principle, all beasts had no limits to their growths. But the further they advanced, the probability of breaking through would become more uncertain. However, from the earth devouring mouse's speed of growth, it should not be garbage. Unknowingly, two months had passed. King Ming and King Yin were able to walk with a little wobbling. The strength of the King clan had all increased by a level after the two months. This was just the beginning, as the medicinal effects left within their bodies allowed him to achieve double the effects with half the effort. In addition, King Shui was able to solidify their cultivation foundation and wash their marrows with other pills, wines and gold needles with minimal effort. The ones who showed the most improvement were the third generation of the King clan. All of them had broken through at least two stages. King Bei was now a grade 4 martial king, King Yu a grade 3 martial king, King Hu a grade 9 Xianshan and King Jun a grade 10 Xianshan. Luin Luin's improvement was the fastest. After Dai Chen left, Yi A Jiang just happened to break through to grade 3 Marial Saint from peak grade 2 Martial Saint. Kang Hai Mingyu and Mingyu Gelu did not break through. In the past, Kang Hai Mingyu had already consumed the beauty pill while Mingyu Gelu had reached peak grade 2 Martial Saint, but had yet to break through. Huoyan Lu Li had reached peak Martial King with six countries of strength. She was already at the brink of being a martial saint and could break through at any time. However, there was a small possibility that she might never break through her entire life. Therefore, King Shui decided to wait for a while. If she was truly unable to break through, he would give her a fate pill. The next mysterious fruit was about to ripen, and he had decided to consume that fruit leaving the remaining one to refine the fate pill. Wenren Wushuang had broken through to become a grade 2 martial saint. Shi Qingjuang had risen from grade 3 to grade 6 martial king. This speed was already considered pretty fast, but King Shui felt that her increase in strength was still insufficient. However, Shi Qingjuang was still just a grade 6 martial king and the room for improvement was very great. Furthermore, he also had methods to spur her growth. Overall, he was still very satisfied by the accomplishments of the King clan. His pills on top of the usual great effort during training had allowed him to attain those accomplishments. Compared to the King clan, the improvement of the Heavenly Palace was much slower. However, it was still faster than before. Yet, they were still incomparable to those supreme aristocratic clans and sects. King Shui, I want to go home. Finding King Shui, who was currently training one day, Dai King said these words to him. Dai Chen had been gone for some time, 
but Dai King had remained here all along. King Shui felt that he had truly neglected her a little during this period. Ever since she was splashed by cold water in front of him, there had been very few private moments between the two of them. She was a naturally arrogant woman. When had she been last disregarded like this? Especially now it was by the only man she was close to and favorable impression of. Yet the opposite party did not seem to like her. She had already tried her best, and had thickened her face and done what she could do. However, the result wasn't to her expectations, and he did not express any feelings to her. After enough time had passed, she felt staying here was just increasing her frustrations and she felt unwanted, hence she felt she should leave as soon as possible. After hearing that she wanted to leave, King Shui felt slightly guilty. Dai King had not come to the King clan because her elder sister was here. If not she would not have stayed for so long after her elder sister had left. After a period of time, I'll also head to the central continent. Why don't we head there together? King Shui asked after thinking for a while. There's no need. I miss home. I've already talked to aunt and the rest. I'll leave tomorrow. Dai King replied with a smile as she shook her head, her tone very firm. King Shui did not know what feeling he had towards Dai King, and it was definitely not love. Perhaps it was due to Dai Chen that he had considered her a very good friend. Currently, he could feel Dai King's disappointment, bitterness as well as her complicated feelings. If she truly loved him, King Shui guessed that she would definitely be in pain. This was because he knew that feeling, and also knew that everyone had their own sorrows. Now, he actually envied those romantics. If all comers were welcomed, perhaps he could also be very happy now. If he was truly the kind of person, the girls beside him now might not have existed. For a moment, King Shui did not know what to say. After pausing for a while, he said, I'll send you. That sentence made Dai King's heart immediately sink. King Shui did not urge her to stay nor showed any expression. At that moment, her heart was in pain, as she knew that once she leaves this time round, there won't be any chance of getting together with him. A relationship was like a double-edged sword. If it was not grasped properly, both parties would be hurt. Thank you, Dai King replied with a faint smile. With this mention of thanks, King Shui suddenly felt the distance between him and Dai King was slowly getting larger. Her current expression seemed to have returned to the time when she was the Huang King sword devil. At this moment, she was already no longer that slightly crafty and absolutely beautiful girl. She still looked as beautiful but the craftiness and intimate look was already gone, once again returning to being a psychedelic, beautiful girl. Dai King turned around and left. King Shui did not see the desolateness that emerged after that smile. The moment she walked out of the backyard, a clear teardrop fell from her eye. King Shui, goodbye. Since I can't be your lover, I'll just be a passerby then. Wiping off the tears from her eyes, Dai King regained her usual smile. Looking at Dai King's back, King Shui felt a little guilty. He did not know if he felt guilty for Dai King or for Dai Chen, perhaps it was a bit of both. On the second day, King Shui had still maintained his usual routine. Only when it was time for breakfast did he realize that Dai King had not appeared. His heart suddenly skipped a beat and he promptly rushed to her room. Her room was already packed neatly, the bedding was tidied up neatly. The spotless room had a faint nice smelling fragrance. However, King Shui wasn't in the mood for any of these. There was a letter above the tea table in the room. On its surface wrote three words, to King Shui. King Shui rapidly tore it open and retrieved the silk letter. Opening it hurriedly, he rapidly read the letter. King Shui, 
When you're reading this letter I'll have already left. Don't chase after me. I'm all right. Besides, you won't be able to find me. Don't think too much about this. I love you. However you don't love me. I assumed that by following by your side, you might change your view of me and will love me. I believed that I'm not inferior anyone. I love you. This is the first time I've loved a man in my life, yet I loved till I was covered all over in bruises. Don't feel guilty. I'm all right. I'm very strong. I love your freedom and carefreeness. You also don't like my carefreeness. Maybe this is what I've owed you in my previous life, and you're my tormentor in my present life. You're a good man. Although you're slightly perverted, you're true and genuine. Treat my elder sister well. The past few years for my elder sister were very painful. I'm leaving and would not trouble you anymore in the future. Dai King out. King Shui was stunned for a moment, before he rapidly exited the room. Saying a word to his family, he mounted the firebird and rapidly flew into the skies. However, the skies were empty, with no sign of any familiar figure. Standing in mid-air, King Shui did not know what he wanted to do. Even if he were to catch up, what would he do? Standing on the firebird, he peered towards the distant east. King Shui did not know how to regard this. Was he being indecisive? The current separation was also considered as a pretty good ending. However, King Shui had a gut feeling that if she leaves, there would always be regret in his heart. He did know what this feeling was. He knew that currently he did not love this girl. I'll gamble once, gamble once. King Shui to muttered himself. He had decided to guess a direction before activating the nine continent steps, seeing if he could catch up to Dai King. Dai King mounted her azure-eyed silver falcon which was much stronger than before. She had in fact placed the letter and left at 11 p.m. the night before, flying towards the east. She currently felt that the azure-eyed silver falcon's speed was too fast, so much so that she wished it would fly a bit slower. Time after time again, she would uncontrollably take a look behind her. She had really hoped for that figure to show up. Once, twice, no matter how many times it was, the result was the same. Dai King mockingly laughed at herself. Dai King ah Dai King, he offered to send you, yet you rejected him. Why are you acting like this now? Unknowingly, the sky had turned bright. Looking at the unknown distance that she had already covered, she shook her head. He should know that she had already left by now. It would be impossible to catch up to her. Besides, he should be more than eager for her to leave. Being tangled with a woman he did not like was very annoying. A bitter and astringent smile appeared on Dai King's face. She realized she learned today how to laugh bitterly. When did she becoming so disappointing? The first time she had liked a person and had taken the initiative to chase him, and yet she ended in such regret. She already did not wish to look back. However, after hesitating again and again, she told herself just one last time, one last time. Standing on the back of the azure-eyed silver falcon, Dai King slightly turned her head and glanced backward. It was still empty. She laughed bitterly as she shook her head, turning around and allowing the azure-eyed silver falcon to rapidly increase its speed. However, just as she turned around, she was stupefied. In the distance, a giant fiery bird had stopped in midair, with the man of her dreams standing on it, giving her a faint smile. At that moment, she was unable to stop her nose from sniffing, as tears fell uncontrollably from her eyes. The azure-eyed silver falcon had already flown to the front of the firebird. King Shui stepped across the air, instantaneously appearing before Dai King. That letter had made him understand her thoughts. He gambled once. If he managed to catch up to her, 
it meant that the two of them were bound by fate. He would try to interact with her and not reject her subconsciously. This was because he had thought about Dai King's words and he wanted to gamble on the fate between him and Dai King. After choosing a direction, he immediately used the nine continent steps. He was surrounded by wilderness upon arrival. Although there were the occasional beast hordes and flying demonic beasts passing by, there was no sign of that familiar figure. When King Shui found that the distinct figure within his mind, he felt slightly panicky. Previously when he did not discover her in the surrounding area, he was dazed, pondering as he stood still. When he had finally prepared to leave, he raised his head, only to see the azure-eyed silver falcon coming from the west. It turned out that his nine continent steps had made him appear in front of her. At this instant, King Shui seemed to have made a decision. Especially when he saw Dai King on the back of the azure-eyed silver falcon, glancing backward for a long time, not wanting to turn her head back. Why are you crying? King Shui hesitated for a while before helping her wipe her tears, yet the more he wiped, the more tears came dripping down. King Shui, with a shout, Dai King immediately hugged King Shui lightly and started to sob. Her grieving appearance made King Shui's heart hurt incomparably. Chapter 821. Departing on the Eve. King Shui hugged her gently. When he had came over, he had decided to gamble even though the odds of finding her were close to zero. However, he had actually managed to chase up to her. Dai King hugged King Shui very tightly. Her alluring body was trembling faintly, and the fluctuations in her heart were very intense as she softly made sobbing noises. Don't cry, Sister King, said King Shui as he gently patted her back. This was the second or third time he had hugged her. The nine continents were generally laid back about things, but a large portion of women were very traditional, even down to the bone. When Dai King raised her head again with her tear-filled, slightly red-pupiled beautiful appearance, she looked at King Shui earnestly with a face without makeup that made her seem exceptionally pitiful. From the look in her eyes, she seemed to want to place King Shui into her heart, to the place where her soul was. Why did you chase after me? King Shui, I'd already decided not to see you again, but why did you just have to appear? Asked Dai King softly as she looked at King Shui. I'm slightly slow when it comes to relationships. You're not slow. You're a hard and stiff tree root replied Dai King as she continued to hug King Shui, not letting him go. King Shui was speechless for a while. Bitterly laughing, he looked towards the magnificent girl who was hugging him. Elder Sister King, you should know that I've more than one girl with me. If you follow me, I'm afraid it'd wrong you. Do I look like I feel wronged? This is the first time I've liked someone, and also the first time I've confessed to someone. However, I've been hurt and covered in wounds, replied Dai King dejectedly as she looked at King Shui. King Shui felt touched. Such a girl had given up everything to be by his side. His heart was not stone. This was coupled with the fact that the two of them had been in contact with each other for quite a while. Really though, the most important reason Dai King felt this way was due to Dai Chen. It was not that Dai Chen had forbidden their relationship. Instead, she seemingly had thought of playing matchmaker for the two of them, and had even mentioned it to him. However, he had felt that this was slightly unfair for Dai Chen. If Dai Chen and Dai King weren't sisters, there would probably have been a different ending for Dai King now. Could it be that you don't like me a single bit? Dai King seemed to have gathered the courage to ask this question. In addition, King Shui could feel that her heart was currently racing. There's no one who doesn't like beauties. However, liking and loving are two separate matters. In fact, it took quite a lot of courage to reject you. 
King Shui replied earnestly with a bitter face. Is that true? Hearing King Shui's reply, Dai King felt happy, her hand hugging King Shui more tightly. That's naturally true. Although you're not gentle enough, you're a super great beauty. Replied King Shui with a smile. Who says that I'm not gentle? I'm very gentle. Dai King's face turned slightly red as she looked at King Shui. She did not know whether his previous sentence was praising her or something else. You're very gentle right now. Okay. Okay. You're still crying your nose off at such a big age. Come on. Stop rubbing your mucus on me. Said King Shui gently as he rubbed the tear stains off her face. When his hand made contact with that tender and lovely skin, it made both their hearts jump and skip. Although King Shui had helped Dai King stop crying before, that situation didn't have the ambiguous flavor of this moment. This was all due to the two of them seemingly untying the knots in their hearts. You're the snot-nosed one. It's all because of you. I want you to compensate me. Said Dai King bashfully as she wrapped her hands around his neck in an annoyed tone. Okay, I'll compensate you. Tell me, what do you want as compensation? Asked King Shui with a smile. I want you to say you love me, said Dai King in a soft voice as she faintly lowered her head. King Shui gawked before looking at the girl whose face was turning even redder. Her lovely earlobes had turned an alluring pink, giving off an aura that made people's blood boil. King Shui extended his hand and held her chin, putting her beautiful face that could lead to the downfall of countries right in front of his. The amorous feelings he had in that instant almost enraptured him. Are you certain that you'll have no regrets? I won't regret it. Even if I had to jump through fire, I won't have any regrets. Replied Dai King in an extremely soft voice. However, her firm tone was unconcealable. Ching Er, I love you. Said King Shui softly as he hugged her. King Shui, I love you too. Said Dai King gently into King Shui's ear. This instantly made King Shui's heart jump. It seemed as though his heart was touched, and unknowingly, he had already hugged her tightly. They could feel the other's heart racing. Let's go back. If you left, how would we be able to deepen our relationship? King Shui, I really want to go back. Don't worry about me. I really miss home. If we are in love, this short separation won't mean anything. I'll find you. After thinking, Dai King raised her head slightly and looked at King Shui. King Shui opened his mouth and wanted to say something. However he was prevented by a kiss from Dai King, blocking his mouth. Gawking, he looked at her, faintly closing her eyes as her delicate body faintly shivered. Her kiss awkwardly rubbed against his mouth, but this just made King Shui more stimulated. Gradually, under the guidance of King Shui, the two of them had come to a tacit understanding. The beautiful and wonderful feeling of those lips akin to flower petals made King Shui forget about time. As King Shui's hands rubbed on her large mounds, Dai King pressed down on his hands as her face burned up. That's enough. You're not allowed to act badly. King Shui looked at Dai King's exceptionally beautiful face as his hands continued to blaspheme her. Looking at her lovely and ashamed look, it was as if his soul suffered an attack. Not quite yet. He continued for at least a minute before Dai King voiced her annoyance with a beet red face. Reluctant to part, King Shui withdrew his hands before saying a sentence in Dai King's ear causing her to be even more ashamed and unable to show her face. At this point, her face turned an even more scarlet red, akin to fire. Are you truly going to leave? At this time, King Shui and Dai King had already landed in the wilderness. Yes, you can come find me, or I'll come find you in the future. In any case you better not get rid of me for your entire life. 
said Dai King happily. Take this and eat it. It'll help you. King Shui took out the fate pill he had prepared for Huoyan Lu Li and handed it to Dai King. Looking at King Shui, Dai King did not say anything else and directly swallowed it. King Shui guarded her as she broke through. She was undoubtedly one of those matchless girls from the of the portraits of beauties, breaking through straight from grade 2 martial saint to grade 4 martial saint, increasing over 400 counties of strength. Dai King was incomparably happy. She was an independent girl, and her breakthrough in strength was a happy thing for her. It was as if she had received two times the happiness today. For a day, the pair spent basically all of their time on the back of the firebird. Since she was going to leave, King Shui bluntly used this method to give her a day of his time. Just like that, the two of them snuggled together on the back of the firebird, talking about their worries. From time to time, Dai King's seductive voice would ring out, and this continued all the way to the next day. King Shui, go back. It's already very far, said Dai King as she looked at King Shui. King Shui nodded his head and replied, close your eyes. I'll send you off for the rest of the journey. Dai King slowly closed her eyes. King Shui kept the firebird and hugged the already blushing Dai King. She had assumed that he wanted to kiss her. Laughing, King Shui kissed her lips as he simultaneously used the nine continent steps. In that instant, Dai King did not know what had even happened. Their kiss lasted at least a minute. Still unwilling, their lips separated. Dai King mounted her azure-eyed silver falcon and left, with King Shui waiting for her figure to disappear over the horizon before mounting the firebird and returning. It was already the third day when he returned home. Within these three days, King Shui had refined the mysterious fruit he had kept into fate pills. Perhaps due to the increase in his alchemy skills, he had unexpectedly refined four pills. This could be considered a big breakthrough, as the price of every fate pill was astronomical and the pill was not a trace inferior to the Xianxian Golden Pellet. As King Shui returned to the King family, all the clan members felt quite relieved. Upon knowing that Dai King had returned home safely, everyone breathed a sigh of relief. King Shui proceeded to hand a fate pill to Yi A Jiang, Huoyan Lu Li, Kanghai Mingyu and Wenren Wushuang. King Shui, can this really help me break through to Martial Saint stage? asked Huoyan Lu Li as she looked towards King Shui with a frown. Are you not happy? asked King Shui with a smile. No, but isn't it harder for martial saints to have children? asked Huoyan Lu Li as she looked at King Shui. It's originally like that, but nothing is absolute. King Shui had never imagined that she would be perturbed over this. King Shui, I feel like waiting for a child before I consume it. Would that be all right? Recently I've not even dared to train, as I'm afraid of breaking through to Martial Saint. Said Huoyan Lu Li gently. King Shui felt that this lass was too cute. There might be people within the world of the nine continents that may have the same thoughts, but those with the same absolute resoluteness would be as rare as phoenix feathers and unicorn horns. You can definitely do that, replied King Shui with a faint smile. Okay, she replied in a very low voice. Seductress, let us go plow the seed and give birth to a child earlier. After consuming the fate pill, Yi A Jiang became a grade 5 martial saint, Kanghai Mingyu became a grade 4 martial saint and Wenren Wu Shang became a grade 3 martial saint. The fate pill wasn't the most precious treasure in the world, but it was absolutely a powerful pill. Everyone could only consume one in their lifetime. The strength of the others in the King clan had also rapidly increased. King Shui had long given them all the pills and medicines that they required. 
That included the all-aspect nourishment soup and the tiger bone soup. And he had even given the recipe and some spices to the members of King family. Not much time was left, and King Shui felt that he should head back to Flower Fruit Mountain. His nature energy had reached the sixth grade, so it should be possible for him to save the lady in the crystal coffin. He planned to save that lady and consider their dealings even. After all, he had taken a drawing from her and a pearl from that gate-keeping old turtle. If not for that pearl, he would not have been able to subdue that spirit snake turtle and gain those benefits. Maybe I'm the only one who can help you. King Shui thought about that lady who had been asleep for some unknown amount of time. A lady akin to a goddess. The Misty Hall was now under the leadership of Yi A Jiang, with a few girls helping her. The Misty Hall had become the strongest hall of the nine halls in the Heavenly Palace. Their existence might lead to the Heavenly Palace becoming extraordinarily splendid in the future. He was about to leave, and he did not know how long it would be before he could settle down again. Hopefully, it should be quick. Chapter 822 Towards Flower Fruit Mountain. After half a month, King Shui prepared to leave. The people from the King clan merely made a token attempt at stopping King Shui from leaving. They knew that King Shui had his own matters to attend to. Hence they didn't excessively urge him to stay. However, he constantly carried his own children around. With both King Ming and King Yan having learned to call out father and mother. Their baby voices made him reluctant to leave. This time round, he did not mention a specific time that he would be back as even he was unsure when that would be. Lass, let mommy carry you. Daddy has things to do. Shi Qingjuang smiled as she went over to carry King Yan, who was in King Shui's arms. What made King Shui happy was that the little lass refused to let go of him, causing Shi Qingjuang to not know whether to laugh or cry. After a round of coaxing her, Qingjuang at last managed to carry the little girl over. This time, only a few of the girls sent King Shui off. Kang Hai Mingyu, Shi Qingjuang and Mingyu Gelu didn't. Yi A Jiang, Wenren Wushuang and Huoyan Lu Li stood on the back of the firebird along with King Shui. The place where King Shui wanted to go to was Flower Fruit Mountain. He decided to head there to examine the place once again and to conveniently visit the underwater palace at the bottom of the lake to see if he could help awaken the woman in the crystal coffin. King Shui, let me go with you. Huoyan Lu Li looked at King Shui. Wait for a while longer. Currently, I'm not strong enough to bring you guys. Very soon, as long as you wish to go, I'll bring you guys along wherever it may be. King Shui smiled as he looked at Huoyan Lu Li. You always lie to us. It's the same every time. Huoyan Lu Li pouted, but she wasn't angry. She understood that things were not easy for King Shui. Furthermore she knew that he was fighting for survival, his own as well as that of the King clan and the Heavenly Palace. You must be careful, we're still counting on you. When you're back, I'll agree to anything you want. Wenren Wushuang grinned as she looked at King Shui, her gorgeous face showing a slight blush. Wushuang can no longer endure it. Huoyan Lu Li looked at Wushuang with a teasing look as she revealed a cunning smile. Yi A Jiang was silent the whole time. Her expression was tranquil to the point that even King Shui was unable to grasp any fluctuations in her feelings. He he, then I'll need to come back earlier. King Shui licked his lips and smiled at Wenren Wushuang. Wenren Wushuang lowered her head her face turning scarlet. All right, head on back. Don't need to worry about me. King Shui saw that half a day had already passed, and made them rush back to the King clan before dusk. King Shui, be careful, Huoyan Lu Li whispered as she hugged King Shui. All right, I know, don't worry. 
King Shui replied as he smiled and patted her back. After that, King Shui hugged Wenren Wushuang. However, he didn't say anything, only hugging her tightly before letting go. After a moment of hesitation, he walked up to Ye Jiang. I'm leaving. All right, pay attention to your safety. Ye Jiang smiled gently. Her beautiful eyes were filled with much concerns. King Shui nodded his head and hugged her gently. He could feel both his and Ye Jiang's hearts beating really fast at the same time. When he realized her heart was beating fast as well, he calmed down instead. We've already been husband and wife for such a long time, yet you still feel so nervous, King Shui whispered softly at her ear. Upon hearing King Shui's words, Ye Jiang softly embraced King Shui and relaxed her entire body. At this moment, King Shui felt her body pressing tightly on his. King Shui really meant what he said. After the incident with Dai King, he recalled that in the past she did not allow him address her as master and she also didn't object to small intimate moments between them. Why would a girl like her let him take advantage of her to such an extent? Even now, the close contact they had also illustrated a problem. At the very least, he was currently greatly superior to other men. All along, he was unable to have a clear grasp of how Ye Jiang felt. But when they both felt nervous at the same time, that proved that the both of them really cared for each other. King Shui waved his hand and left on the firebird, leaving only Ye Jiang, Wenren Wushuang and Huoyan Lu Li. They watched until the firebird disappeared into the distance. Sister Jiang, he is a moron when it comes to the affections between men and women. Are you sure you want things to stay this way? At that time, I was also the one who thickened up my face and Huoyan Lu Li blushed when she was asking Ye Jiang, we'll let nature take its course. In the past, even though I didn't make it clear with what I said, he should still be able to understand what I meant, Ye Jiang said with a smile. But it seemed like he was enlightened today. He is the timid type. He is lustful yet he never dares to confess it. Just like with Sister Jiang, if she doesn't make it clear to him, I doubt that he would ever confess his feelings. He feels inferior. If it had been in the past, I think he wouldn't even dare to hug her. Wenren Wushuang continued on with a smile. That's true. No wonder Wushuang seduced him just now. Lu Li, if you continue saying that about me, I'm going to slap your bum. Wenren Wushuang said, embarrassed. King Shui had already flown toward Flower Fruit Mountain for three days. Other than the time spent in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal, he spent the rest of it hurrying on. The Firebird was a few times faster than before. In addition, by using the nine continent steps daily, he was really fast. He had already covered half of the journey in merely three days. Currently, he had already entered the center part of the wilderness. But normally, this place wasn't really that dangerous. Every time King Shui was rushing through his journey, he would feel that the speed of his mount was really slow. The world of the nine continents was too large, causing him to spend almost all his time on the road. From one continent to another, the time needed to travel past a continent was immeasurable. Undeniably, the amount of expenses and energy needed to travel far away was enormous. Compared to before, King Shui felt that things were slightly better now. It was just that his nine continent steps have not improved. If not, he would feel even better. That was, if the nine continents steps effect was really able to travel past a continent in one go. After three days, King Shui looked at the boundless flower fruit mountain and sensed the familiar aura. It still had the familiar powerful energy contained within it. There weren't any presence of martial saints in flower fruit mountain. A martial saint expert would still be able to suppress the strength of a peak martial king. 
Upon entering it this time, King Shui felt something different. When the enormous pressure approached him, some of it was blocked by his nature energy and he managed to recover roughly 10% of his strength. 10%. At present, King Shui's strength was around three and a half stars. He tried to sense it and realized that he was actually able to execute nearly 4,000 countries of strength. He was still a martial saint expert on Flower Fruit Mountain. In fact, he could be considered a highly ranked martial saint expert and was a lot stronger than some chieftain-level beasts. This made King Shui wonder if he would be able to break off from those limitations if his nature energy upgraded a few more levels. In any case, this was a good thing. This has enabled him to become the strongest presence within Flower Fruit Mountain. Generally, he could easily kill his opponents by merely using the Emperor's key and heavenly talismans. Because some of the heavenly talismans lowered the opponent's strength by using his own strength as the standard. For example, the binding talisman, merely one binding talisman was already able to make peak martial king demonic beasts slow like snails. A body securing talisman was able to lock the opponents in one place, the same thing could also be done with the demon binding ropes. Even though a lot of his methods weren't effective when facing peak martial saint experts, against opponents with strength of this caliber, not only would they work perfectly, the duration of the attacks lasted would also become longer. After rushing for a day, King Shui found a hilltop and took a break. He took the chance to enjoy the scenery there. When in nature, the power of scenery was huge. Beautiful scenery could attract one's attention to the point they might become obsessed with it. The power of nature was boundless. Cold, warmth, thunder, storm, hail, volcanoes. Ming Ming. A sharp chirping noise sounded. King Shui lifted up his head only to see a flock of white jade wind eagles in the distance. They were about 10 meters long and were skilled in flying. They were grade 1 martial king demonic beasts that moved in groups, and there were roughly 800 of them. To a martial saint or peak martial saint, the white jade wind eagles were really fragile. However, this was Flower Fruit Mountain and there wasn't any martial saints present. When faced with 800 grade 1 martial king demonic beasts that specialized in speed, even a peak martial king would still choose to retreat. King Shui was different. Due to his nature energy, he could use his high-ranked martial saint strength. Hence, he didn't pay any attention to the white jade wind eagles that were approaching him. Ming. A sharp and loud chirping noise resounded. A restless white jade wind eagle suddenly charged towards King Shui and attempted to scratch King Shui with its enormous claws. Reckless. King Shui extended his hands and immediately caught its enormous claws. After that, he pulled the eagle backwards before violently thrusting forward. This was the strength of Tai Chi. Just that King Shui modified it slightly, swapping part of the gentleness with ferocity. In just a short while, the innards of the white jade wind eagle were totally destroyed. The difference in strength was too large. By merely swinging his hands, he has already killed his opponent. Perhaps due to King Shui killed one of the white jade wind eagles, the entire flock went mad and they haphazardly charged towards King Shui. King Shui slowly closed his eyes. In an instant, Everything in the surroundings appeared clearly in his mind. Tai Chi Cloud Hand. Tai Chi Single Whip. King Shui swiftly thrust out his palm. It was so dazzling that it would only make people gasp in amazement. Short and miserable chirping noises resounded igniting the bloody nature of the white jade wind eagles. As long as they were still breathing, they would continue to attack madly. Unfortunately, the difference in strength was too large. Each time King Shui executed a move, he would kill one of them. Besides, 
King Shui was still able to fly even in Flower Fruit Mountain, making his body even more agile. 800 was not be a small number, but when in front of an expert, it's just a piece of cake. In the end, the number of white jade wind eagles that escaped was less than a hundred. King Shui left shortly after. Previously, he was only focused on practicing the coordination of his Tai Chi fist and mind. But now, it wasn't advisable for him to continue staying in this place. Although he wasn't afraid of running into demonic beasts and his safety was guaranteed, he didn't want to be involved in meaningless fights. Although there wasn't any martial saints in Flowerfruit Mountain, yet such situations had appeared. Hence, he still felt that it was better to be more careful. Within Flowerfruit Mountain, King Shui didn't summon his mount and simply used his cloud mist steps, treating it as practice. He swiftly moved forward and adjusted his key to a state where he could conserve the most energy. This time, he managed to find Goddess Peak very easily. It still had the same appearance. The only difference compared to the previous time was that last time, he rode Firebird here. But he flew here by his own strength this time round. King Shui stood at the side of the lake, not entering immediately. Finally, he gritted his teeth, taking out a few water-repelling pearls before jumping in. With much ease, he appeared at the bottom of the lake and entered the area containing the palace at the bottom of the lake. Chapter 823. Disrespect, Disparity in Strength, Life Hanging by a Thread. As King Shui entered the familiar area, his strength recovered completely. This place wasn't affected by the pressure of Flower Fruit Mountain. As he lifted up his head, he saw the enormous old turtle. The old turtle looked as serene as always, just like a mountain. However, upon meeting it again this time, King Shui felt that the previous intimacy had been eliminated. However, what made King Shui panic was that with his current ability, he was still unable to feel the extent of the old turtle's ability. Nevertheless, he was certain that the old turtle was a lot stronger than him. When King Shui noticed the turtle, he also happened to see that the old turtle was also looking at him. King Shui could tell that from its large eyes that it was elated to see him. Young man, you came. An old yet solid voice sounded in King Shui's mind. This startled King Shui. He was aware that the voice was the old turtle communicating telepathically. Just how powerful was the turtle that it even had its own voice? Peak Martial Saint Demonic Beasts were unable to achieve that. King Shui didn't ponder any further. The more he thought about it, the more he felt a chill down his back. Don't think too much. I won't harm you. You're a person who keeps his promises. The old yet solid voice sounded once again. I can't say that I'll definitely wake her up, but I am willing to try my best. King Shui slowly explained to the old turtle. I know. The old turtle gradually stepped aside from the palace gate. The old and solid voice echoed in King Shui's mind. King Shui could sense a hint of helplessness in its voice. King Shui didn't say anything else, nodding toward the old turtle and headed in. The palace gate slowly closed once more. Other than the portrait of beauty which King Shui took, the surroundings looked the same as before. King Shui stopped for a while before approaching the crystal coffin. When he looked at the woman within the coffin, he was still as stunned as before. King Shui felt that she was a woman that was most similar to a goddess. Her eyes were closed and her hair in a bun. Her brows soft. Her face had no makeup, but yet had a tinge of red on her fair skin. She was unbelievably beautiful and looked as though she was asleep. Her snow-white clothes could not hide the curves of her body. She had thin shoulders. The curves of her bosom made one's heart race. Her waist looked incredibly slender. Her delicate body was like a jade sculpture made by God. 
Her exposed legs had s sparkling luster. Even as she lay in the coffin with her eyes closed, she still exuded a temperament that others dare not profane. She was the most unapproachable woman King Shui had ever seen, not because of her coldness, but the pride and loftiness that was within her. As King Shui stood in front of the crystal coffin and looked at the sealed beauty, he could feel a dangerous aura exuding out of her body. This caused King Shui to helplessly retreat again. The old turtle at the gate already possessed unmeasurable strength. This woman was definitely much more stronger than the old turtle. If there were any mishaps, King Shui would definitely lose out. Recalling the turtle's aged expression, it had most likely guarded this place for countless years. Since it was fate to have come upon this place, King Shui decided to take the risk. Besides, he might not be able to save her. After blanking out for a moment, King Shui slowly grabbed the woman's hand. He immediately felt an ice-cold aura being transmitted over, but it was quickly neutralized. King Shui controlled his nature energy and assimilated it into her meridians. Her body was like a unique space, with the nature energy that entered seemingly like a drop in the vast ocean. Fortunately, King Shui's nature energy didn't consume any energy. Hence he did not need to worry about his body's endurance. King Shui slowly calmed his mind. He intended to use the purest nature energy to break her sea land then suppress and neutralize the poison in her body. A day passed. King Shui held one of her hands as he continuously injected nature energy into the woman's body. Only after a whole day did he feel a reaction from her body. Or rather, he could feel a slight movement of her body. The seal was beginning to be undone. This was within King Shui's expectations. As long as there was sufficient nature energy, it could neutralize all forms of evil. Although his nature energy was only at the sixth grade now, it did not consume energy which was the most important. Unknowingly, three days had passed. King Shui was amazed to discover that the nature energy had already roused her vitality. But simultaneously, it also awakened the poison in her body. Furthermore, he sensed that the poison within her body was a rare type of cold poison, and there also seemed to be some pink-colored component within the poison as well. This caused King Shui to panic. Pink-colored poisons were normally bewildering and stimulating hormones that caused people to lose control over their body. But what King Shui feared was that this pink-colored poison was a strong stimulant. In other words, it was an aphrodisiac. Suddenly, the poisonous mist bursted into King Shui's body through his meridians. He wasn't able to react to this unforeseen event. Right at this moment, he realized that the woman had opened her eyes. The cold and bone-chilling pupils were like a world of ice and snow. Their beauty was unparalleled, and they were pure and sacred like a 10,000 years old icicle. The contrast in her eyes were really distinct. The pupil was as black as ink, deep and profound whereas the sclera was pure and flawless. It was a pair of emotionless yet extremely attractive eyes. In the past, King Shui had felt that Duanmu Lingxuang was really cold. But when compared to this woman, she was like a child playing house. Looking at this woman, King Shui was astonished by her beauty. However, he was unable to resist the cold aura she exuded. Once he noticed the woman had opened her eyes, he wanted to let go of her jade white hand. However, he realized that they were stuck and was unable to loosen his hand. That wasn't the most terrifying matter. What frightened him was when he realized that the aphrodisiac that entered his body had begun to take effect. The nature energy was only able to counteract a part of it, but the amount of the tyrannical pink mist was increasing unceasingly. He continuously transferred his nature energy into the woman's body. The cold poison in her body had begun to take effect, 
causing her to be completely immobilized. King Shui on the other hand was feeling panicked and nervous. Perhaps, he might have to hand over his life today. Although the woman was unable to move, her gaze looked toward King Shui after a period of blankness. Towards the man who was really close to her, she didn't have any change in expression. When she noticed him holding her hand, she slightly knitted her brows. She seemed like she wanted to move, but she was unable to. At this moment, King Shui's breathing was already in disorder. The woman looked at King Shui and saw that he was flushed. She then looked toward the hand he was grabbing and felt the energy he was continuously pouring into her. She seemed to understand and remember something which led to a change in her expression. Presently, King Shui was giving his utmost effort to control his body. The yin-yang image in his consciousness had also started rotating faster. Never could he have thought that he would encounter such a situation. Even though the tyrannical poison wasn't didn't cause him to lose his human nature, he was on the edge of losing control of his body. King Shui's right hand involuntarily extended. When it was almost touching the beautiful pointed peaks, he fiercely bit his tongue. A trace of fresh blood flowed from his mouth and in exchange for temporary peace. He didn't want to take advantage of another's misfortune. After the time it took for an incense to burn, King Shui once again couldn't control over himself, so much so that even his mind was starting to waver. His body had already reached a limit. He now thought that he wouldn't mind dying after he sullied her. Gold Needle King Shui swiftly pierced it into his Ling Tai acupoint. Nature energy was formidable, but it still wasn't strong enough. At the very least, the sixth grade nature energy was incapable of resisting the venom that had intruded into his body. The other thing which worried King Shui was the icy nature of her body. The chilliness was a lot stronger than King Hanye's. This reminded King Shui of the extreme Yang body. King Shui didn't know if he had an extreme Yang body. But he felt that even an extreme Yang body would have difficulties contending against the chill within her body. He was afraid he would be froze to death. King Shui shivered. He was distracted for a moment and by the time he opened his eyes, he realized that one of his hands was already kneading the woman's perky, plump and perfectly shaped chest. The woman cold gaze was fixed on King Shui, her brows knitted, but was unable to move. The cold he felt on his hand made his heart beat even faster. Despite his utmost effort in retracting his hands, it was in fact as difficult as ascending to heaven. Sorry, I couldn't control my body. At this moment, King Shui helplessly said to the woman, an ice-cold chillness that seemed to have the intent of freezing his soul caused King Shui to quiver. When he saw the scene before him, he was stunned. Currently, the woman and himself were already open to each other, and had already undergone a union. The previous coldness that penetrated the soul was a feeling due to his merger with her. The woman's cold aura was constantly transferred into King Shui's body through their connection and the bone-piercing chilliness kept King Shui incomparably clear-headed yet unable to control his own actions. The woman's perfect body was beyond compare. It was like a god's sculpture except it was too cold. If not for his strong will, he would most likely have died from the cold aura encroaching his body. King Shui revealed a bitter smile. The nameless technique in his body had unknowingly started operating. The bone-piercing cold feeling was really uncomfortable. However, the visual and mental stimulation still made him feel ecstatic to his core. The woman's cool eyes were still as cold and bone-piercing. Her meticulous snow-white cheeks had a trace of blush. Suddenly, King Shui shivered. It was a familiar feeling. He felt the same lively feeling when he placed the spirited snake turtle into the realm of the violet jade immortal. At this moment, 
An overbearing force was transmitted from the woman's body. This caused an abrupt rise in King Shui's strength. But before he could celebrate, the woman below him suddenly smacked him away with her palm. While in midair, King Shui spat out fresh blood before landing a distance away. King Shui revealed a bitter smile. Previously, he had already felt that the woman's strength was unfathomable. That feeling was like a human being facing the imminent crushing from a mountain. King Shui took out some clothes from the realm of the violet jade immortal and wore them. He wiped off the blood from the corner of his mouth. At this moment, the woman from the crystal coffin had already dressed neatly and was heading towards him. She was truly beautiful like a goddess. But now, she was planning to kill him, not hiding any of the killing intent emitting from her body. King Shui didn't want to die. Hence, he took out the Thunder God and Big Dipper Sword. He'd rather make an attempt to resist rather than just waiting helplessly for death. When the woman saw King Shui taking out his weapon, she knitted her brows again, locking onto King Shui with her aura. King Shui appallingly realized from the enormous pressure that he was unexpectedly unable to move when under his opponent's pressure. Just how strong was she? With a swing of her hand, King Shui had immediately flew upwards. Following that, King Shui felt his throat being strangled by a pair of hands which were slowly tightening their grip. Chapter 824. Unwilling, helpless, great boost in strength. At the moment, King Shui was feeling incomparably bitter. The woman should have been extremely furious by now. Prior to this, she couldn't move her body because of the cold poison which had intruded into her body. Similarly, he was also unable to maintain control over his. Just like this, using that kind of method, he muddle-headedly helped neutralize both her cold poison and the excessive poison which she transferred to him. Everything that happened before was clearly carved within King Shui's mind. The woman slightly wrinkled her brows and during the entire process, the only noises she made were weak breathing noises. In the instant they interacted for the first time, she must still have felt excruciating pain, regardless of her cultivation level. If she could move at that time, she would have definitely killed him without any hesitation. Now that he was at the brink of death, he was glad he had taken the opportunity to enjoy a night of joy with such a godly woman, as compensation for himself. He refused to die, but his strength all over his body was completely restrained. He was completely immobilized. On top of that, there was a pair of formless hands choking his neck. King Shui gazed at the pair of cold beautiful eyes. Like before, there was no sign of change in the emotions on her face. Other than the violent gasping noises she made in the crystal coffin, all along, she didn't mutter even one word. King Shui was getting more and more dizzy. He was unsure if he should regret saving the woman. But now, he was really furious. Not only did the woman not give him an opportunity to speak, she wasn't even keen on opening her mouth she should know about her own condition. Previously, he has also tried all sorts of methods to not violate her. In any case, it was true that he saved her. Even if she had wanted him to die, she should at least give him an opportunity to speak. Even prisoners would get to have a great meal before their execution. Right at the moment when his throat was about to be crushed, the woman swung her hand and immediately threw King Shui. King Shui once again crashed into the wall far away and spurted out fresh blood. The woman maintained the same look even after throwing King Shui. She turned around, stood there with her back facing King Shui and didn't even give him another glance. She was just like a 10,000 year cold ice, very beautiful, yet unapproachable. King Shui was really furious. Now, if the woman was to give him an opportunity to speak, he wouldn't mutter out even one word. 
He despised this kind of feeling. From the woman's action, he knew that she was giving him a chance to leave. King Shui stood up and didn't shoot another glance at the lady. For now, he didn't have any good feelings for the woman, nor did he have any interest in her. He unsteadily walked towards the palace gate. All the while, the woman just stood on the same spot without any sign of movement. She didn't shoot another glance at King Shui either. Her eyes started trembling slightly and bit by bit, started to turn a bit ignorant. King Shui walked out of the palace gate and conveniently tossed the water-repelling pearls at the old turtle. After that, he walked away without even turning his head. He didn't want to have anything to do with the woman, the same also went for the old turtle. He wanted to wipe away everything related to the woman. He didn't want to owe her anything. If they were ever to run into each other again in the future, they would just be strangers. He wouldn't think about killing this woman, but he also wouldn't mind becoming an enemy with her. He traveled as far as a million miles just to come here. Yet this was all he got. When he first arrived at this place, he never thought for things to turn out this way. At the instant when he was going out, he seemingly heard the old turtle's side. As soon as he went out of the pond, he ignored the water on his body, immediately summoned the firebird and flew away from Flower Fruit Mountain. However, the direction he flew into was towards the eastern side. Every man wouldn't feel satisfied if they encountered things like these. Prior to this, they were still having intimate interactions. But in the blink of an eye, he got thrown away like a pair of worn-out shoes or maybe even worse. Slowly, King Shui calmed down. Over time, he stopped feeling angry. The two didn't really share any relations with each other. They didn't really know each other. All the things which happened between them didn't really feel all that weird either. It's always said that one should never have too much curiosity. Just like him, he almost got himself killed for being too keen on things and as a result, he didn't get to learn about anything. Not knowing how long he has flu for, the injuries on King Shui's body began to stabilize. He also didn't feel as upset as before. In any case, the woman didn't have any intent of killing him. Or else, she would have been able to kill him easily. How strong was she? Was she a legendary martial emperor? Maybe because she knew that he saved her. Maybe because of this and that she was aware that he didn't do it on purpose, she didn't kill her. King Shui was certain that it was definitely not because he was her first man. The reason why she didn't kill him might have had to do with her pride as a warrior. King Shui kept on flying and only stopped after the sky turned dark. This was a swamp zone. With one glance, the entire place was filled with mud. There was only an island-like small area of land among the mud. It had a relatively small area. As King Shui spotted the biggest land among the mud, he ordered the firebird to descend on the land. The land contained an area of only about 10,000 square meter. It was square-shaped with its width and length about a hundred meters. As the firebird opened up both its wings, it almost covered up the entire land. But at the moment it retracted back the pair of wings, the land was still relatively wide. There were also quite a few of flying beasts among the mud. For example, the huge swamp chameleon. That was an enormous demonic beast. When in the mud, it was like a fish back in water. There were also a few swamp poisonous python. Its entire body was brown colored. It was nothing inferior to the huge swamp chameleon when it came to getting in and out of the mud. Added on that it had poison all over its body, it was considered an extremely dangerous demonic beast in the swamp land. Additionally, there were a few small and dangerous poisonous beasts, for example, the poisonous frog, poisonous snake, poisonous worm. Even though they weren't that poisonous or rather, couldn't be ranked among the most toxic poisons, it shouldn't be looked down upon. 
Poison can sometimes be really terrifying. Once one came into contact with it, they might end up forever incurable. The land was filled with rocks. It was a bare land with no plants. King Shui stood in the middle. He summoned back the firebird and began looking around. Kong, an enormous python with mud all over its body abruptly scuttled out of the swamp. It carried along a huge curtain of mud along with its body with thickness of a water jar and threw itself at King Shui. King Shui released his key force and dissipated the mud. After that, he executed a tiger strike with his hands. The loud tiger roaring noise shocked the approaching huge python. Pa! A depressing noise resounded. The python got blown backwards from the attack. It didn't make any noises. It sunk down into pond and lost all sign of movements. It's as if it never appeared before. The only thing left behind was an enormous and fresh trace of mud. King Shui turned blank for a moment. After that, he revealed a smile like he was mocking himself. After a night of joy, he has gained such a significant boost in strength. But even so, he still didn't stand a chance when in front of her. He tried to sense the violent strength within his body. It actually got from the original 3,500 countries worth of strength up to the current 5,000 countries. His defensive strength has also gotten from the original 5,000 countries up to 8,000 countries. Under the effect of Diamond Key, Diamond Protection and Diamond Crossing Rivers, he immediately achieved a net worth 10,000 countries of offensive strength and 16,000 countries of defensive strength. Nature Energy increased raw strength by 60%, the immovable mountains increased by 50 whereas Frenzied Bull's strength 30. The Heavenly Thunder Slash provided an additional 30% of strength, the shield attack 20. On the other hand, the Heavenly Talisman provided 50% boost in strength and defense whereas the combination sword technique helped provide a 40% boost to offensive strength. The Thunder God helped boost all of the abilities listed above by one fold. At the moment when King Shui took up the Big Dipper Sword and Thunder God, his offensive strength would achieve almost 48,000 countries, which in other words, was almost five stars worth of offensive strength. Putting on the lunar silk garment on the other hand, could help boost his defensive strength up to seven stars and with the addition of the seven stars armor, it would achieve a terrifying amount as much as 14 stars. The nature energy, immovable mountains and frenzied bull's strength helped boost every aspects of the main abilities. Not only did they help boost offensive strength, they also provided additional defensive strength as well as speed whereas the heavenly thunder slash, shield attack and combination sword technique only helped increase raw offensive strength. In any case, King Shui was still amazed by his current strength. In general, that was the strength he should possess. King Shui took out the Big Dipper Sword and Thunder God. After that, he slowly operated the immovable mountain. For Diamond Key, Diamond Protection and Diamond Crossing Rivers, they all revolved automatically on zero consumption. Hence, he didn't need to purposely operate them. Grade 6 nature energy was just the same. That being the case, he managed to save up a bit of time. A movable mountain. Frenzied bull's strength. Seven stars armor. King Shui could feel his body brimming with explosive strength and a kind of firmness. It was as if there was some sturdy substance guarding his body. It felt like his body could block any sorts of attacks. It's just that the woman's face once again appeared on his mind. Her cold yet bone-piercing beautiful face. The pressure that she exerted on King Shui made him felt really helpless. Even with his current strength, he still felt quite far away from her. Previously, he didn't move. Not that he didn't want to but he was unable to. As he thought about the previous incident, 
he felt aggrieved and couldn't help but executed one of the combination sword technique styles. Bang! The formidable force sunk down the entire land below his feet and caused the mud to burst up and covered up the whole sky. The surrounding looked as if it was rocked by a major disaster. King Shui stepped up into the air. He summoned the firebird and began to fly forward aimlessly. He didn't want to quiet down. Standing at the back of the firebird, random thoughts kept on circulating around his mind. Despite the significant power boost, the ancient strengthening was still yet to break through to the seventh heavenly layer. Now, King Shui was really thirsting for strength. It's not that King Shui wanted to take back his pride from the woman once he was stronger. It's just that this woman made him realize that there were a lot of people as strong as her across the world of the nine continents. He wanted to stand at the top, stand above everyone in the martial arts world. Lion King's Ridge and Demon Gate. King Shui felt that there would certainly be people who were as strong as this woman. In other words, this had also made him realize the gap in strength between himself and those people. The ancient strengthening technique had long since achieved the pinnacle sixth heavenly layer, it's just that there was no trace of it breaking through. Other than that King Shui's mind was fluctuating very intensely. Progressing from the third heavenly layer up to the fourth heavenly layer was already a really tough process. But in return, the strength boost he got was more than tenfold. Furthermore, the godly force in his danshan also liquefied as a result. This was the breakthrough of the ancient strengthening technique from elementary grade to intermediate grade. Going from the sixth heavenly layer to the seventh heavenly layer on the other hand, was progressing from the intermediate level up to expert level. Hence, King Shui was really looking forward to it. Would he break through to martial emperor? As King Shui thought about this, he felt emotionally stirred. But considering that he hadn't broken through or rather, he didn't feel anything close to breaking through even after all this time, it made him aware that it wouldn't be easy for him to break through to the seventh heavenly layer. If he didn't break through to the seventh heavenly layer, his current potential for strength increase would be limited. The only things he could rely on were the boosts provided by a few supplementary techniques. For example, the boost provided by nature energy and immovable mountains are a few unexpected gains. Chapter 825 Seventh level realm of the violet jade immortal. This time, the only thing that King Shui was glad about was probably his boost in strength. In any case, he still got both good and bad things out of it. It was just like the saying, the old man lost his mare, but it all turned out for the best. Even though the woman had put him under a lot of pressure, it still wasn't counted as giving him a huge embarrassment. Things just didn't turn out that great. Nevertheless, he did manage to take advantage of her, and considering that he got a significant strength boost, everything ended in a draw. He was the one who woke her up and saved her. In any case, he was still considered to have saved her. It was just that the reward he got in return was a bit unique. However, it was something out of his control. Besides, the reward that he got was also already considered to be incomparably precious. Seeing that it was almost time, King Shui immediately entered the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal along with the Fire Bird in midair. As soon as he entered, he was stunned by the sight in front of him. The space was so vast. This was the first thing that King Shui felt. He rode on the firebird and immediately circled around the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. It was approximately 10,000 meters long and wide, achieving a total distance of 20 li. King Shui was stunned. This was a space that belonged to only himself, and he had just got upgraded. Now, without much thought, he could tell that the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal had ascended to the seventh level. In the past, Every time it went up by a level, 
the length and width of the realm would be expanded by only a few times. This time it expanded tenfold. It seemed like the seventh level achieved by the realm was also a crucial point. This time, both its length and width actually expanded tenfold. Looking at the current realm of the Violet Jade Immortal, King Shui felt incomparably happy. This was also given to him by that woman after all. It was because of her that he managed to attain such a level. With both the length and width achieving 20 li, it was already enough for use. This actually caused the original area of the medicinal herb pond to seem really small. In the future, he could randomly plant medicinal herbs anywhere he wished. As he now observed the two ponds, with their diameters achieving 500 meters each, he could see the originally crowded sea creatures had spread out. Even the spirited snake turtle was happily swimming inside the pond splashing and creating waves. King Shui could feel the joy it had deep within its heart. The nine-petal lotus inside the pond seemed to have grown to twice its previous size. Even though the area it covered became a lot bigger, since the pond had similarly expanded from the original 100 meters diameter up to 500 meters diameter, the change didn't look significant. The large Paulonia wood far away seemed a lot thicker than before. Contrary to what one might expect, the Paulonia wood appeared to be even smaller than before because of the increase in size of the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. The Hundred Blossom Tree had also grown a lot bigger. There now seemed to be very few of the huge patches of medicinal herbs from the past, but one would realize that more of them had grown if they approached it. In the future, King Shui would need to plant more of the medicinal herbs and precious trees. Among the medicinal herbs, King Shui noticed quite a few new medicinal herbs and trees. He was aware that the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal has upgraded, so these should most likely be the rewards from it. He didn't look through it thoroughly because he was planning to go have a look at the stone tablet in a while. King Shui was filled with excitement. Since the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal had ascended to the seventh level, he really hoped that it would help provide him a major breakthrough. While thinking about all of this, he gradually approached the stone tablet at the corner of the pond. The expansion of the realm has helped cause the stone tablet at the corner of the pond to grow bigger as well. Now, the stone tablet was 4 meters tall and 2 meters wide, double what it was before. King Shui stood in front of the stone tablet and looked down. Sixth level realm of the Violet Jade Immortal, open. Below was some description of the rewarded species. After that, King Shui moved his gaze to the description below. Seventh level realm of the Violet Jade Immortal, open. It upgraded, this time, it really did. Even though previously, he was already certain that it had. King Shui only felt truly reassured when he saw the word, open. Only after seeing the word would he truly feel at ease. Feeling excited, King Shui continued to read downward. The rewards from 7th level realm of the Violet Jade Immortal shouldn't be that bad, so he really looked forward to it. He was rewarded with two mysterious fruit trees. They would bear fruit every 500 years. Upon consuming it, there was a 1 in a 100 chance the consumer would get an unexpected gain, for example, strength, defenses or speed multiplying, the user's techniques making a breakthrough or enabling the consumer to comprehend the five elemental secret of their techniques. King Shui never expected the mysterious fruit tree to be his first reward. He was even rewarded with two of them. King Shui might have already had one, but for things like these, no one would complain about having too many, even if there were ten of them, the reason being that the success rate was only one in a hundred. If one's luck was poor, they may not gain the effects even if they consumed a hundred of the fruits. Now that there were two more, there would automatically be two mysterious fruits on the tree. 
The reward for attaining the seventh level were quite good. King Shui already started off with a great beginning. A lot of luck has to be put at stake when consuming this fruit. Alternatively, it could also be refined into fate pills. However, each person could only take in the fate pill once. Hence, the only thing he could do was to test his luck. This was a really stimulating experience. Once the time was right and he really got the one in a hundred chance, there was a high probability he would reach the heaven in a single bound. Everything in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal also improved by a grade as a reward. The medicinal herbs got upgraded to thousand years medicinal herbs. Additionally, the total number of herbs also doubled. King Shui stunned. He turned around to look at the medicinal herbs from before that he felt hadn't increased. In fact, because of the increase in size of the realm, there appeared to be fewer medicinal herbs. Now that he was standing in front of the stone tablet, there were medicinal herbs all around him. He only noticed that it had truly doubled upon observing it again thoroughly. There were now two flowers of life. Furthermore, one more flower seemed to have grown. The fifth flower had finally bloomed. Upon seeing this, King Shui felt really excited. After all, at the time when the realm upgraded to the sixth level, the fourth flower had just bloomed. It would take more than four years in the real world for the fourth flower to bloom. Most importantly, he had used it a few times in the middle of the process. Hence, it would consume a lot of time. But now, the fifth flower of life had completely bloomed, meaning it had saved him more than eight years of time in real life. Not only did the quantity multiply in number, it also improved by a grade. Even though the flower of life was a medicinal herb, its petals were also categorized into different levels. A petal was equivalent to a grade. However, the years needed for it to bloom varied. The next flower would always take twice as long to bloom as the previous one. The quantity of the rest of the medicinal herbs doubled. Their medicinal age also increased by a thousand years. This has helped him save about five years of time in real life. The reward from achieving the seventh level was truly amazing. The amount of five elements fruits and things like strength enhancing fruit didn't actually increase. There was an extra vermilion fruit. Nothing changed with the peach of immortality. The same also applied for 1000 year gloomy wood. King Shui looked far into the distance. Nothing actually happened with the demonic beasts, however, the amount of Jade Emperor Bees had actually doubled. As for the Jade Emperor Queen Bee, there was still only one of it. As of now, there were already 800 Jade Emperor Bees. Furthermore, they all broke through by a grade from their original grade. For example, from Grade 1 Martial King to Grade 2 Martial King, not from Martial King straight up to Martial Saint. King Shui was sensing each of them now. He felt incomparably happy. The strength of both the Firebird and Diamond Gigantic Elephant increased by a thousand countries. It wasn't considered much, nor was it considered little. The raw offensive strength of the Diamond Gigantic Elephant had achieved a total of 8,000 countries, whereas its defense reached 12,000 countries. Its mighty Elephant Stomp also achieved 8 stars. Now, the strength of the Firebird had achieved 8,500 countries. To think that the benefits of the upgrade of the Realm of the Violet Jade Immortal would be so great. The Jade Emperor B was now at Grade 7 Martial Saint. The 10,000 Poison Violet Sable was now at Peak Grade 4 Martial Saint. The Gold Silver Colored Butterfly was now a Grade 5 Martial Saint, whereas the Thunderous Beast achieved Grade 6 Martial Saint. Other than the amount of Jade Emperor Bees doubling, the amount of both the five-colored daily python and five-colored daily grass also multiplied. Originally, 
King Shui thought that the five-colored Dalili python would evolve to the six-colored grade. Unfortunately, it didn't happen, but in return, its speed increased by quite a lot. The ordinary aquatic animals in the pond all increased two times. For animals like these, there weren't really any levels. There were also no changes in the quantity of the golden medicinal turtle and thousand years clam. However, their ages were increased by a thousand years. Reward. 50 pieces each for 7,000 years indigo heart, snake bone herb, 7,000 years ginseng, 7,000 years cloud mist herb and black ember flower. King Shui noticed the medicinal herbs needed for Ren Meridian strengthening pill. As soon as the word, 50, appeared, he looked down with high hopes. 50 golden bull grass, 7,000 years star moon flower, 6,000 years blood coral, 6,000 years five key sun grass, 7,000 years earth essence, eight immortal grass, 6,000 years sunflower and 7,000 years Ling Ji. King Shui looked through all of these with excitement. He didn't know if he should feel happy or upset. He already had all kinds of them but one, only one, the sky penetrating grass was more than 5,000 years. Reward a clear heart fruit tree. It would bear a fruit every 500 years. Purifying fruit could help solve evil spirits residing in one's mind and help purify the soul. It would also slightly change aptitude and stabilize one's mind. It could help raise one's consciousness. The amount that could be taken depended on the consumer's body. Some people could only take one of the fruits before it lost effect. Some would be able to consume a lot of them. The time gap between taking in two purifying fruit had to be more than a year. Reward a cleansing fruit tree. For every 500 years, it would bear one cleansing fruit. Cleansing fruit could be used for meridian cleansing. It would clean the impurities within the body and purify the key force within the meridians, adapting the body for even more efficient spiritual key absorption and speed up cultivation. Good stuff. King Shui looked at the introduction on the stone tablet and felt really excited. Seeing that there were still quite a few things below, he quickly looked to see if there was anything which could be of use now. Reward one body tree. For every 500 years, there would be 10 body seeds. They could be used to make tea, refresh one's mind and make them achieve a state of supreme enlightenment. They could also increase the chance for a cultivator to break through. King Shui stunned. How is this possible? The body seed was a great thing. Legend has it that it was also known as the fruit of wisdom. It tasted decent and it could be used for both children and adults to develop their intelligence. Reward 50 golden carp. They tasted delicious. Legend has it that after a thousand years, the golden carp had a fixed chance of condensing a golden carp pellet. Its effect was really mysterious and yet to be known. Apparently, it had the godly effect of providing a significant boost to the consumer's strength but only very few golden carp would be able to live up to a few thousand years. Reward a hundred thousand jinn of star steel. The star steel was also known as the meteorite from heaven. It was a favorite material for refining tools. Reward time ratio between the realm of the violet jade immortal and reality extended to 400 to 1. King Shui finally finished reading it. He let out a huge breath. This was the reward from seventh level realm of the violet jade immortal. It was already considered to be quite generous. Next, King Shui picked two mysterious fruits. One clear heart fruit, impurities cleansing fruit and ten body seeds. After that, he proceeded to look at the pond from the side. Considering that the pond was now a lot bigger, consisting of as much as 500 meters diameter, the pond water was so clear that you could see the bottom. With one glance, 
he could already see the golden carp pellet. It was about a meter long and its entire body was colored yellow. It could swim really flexibly inside the water. The nine-petal lotus was two times bigger than before. The growth of everything that was covered by it, within 200 meters radius would speed up by 30%. The effect was only limited to aquatic creatures. The nine-petal lotus grew in the middle of the pond water. It had a total circumference of 400 meters. Even though it couldn't cover up the entire pond, it had covered at least half of it.